Thabo Mwelwa Mbeki served as South Africa's second president from June 1999 to September 2008. Prior to that, he was Nelson Mandela's deputy president from 1994 to 1999. The late President Hagi Kengop hailed former South African President Thabo Mbeki as a transformational leader whose talents are still required in Africa and must be allocated duties to benefit the region. I'm now joined by South Africa's former President Thabo Mbeki on the death of President Kengop. Greetings, Mr. Mbeki. Hey, thanks, thanks a lot, and greetings to you too. Mr. President, you have known the late President Kengop from your exile years in Zambia. How would you describe your relationship? Yes, no, you are quite correct. We were, we were together with uh, the late president, uh, Dr. Hage Kengop, uh, in Lusaka for, for many years, through, throughout the years that he, he was in Lusaka. In fact, he, he arrived in Lusaka after I, before, after I got there. Um, well, you must, you must remember that uh, the ANC and Swapo these were allies. Uh, these were two comradely parties, uh, and therefore always uh, work together, always together, all of the time. So all the time that they were, we, we, when Hage was in Lusaka, you remember he was uh, a principal of the uh, Namibia Institute. Yes. Uh, this was the principal task that he had was to lead. That it's a very important process very important process in terms of preparing the cadres, the cadres that would have to manage Namibia once Namibia got its independence. Um, I'm saying a very, very important cadre development process that he was responsible for, but we're all of us in together in, in Lusaka. And because uh, the, of the relations between the ANC and SWAPO, of course, all the time, we're interacting. We're interacting, discussing, the challenges facing the struggle in the region, in our two countries in the region, uh, on the African continent, what we do in terms of uh, together, what we do in our approaches towards uh, the OAU, you know, the questions like that. Uh, but as I say that uh, his own principal preoccupation was the leadership of the, of the Institute. Is there any specific memory that stands out from your time together in Lusaka? Oh no, but I mean, we meant uh, say, we were together all the time. I mean, we were together all the time uh, with Hage, with other comrades of Swapo. Uh, no, I wouldn't say there's anything about any day or any moment that stands out. It's because, as I say, we're continuously in contact, uh, continuously sharing experiences in a sense, and, and in a sense, strategizing together uh, about. Uh, what needed to be done. Uh, because as you would remember, the, uh, the, this time also you had uh, the, 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 organized, the, the, the informal organization of the frontline states. Mm. And so they would, meet, they would meet to discuss the region and uh, therefore even the individual struggles. So even for us, liberation movements, uh, and therefore it was quite obvious that we would also communicate among one another and I'm saying Swapo, Comrade Hage, Comrade Hage was a very senior comrade in Lusaka. Mm. And you remember, of course, after the independence of, of Angola, after the independence of Angola, the, the lot of comrades, Swapo comrades, went to Angola correctly in terms to, to, to lead the struggle from there. So Comrade Hage in Lusaka remained one of the most senior people, and therefore naturally, naturally, we, we had to deal with him and communicate with him on that regular basis. But as I'm trying to say to you that uh, you must bear in mind that what Comrade Hage was, was, was doing, mm. uh, as, as, as directed by Swap, was to lead the Namibia Institute. So it was not as though he was engaged in the daily struggles like, like everybody else. His, his daily struggle was the Institute. Uh, but because, because of his seniority, uh, in Swapo, we would engage with him not about the institute, uh, engage with him about the broader issues that they've got to do. have got to do with the struggle. Thank you for those very important insights. Now, speaking about 
strategizing together. Not only were you comrades, but you also shared very similar political ideas relating to specifically pan-Africanism. You believed in an Africa that is to become self-sufficient and to take good care of her people. Do you believe that as a continent, we are honoring those ambitions, those ideals, and moving in the right direction? And the, 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 the last time I saw uh, the government president uh, was uh, a few months ago, towards the end of last year. That was when he paid a state visit to South Africa and then decided at the end of that visit, he decided to stay a day extra in order to have an engagement with the, with the, the leadership of the ANC as a leader of SWAP, as president of SWAP. And so I, I met him then. We had uh, just a one-on-one a, a -on -one meeting, the two of us. Um, and I, indeed, the, the, the matter that you are raising, the issue that he was raising was uh, where is the continent now? What are the challenges we are facing? But in particular, the state of our region. Mm. Uh, and, and in the context of the region, the, the, you've got the former liberation movements that continue to be in government in the Namibia, in South Africa, in Tanzania, and in, in Angola, Frelimo, in Mozambique, etc. This, 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 these organizations continue to cooperate. And he was very keen that they must then look very objectively at the challenges they were facing and the challenges that our region faces so that this region of Southern Africa plays its own proper role in terms of the leadership of the African continent, in terms of uh, helping Africa to, to realize its, its objectives. That's why he stayed a day extra in order to raise this one particular matter uh, with his comrades in the leadership of the ANC. He did meet with the leadership of the ANC and in fact he, he addressed the National Executive Committee of the ANC because it was meeting at the time. Mm. Uh, but his central point, the central point he was making was that there were certain things that are very, very important about that. us as, as, as former liberation movements. The unity of the continent, the renaissance of the continent, the, <coughs> excuse me, the changing for the better, the lives of, the, of this billion and a half Africans. These were important challenges, question of peace and stability, questions of democracy, uh, all of these very important questions, and that the, the former liberation movements in Southern Africa needed to make sure that they themselves sorted out their own houses in order to be able to play this positive role with regard to the rest of the continent. Mr. President. So, so yes, sir. Did you share Ms. President Gengop's concerns, particularly as far as the region is concerned? Yes, yeah, we agreed. We agreed. I mean, the, in matters he was, I'm saying, he was saying in particular, uh, the former liberation movements that are, that are still in government in our region, that are cooperating, they are meeting on a regular basis, and they've got a common political school in Tanzania and all of that, that we needed to look at each one of us to say, are we attending uh, to, this, to these organizations? Uh, are they strong enough? Are they meeting the challenges? Are they strong enough and act and, and pay, capable of acting together in terms of contributing to addressing these African challenges? So no, we agreed. We agreed. I agreed very much with this analysis, and I was very very glad that uh, he had decided to approach the ANC to say he needs to raise these matters uh, with the leadership of the ANC, so that the two, organize, two, two organizations. Uh, to start with, would be of the same mind and then we start from the same position. Then they would approach the others uh, in the region to say, let's get together and look at the specific matters. What is our own situations in each one of our countries, in each one of our movements? And what are we doing together? Is the thing that we're doing together, is it correct? Are we capable of making this contribution to these African challenges of unity, of renaissance, of peace, of democratization, of development, and so on? Mm. This, these are the particular things he was very concerned about, and I agreed with him. I agreed with him entirely. 
against the backdrop of his concerns that you concurred with, what impact do you believe his death will have on the region, but also on the continent, if we consider and have due regard to Pan-Africanism and its ideals? Well, I really am, um, the first thing really I should have said is that uh, I'm, I'd really try to convey my own very, very sincere, very heartfelt condolences uh, to, to the Gengo family, to his dear wife, Monica Gengos, to the Swapo Party, to the government, to the people of Namibia, because uh, we, we have all of us, all of us, we have lost a very important person, a very important re revolutionary in him. And, and that's why in the context of the question you are asking, it, it, is, it was for me, uh, I, I felt immediately, then I got the news that Comrade Hagee had passed away, that there would be an, an, an immediate void, an immediate void because even in the context of my own work, I'm no longer in government, but even the African Union would give me certain work to do and so on, and other African countries, the government would approach me and say, please do this. I would always try and keep in contact with him mm. uh, because I, I, I know his I knew his commitment, his strength, the strength of his commitment to Pan-Africanism and his very and his readiness to make sure that uh, given the positions in which he was in as leader of SWAP, president of SWAP or president of the Republic, that he makes sure that uh, the, he plays the correct role with regard to these African challenges. So I'm, I'm, I'm saying his departure is definitely, definitely has created a void. Because it's not everybody, unfortunately. It's not all of our leaders who've got the same enthusiasm, the same commitment uh, to this particular task that uh, we, we have a common responsibility not only to our countries and peoples as leaders of these liberation movements, but also a commitment to the rest of the continent and rest of the African peoples. I'm saying that it's not many among our leaders who, 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 who share that kind of commitment as, as Hage did. So his, his departure, I think, is definitely going to create a bit of a vacuum with regard to the kind of intervention he was talking about that we must ourselves as in the region prepare ourselves so that we are able to make an inter a positive intervention uh, in terms of, con of addressing the challenges on the continent. That kind of leadership, I think, will be greatly weakened by his absence. Mr. President, were you aware that he had not been well of late? You did share with us earlier that you met with him last year when he was in neighboring South Africa and you had the one-on-one -on -one with him. He didn't say anything at all about his state of health at all. And then frankly, I didn't, when I said, I sat with him for many hours, I didn't sense there was any, that, that there was anything wrong with him at all. I, I only got to hear about this, uh, this challenge of cancer when there was a public announcement that he did have that cancer and he was going to go to the United States for treatment and so on. And that really, that was the first time I'd, I got to know of, of this, this state of health. But when we met, he didn't raise it, and I, it, didn't look, it, it didn't look ill at all. It looked very healthy. And, 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 and as I said, he said nothing, nothing of any kind about the, the state of health. So it must have come as a very big shock to you, the initial news about his health and the subsequent news about his death. Yes, I mean, really, it, it, it's the death. I was, I was unhappy, I, you know, very, you know, cancer, cancer is a very dangerous thing. It's very, it takes people's lives. So when I, I heard the news that uh, he, had, so he was suffering from cancer, he was going to the States, I was very glad that uh, it seemed that there were people very ready, very ready to treat him and with regard to this matter. Uh, that was worrying in itself. Uh, but of course, the, the, the matter of his passing away as a complete surprise, a really a complete surprise. And I, it was hard to believe when they said Hage has passed away. I said, no, but uh, how does that happen? Mm. Uh, because it's not, not, it's not long ago that the announcement was made that he's, uh, he's suffering from cancer. Uh, it, anyway, it, it, that, the, the announcement of the passing away really came as a, as a big surprise and even with a lot of shock. Uh, we're losing, we're losing a very important uh, African leader, 
uh, at a time when I, in my view, as a, and he agreed with it, we agreed on this. The, the, there's great leadership on our continent for the kind of quality of leadership that uh, Hage Gengob uh, was. Because uh, in, in many instances, uh, the, the, I think the continent needs stronger leadership. Mm. I think if you look around, if you look at the war, for instance, in Sudan, look at what the war in Sudan has now been going for months and months and months, and uh, uh, it's not clear what kind of role the African Union is playing to resolve that, that issue. You, you have the kind of conflict, uh, the kind of conflict that there is uh, in, uh, in West Africa, as a result of which uh, you get these three countries, Mali, Burkina Faso, Niger, uh, who say that they are, they are living ECOWAS. Uh, you know, no, there are things like that. Mm. The, the confrontation currently between Somalia and, and Ethiopia, because Ethiopia has got some agreement with Somaliland. Uh, so are there, are there are a number of things that are very worrying about what's happening to the continent. And I'm saying that, uh, Mr. President, you've there, spoken. There's, there's, never, yes, there's sir. never been a moment when the continent needs the, the, the strong leadership than now. And it's very, very, very unfortunate that that Hage, Hage departs at this particular time. You spoke to us about President Kengop's impact on the continent and his impact on the region as a neighbour. What do you believe was his most significant impact on Namibia and her people? Of course, I mean, Namibia is a, is a very, very close neighbor. Uh, personally, personally, I mean, I've always been very keen to, to, to watch and see whatever we could do uh, in terms of cooperation uh, so that we, we impact on the development of both countries. Uh, so I was really very pleased because we remember uh, Comrade Hage uh, was very instrumental in terms of the transitional processes in Namibia. And it became first, pre pre first prime minister, uh, very instrumental in terms of fashioning the kind of constitution that Namibia would have. So it, the matter of practical, practically, what do we do in order to ensure the development of Namibia? It was this one matter was very close to his heart and very very committed to that. And it did seem to me that uh, that Namibia was making progress. I'm not saying that there were no challenges. And, and when I heard the news about the discovery of these oil and gas deposits, mm. uh, I was very glad that, uh, very glad that we had in the in, 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 in of leadership, Comrade Hage, Hage Kengov there, because it seemed to me that uh, an experienced, uh, tried and tested revolutionary like him, uh, it would be, he would have the capacity to lead the Namibian people to handle that resource. Because, you know, in many instances, when you have that big resource, it, it brings benefits, but it also produces many negative consequences. Mm. Uh, but I was, I was saying that I was very glad that we had Comrade Hage, then in the leadership of Namibia, as, as Namibia was just making these important discoveries, because it would, it would need, they need proper uh, principled revolutionary management to make sure that those resources are used to the best for in the interest of the people and don't produce, this, as I say, negative consequences. Um, because I think, uh, I mean, to be, to be honest, I, I followed a little bit the... The negative story, which I first picked it up from Al Jazeera, mm. uh, about thing about the fisheries, yes, corruption sir. and allegations of corruption around the matters of fishing and licensing and all of that. Um, that 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 problem would get multiplied once you have to deal with oil and gas and so on. But I'm saying that fortunately we got the, the leaders of the quality of, of, of uh, Dr. Hage Gengo. I tried and tested revolutionaries. Uh, they are not they are not people who arrived in the struggle yesterday um, and been with the struggle from the beginning and have stayed with it right through. It's the kind of person that we need uh, to be able to say, all right, we're very fortunate to get these new resources, but how do we manage them? 
so that they produce a positive results. It's very, it's a very sensitive matter, uh, but it requires a very, very principled, very principled political leadership. Very well, Mr. President. Notwithstanding the sound relations between Namibia and South Africa, there may be challenges that flare up from time to time if one has regard to the challenges around the Southern African Customs Union and also the Orange River. What do you make of those persisting challenges and how are they, from your perspective, to be resolved in the best interest of both nations? Well, you must bear in mind that I'm not in government. I have, I've not been in government for many years. Hmm. So I, I, I only, some of the details that you would want to discuss, I wouldn't know. I don't know, know, for instance, what the problem would be around SACO, the Customs Union, Southern African Customs Union. I don't know what problem there would be there. But for instance, with regard to the river, that's an old issue uh, as to where the, the, the boundary is. Uh, we discussed this thing uh, when uh, Comrade President Samuel Yoma was president of Namibia, discussed it when uh, uh, Comrade President Vikenyi Punye Pohamba was president. And it actually, I had thought the matter had died away because the, what, our, what we were saying, that's the position of the South African government at, the, at that time, I don't know now, mm. we were saying that, you see, between Namibia and South Africa, it's not necessary to, to have a, a problems around a border like this. That Namibia, the Namibians have got free use of the entirety of the river from its uh, northern bank to its southern bank. There's no need for them to think that there is a border, that, that, that the river belongs to South Africa, and therefore there's some restriction. That they have got perfect use. If they want to use the waters of the Orange River, the by all means we have to do that. Without going through all of this rigmarole of having to change by the borders on a, on a piece of paper. As you remember, Namibia had already done this thing in terms of the, the, the maritime border that uh, from the middle of the mouth of the Orange River, as it empties into the Atlantic, then they draw a line into the Atlantic, mm. and that becomes a more border. That more, so that's fine. They know no problem about that. We were saying that as far as the, the land border, uh, you know, you've got all of these com complicated issues, like the, the, a, the OAU, there's a, there's a standard position of the OAU, of which both countries are members. And the standard position of the OAU is that, please, let us all keep the colonial boundaries. Because once we begin changing those, then there's a month, there's going to be a manner of, all manner of trouble. And we're saying, in our instance, the, the, the Namibians have got a, a perfect right to, be, to access the entirety of that river. Uh, and not to have been, there's no barrier the fact that the colonial boundary was drawn at a particular point on the northern bank of the river, that's not an obstacle to an independent and a liberated South Africa and liberated Namibia. So uh, I'm saying that at the time I left government, that was the position. And in that sense, the matter it in a kind of died away. Nobody was raising it in the Namibian government. Nobody was raising it on the South African government. Because, uh, I mean, if you got free, free run on that river, Mm. Uh, whether you are South African or Namibian, uh, what is the importance of a line of, on a map, which then raises many questions. What do we do about the OAU decision? And then there are all of these complicated con constitutional matters. This matter is part of the Constitution of South Africa. You go to have a constitutional amendment, you know, all of that. Uh, but in the end, practically, of what consequence is it? I'm saying that the position that we took then, then, Thank you, Mr. President. That I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what the position is now. Thank you, Mr. President. As we wrap up our conversation, the Namibian nation is in mourning. Do you perhaps have a message of comfort for Namibians at this point in time? Yes, absolutely. I mean, the, uh, the, it is indeed. Uh, I think it, the Namibian people naturally are in mourning, but I think a lot of us uh, who know uh, the late President Tanke Kengo uh, also feel that sense of loss. And I'd like to say to the Namibian people that I think we need to 
to say farewell to, to him, to, to the Comrade President, uh, Dr. Hag, again, in a very dignified manner. And I think that in the process of all of this, we need to find a way of recalling what the, the positive examples that he set for all of us, uh, the, posi the positive challenges that he left with us. You know, when, when Hage kept, kept talking about uh, a, a Namibian house, uh, to try and, and inspire in, in everybody in Namibia, the sense that we all belong together in one family. Mm. There are national challenges. Why don't we unite around the national challenges? We may differ about the political tactics and all of that. Um, but I'm saying that to really to reflect on the legacy that he leaves behind, because it must continue to inspire what needs to be done uh, in terms of the continuing process of the reconstruction and development of, of Namibia. But certainly we, we are very much... Uh, uh, with them and very much with the people of Namibia. That's why we are coming to the funeral. It's also to be there also as we say farewell to him and to say to the Namibian people as a whole, really our sincere condolences. And, and we hope but we hope nevertheless that the historic cooperation between our peoples and our countries and our, our, and our, our governments and, and so on, that, that cooperation must continue. But I think we, we have to look very closely at the example that that, that, that Comrade Hage set to inspire us to be able to do the things that need to be done. But but certainly our sincere condolences to the family, uh, Mrs. Monica Gengos, to the children, to the Swapo Party, uh, to the government and the people of Namibia, our sincere condolences. And we will be there on Sunday. Um, but just our presence, our presence to communicate that same message. In Corsi, Mr. President. Okay, Chief, thanks. But sincere condolences to you too. Thank you, Mr. Uh, President. Thank you very much. All right. Former South African President Thabo Mbeki speaking to us about the life and legacy of the late Dr. Hage G. Kengo. Of course, so we have that uh, Ben Kisting speaking to uh, former South African President uh, Tamon Beki, of course, widely regarded as one of the uh, elder statesmen on the continent uh, when it comes uh, to uh, politics. It has been exactly three weeks, uh, Blanche, since the nation, of course, woke up to this devastating news mm -hmm. uh, of the passing of uh, Dr. Hageji uh, Kengop. And, of course, a lot has happened over the last three weeks. We are going to be highlighting that uh, before we start with the official burial program um, at 10 o'clock uh, this morning. But for now, of course, we know that the gates are open of the Heroes Acre and uh, you are all welcome to head over there for the burial. Yes, and uh, the government has also made available pick, uh, transport. So the uh, pickup has started as from 6.30. That's now at selected uh, pickup points around the capital. So as you said, the gates are open and people can still make their way to the Heroes Acre where that will be the final resting place of uh, Dr. Gengop. But well, of course, before we share more tributes with you and reflect back on what has been happening over the last three weeks, let's quickly cross over to the Independent Stadium where Salima Hanaki is standing by uh, just to give us an update of the mood uh, and what we can expect for the day. Well, uh, Ricardo, we will cross to Selima a bit later on, but I understand uh, President Cyril Ramaphosa of South Africa arrived last night as well as the Princess Anne of the UK and was at Casa Rosalia to pay her condolences to the former First Lady and also sign the Book of Condolences. And now let's have a look at how that went and what uh, they were discussing at Casa Rosalia. That's last night, just after the official memorial service at Independence Stadium. Let's take a look at this.
Uh, as you can see, there are just visuals of uh, different tributes of world leaders being paid uh, respects uh, to the late head of state. We saw, of course, earlier visions uh, of uh, Princess Anne, a part of the British royal family as well. Of course, also saw uh, the Amida Mohammed, the Deputy Secretary General of the United Nations as well. Uh, also, the uh, Prime Minister of uh, 
Sao Tome and Principe. There is, of course, uh, Patrice uh, Trovada uh, also in the visuals. The Patrice Trovada, in fact, was the last or the final official visit uh, that the president had and spent quite a considerable amount of time catching up uh, with the prime minister uh, there as well. So him making his way to come and pay his respects. We also saw visuals there of... Uh, uh, Julian Amada Bio, who is the uh, president of uh, Sierra Leone, uh, also coming there to pay his respects uh, to the First Lady and, of course, uh, by extension, the people of the Republic of Namibia. Mm -hmm. Now, Ricardo, while those visits were ongoing at Casa Rosalia last night, mourners and uh, sympathizers also remained at the Independent Stadium last night and were just viewing because the body had to lay in state and they were viewing the body as well as just singing and sending off Dr. Gainkop in the true Namibian way as they described it because we made a, a turn some some turns at Independence Stadium as well to view the the body so and this is what we captured how the mood was up until just six or before six this morning so let's take a look. Those way the <laughs> scenes at Independence Stadium last night, as he said, songs from the Lutheran hymn book, Ngai Ai Khanis. They said they were sending off the late Dr. Gain Gop in the true Namibian fashion, Ricardo. In true Namibian fashion there as well. And uh, the mourners were there all night, and that's part of the traditional practice, of course, as explained by Mr. Hans Eichab just yesterday. And as the sun is coming up this morning, of course, uh, the, what is called the Kwanga was the ritual, gets singing, and that's the final song uh, that uh, that group will be singing uh, before, of course, they start with the um, official uh, program as well. So that is part of, of course, the ritual practices overnight, throughout night. Mm -hmm. Since yesterday, after we closed off the broadcast, uh, right, I think just about 11 o'clock in the just evening. Just about 11, yes. Uh, they had been singing until this morning at 6 o'clock. But to find out what exactly is going down right now and what the mood and the scenes are at the stadium, we now cross over to Selima Hanok. That's ready for us. Good morning, Selima. We are coming to you live, that is from Independence Stadium, where the body of the president, that the late president, Dr. Hage Gengop, uh, laid in state. And of course, immediately after the memorial service, that was last night, the new Quen community um, sang hymns, and also just um, as per their tradition, and uh, also just um, to do some cultural um, activities that they had to do in terms of, of their culture. So we are speaking now to uh, Aidaman, um, traditional um, head authority. He's the headman, Gaup Kavango. He's just going to give us a brief of what transpired yesterday. Gaup, wh what happened last night after the memorial service? Okay. So last night we saw how Namibians from all walks of life 
predominantly from the Ngulkwen Damara community, came together here at the Independence Stadium, where, as you rightfully said, our late and beloved president, His Excellency Dr. Haige Gottfried Genkop, laid in rest. And we came together, as per our culture, to bid farewell in the form of what we call a Tong Arunubis, also called a Okoro Wabas. This is a vigil. Um, according to the culture traditions of the Ngulkwen Tamara people, a deceased um, is not left alone the night before uh, the remains are laid to rest. And so we came together to sing hymns and praises to His Excellency the President, um, knowing that he was not only our president, but he was also our tribesman. So we had to come together and to give him a befitting send off and that's what transpired last night here at the independent stadium how will you describe the atmosphere of last night um the atmosphere was actually a mixed feeling um very sad on the one side knowing that it was our final evening with our beloved president um, but then also very a very joyous occasion because we had many artists that were performing we had the general public that was performing and also just the presence of the former first lady the widow um, monica gengos to to have her here amongst us was quite a blessing for us knowing that um, she had a very rough three weeks and knowing that there's so much stress upon her as a person emotional stress for that matter and psychological to have her amongst us was quite a blessing so it was a mixed feeling evening very sad on the one hand but also very joyous on the other Mm. So as we um, prepare to go and lay the president, um, you know, to his uh, leading him to his resting uh, place, wh what will you say is the legacy that he left behind, especially also just in the Nguyen community? Yes, um, first things first, um, His Excellency, the late president, was actually a personification of Namibia's motto. He was indeed a unifier. He was a person that stood for liberty, and that's why we see that in this country we enjoy press freedom. Um, there are so many liberties that came to be, and also justice. Um, seeing that whilst he was a president, um, there was no um, manner in which the legislative arm or the executive arm had an overarm over the judiciary. And we know for a fact there are many cases whereby the president allowed the law to take its course. So it was actually a epitome of the country's motto. But coming to the Damara community, um, indeed, uh, a man above others. He stood shoulder above men. He's a hero, not only for the Namibian nation, but also for the Damara people. And we are blessed that for the first time last year in the 2023 Damara Cultural Festival was actually the first time that the president, whilst being a president, attended the Damara Festival. So um, things took time. And we were quite anxious and we were concerned, why is the president not coming to us? But then we saw that things take time and then they happen on the right time. So that's that. Um, he's quite a guy, a person, a loved father figure, friend, um, not only to the country, not only to the international community, but also in the Damara community. And this was witnessed last night when we came together for the vigil that we had. Sorry. Yeah. Thank you so much, Kaub. Thank you. Thank All you. right. Of course, that was um, Kaub Kavango. He just gave us a brief of the activities that took place yesterday, immediately after the memorial service. And of course, people are still coming to view the body of the late president. And immediately um, after that, there will be a procession that will be leading to Hiros Eka, where um, the president will be laid to rest. So we'll be bringing you more of that um, updates. Uh, but for now, back to you in the studio.
Seeing happening right now from the Independence Stadium. Of course, uh, like I mentioned a bit earlier on, uh, there's Selima Henok speaking to uh, Chief Kavango, uh, one of the uh, chiefs uh, from the Nguquen community, of course. Just reflecting on what took place over the evening in terms of the singing, the significance of the songs that were sung, and how it was closed off. Of course, the last song was sang just before the sun uh, comes up, and that one is referred to, of course, as the Kwang Nobles. And immediately after that, it's complete silence and time to get ready for the burial and those are of course the visuals that you saw uh, from the Independence Stadium. Now of course looking at what is happening at the Independence Stadium as well and how I've been covering uh, the, the event not only of course the event yesterday and the procession but the tribute over the last three weeks uh, it has been a daunting task of course for the team here at the Namibia Broadcasting Corporation as well. We've got the Director General of the NBC joining us this morning just to reflect on the work so far and what we can look forward to uh, for the rest of the day and perhaps of course also after the funeral is done more importantly how do we continue uh, to maintain the legacy of President Hage Kengop. A very good morning to you uh, and thank you so much uh, Mr. Similo for making time out to join yes, us. Yes, good morning Ricardo and also good morning to our uh, viewers. Mm. Well we're just taking a step back a little bit earlier on this morning and just uh, reflecting on how the news of course uh, came to Blanche. She was the one that facilitated uh, the announcement of uh, uh, the head of state of course uh, on, on your instruction as well but let's just take a step back on, on, on that faithful day just to take us through you know what, what goes on when, when news like that comes in particularly at the hour uh, that it did of course we don't have 24 hours where uh, staff are in the studio etc etc but just take us through 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 that day and that announcement yeah uh, I mean, maybe Ricardo before I start with that let me just once again thank the NBC staff for total commitment total commitment. It's been a three weeks of, of doing what we've never done before. Almost like going into uncharted grounds in terms of where we are. And here I would want to refer from the securities at our gates to the cleaners, to literally everybody, because even just the studios to look great, mm -hmm. you need people to do that. Up to the level of those that are in the technical area of making things happen, mm -hmm. the support staff and all of that. And then secondly as well, MICT, because we've also been making use of, of their crews across the country as well. And then of course there's an element of NMH also uh, working together with us. But importantly, the military. Mm -hmm. Without the military, we would not be there. Remember this is their event and they've been very very, very helpful. And then, of course, the people of Namibia. And then people like yourself who are at the front, who are the face of what NBC is, particularly for the past three days here. Now, reflecting on the day itself, uh, it, look, when I got the call, I, I don't know what I felt. It was like, it's not real. And I just reconfirmed, is it? Is it really? And then the immediate thing I did was to call my ED. I spoke to him and then I called my minister. I spoke to him and I also called uh, our deputy minister so that they are just aligned. And then uh, I think Tate uh, Namanje uh, uh, was also assisting the family. So I had a chat with him as well. And I also had a chat with the current president. So we had to work out now what needed to be done. So there had to be sort of a consensus in yes, of the in terms of, in terms of how, how we should go, how do we year. go about yeah. it. And then at that time, the crew was relatively small. Mm -hmm. As you know, it's weekend and weekends, we, we scaled out. Particularly, I think it's the most silent day out of the seven all, days. All days. Of all yeah. days, yeah. So we had Blanche, I think Mr. Stephen Kotzer, and then uh, Mr. Karipi at our final control. So they started putting together a loop that, that sought to make sure that we get on air, we do things. But the beautiful thing, Ricardo, was that once it became known, we did not have to go and look for people. People just came themselves. Radio was up. The teams came, where can I help? What can I do? And long before we knew, we had a fully fledged team running all the way, all the way. Because I remember it was the same for me as well, and I think it's the natural reaction. The moment the news came, I think I also texted, I think it was uh, uh, Mr. Denk and Sophia to, to say, I'm ready. We can go anytime. Yes. Yeah. 
I think that was the conversation initially. I think also speaking to, to, to KZ as well, very, very early in the morning to say, okay, how are we moving on this thing? The news came out. Uh, and I think when you're saying now that you didn't have to look for people once the yes. news comes out, again, just a testimony of, of, of the Namibian spirit yeah, and that, that commitment. That, that yeah, that commitment. And then from there, the next day, the Monday, I had, uh, I created like a war room type of setup. Mm. And then on the double was meeting, talking, and we said, I, I gave direction to say, colleagues, this one is, is something that we also don't know how to handle, but look, here's the thing. Change the grids, change the schedules, we accommodate. We worked out plans, both radio, TV, and online, and then we started running from there. And in the process, as we were moving, it, it was almost like the, the pieces of the puzzle were actually getting to, you know, fitting by themselves. But I must say, it took a lot of work. But as I said about, uh, I think, three, three, three weeks ago, the planning of running one of the channels as a current affairs was that we would have commenced in April. Mm -hmm. And I said that the death of our late president in a way forced us and catapulted us into the process where we are today. And it's, and it's really, really, it's, it's been working well. Long hours for many of the colleagues, so we will have to tweak a thing, one or two here and here, there. Last Friday, I, last Friday, I left here at about five fish or so, so I went to sit, had some space just to drink, mm. a cold drink, you know, I'm from the Oros Club. Mm. So, <laughs> as I was seated there, a friend came and he asked me, DG, are you ready? And then I was like, why is this guy asking me, am I ready? And I started almost doubting myself. Mm. But I said to myself, no, but this is what we do. I said, no, we are ready for the weekend. We'll take it on the chin and we will make it happen. And today, I'm a, I'm a very proud director general, a very proud Namibian because you guys and the rest of the team, you really lived up to what, what it was. There's, of course, also that responsibility to the rest of the continent because we are the primary broadcaster. There's a certain responsibility as a public broadcaster to provide access to the rest of the continent. Just reflect on that, the access for the rest of the continent and the rest of the world. Yeah, that, that one for us, uh, we had to negotiate with Maldi Choice, given that they, they have a footprint that extends up to about Nigeria. Mm. So I contacted Mr. Herzer, the, the managing director for Maldi Choice Namibia, and I said, look, this is what we are having. We, we would want to spread our signal because the interest from a, from a Southern African Broadcasters Association is there. How do we do this? And then he said, no, they will assist. Uh, but then issues of quality, we had that discussion as well. Remember, our output on their end was standard definition, which is HD, H, H, uh, which is SD. SD. Yeah. And then I said to him, but there's a condition. That condition is that you need to boost the signal to be HD, HD. which is high definition. Yeah. Otherwise, a bad impression will be created about what our image look like. And they accepted that. And then we started doing testing and it worked well. But then now we have those that are not necessarily on the DSTV bouquet mm. of, of channels. So for that, we created a, a special, uh, special connectivity. And linked to that as well, we uploaded the programs also on YouTube for those that will be struggling in connecting. So for now, things have been working well. Mm -hmm. I, I only had a little bit of a scare yesterday. There was a moment of between, I think, 15, 20 seconds where we went off air because at the, um, at, at, the, at the stadium, someone came and unplugged our uplink connectivity. But luckily for us, we brought in a gadget from South Africa that would serve as a redundancy. So when that happened... The insurance the, policy had to the, kick in quickly. The colleagues just switched <laughs> over and we were back on air. And this is where I realized that, you, you know what, when people say take out insurance... Take it out. You must do it. Just imagine now if we had not had that. Because the problem of trying to find where the potential problem could be... Mm -hmm would take us a bit of time. And Definitely. that would have frustrated millions of people. And of course, in television time, one, two, three seconds uh, is already too it's, long. Yes, yes. It's already too long. Yes, yes. In terms of this, of course, one of the things that I know that you're very passionate about is creating connection and access for the grassroots level uh, for communities 
to understand and get information in their languages. Uh, the radio services have been instrumental in that. You had made a very, very uh, uh, strong, strong and assertive uh, commitment to make sure that they are also running at the same pace uh, with television as well. Just reflect on a little bit on One, the importance 100%. Of and in our discussions almost daily since mm -hmm. the passing, it was like radio, television and online, everybody should be there. So what we've been doing is that uh, for Touch FM, which is the youth station, which is English, and National FM, it's relatively okay. It dovetails easier with what you do. But for all other language services that are in vernacular, we there said that, look, get our presenters, get a resource person who understands the politics, who can speak about the late, and then you do your interpretation in the language that the listeners are getting to. And that has also worked extremely, extremely well because I got calls about people who are staying on farms who only have access to radio, appreciating what has been happening. So for us, I, I, I believe we, we've done the best that, that, that we can. It's, it's, it was a matter of, we were also not too sure how to tackle this thing, but as it was evolving on a daily basis, we started seeing how to put everything into place as well. And then of course, from a resource perspective, um, we've also seen the things that we need mm. that we may not have. And that, that was going to be my next question in terms of the resources, because many people don't know. I mean, I think there were two or three pictures that were shared behind the scenes. And there were about 28, 30 cameras uh, being you know, organized and, 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 and being set up. Just talk to us about the resource requirement and, you know, the additional staff and resources that needed to come in. Yeah, let, let me start with the one which is hilarious. Mm. Someone was saying, oh, this NBC. So they know these things. Why were they hiding the cameras? <laughs> now, <laughs> the, the thing is, in terms of broadcast, in order for you to be able to have high definition quality on your TV, it's the same. Like now, even if we or any other channel is, is broadcasting in high definition, but your TV at home is not attuned to that, you will not get that quality. Mm -hmm. Now within broadcasting, it's a whole chain. It starts with a camera that records, and then there's a loop feeding into broadcast, mm -hmm. final control, final termination, uh, termination, up to uplink, and then transmitters getting on, and then reaching your home. So if that stream as a, as, as a process getting to the final, final picture that gets to your house, if it is also not fully attuned to be a high definition, then nothing can happen. Because you can have everything here. You can have all those cameras, but if your system that is transmitting is not there, that creates a problem. What we did, Ricardo, last, late last year, I think Blanche did an interview. I did inform the nation that NBC One and Two are actually high definition, mm. but whether people believed us or not, I, I don't know. Mm. But the events of uh, the past three weeks have forced Namibians now to be attuned with NBC, radio, TV, and online. In fact, I had someone saying they've never watched NBC this much, and the same person the next day calls me, which was yesterday, says that yo. So my TV license fee that I've been paying, I feel I, 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 I'm getting the value out of that. And my remark was simple, it's to say that sometimes we will give a view over what things are based on what people are saying. So until you go in and experience it yourself, you will not know. This is what we do on a daily basis. This is our job, this is our lives. It's a way of life for us. So the challenge now is that comes Next week, we can't go back. We have to keep the momentum. We have to be that news and current affairs entity that can actually keep the things going. So from our end, I, I, I believe uh, we've, we've done a, a great deal of good. And, uh, and we hope that as NBC, we've been able to portray and allow Namibians to be part of a process in terms of the whole process of getting to where we are today, which is the actual burial ceremony. So, and, 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 and I, I, I'm tempted to believe that we've succeeded in that. 
the thing, of course, is also going forward in terms of the programming. Um, what are we looking at uh, going forward once the burial is done in terms of maintaining sort of the legacy and continuing with some of the conversations? Naturally, these conversations will go ahead, but you must also know that even within the transition, mm -hmm. There's changes that came in True. politically in terms of where and what Namibia should be. So as an NBC now, we will have to think about how do we reflect everything. Mm. Because at the base, at the core, what we must create is harmony within all of us. So we will just do what we know best. But one thing that we will be doing, particularly from a television perspective, we already have Good Morning Namibia, which runs from six to nine live. Mm. So the, uh, the block now from nine to one will also have to have uh, current mm. sort of Content, happenings yeah. within it. And then one between one and two, it's already taken care of because we have the news and then it's Iron Sardeg. And then from two up to six, we are also relatively safe there because already from six, Nina show starts and then from there it's the live discussion programs then leading us into the news. So in terms of where we are would be to see how do we, how do we mobilize resources and hopefully our, our minister and the minister of, of finance and then also the director general of national planning of Namibia. I'm hoping that they are listening because currently there's a request on the table of the minister of finance. If we get that, yes. Already within the next three to four months, there will be major improvements in terms of what we will be having on the table. Yeah, but all in all, Ricardo, I just need to go back again and really just thank the NBC staff for commitment going beyond the call of duty. That's all I can ask it because our last meeting, by the way, finished last night at about half past one. And we were planning for this morning already. <laughs> and <laughs> and we had to the be on air. Yes, <laughs> and, and as the person who must give hope to the staff, mm. I was party to that as well, discussing, quickly reflecting, mm. and then saying, how do we start the day? Even though we know that we had our plans, yeah. As and you think, know. And I think for many, for many people, obviously, they're seeing you in a suit here. They don't know that the last two days you were up and down here in aye, a T-shirt. <laughs> hey, hey, I tell you, yeah, but this mm. is what we do. This is our life. It's our 100%. way of life. And, 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 we, and we like and we love what we're doing. And, as, and, and for the warmth that we've been receiving, we don't take that for granted. Mm. Thank you very much, uh, Comrade DG, for making time out to just come and reflect on, on, on the coverage and provide that confidence to the nation. Always a pleasure, Ricardo. Thank you very, very much. Director General of the uh, Namibia Broadcasting Corporation, Stanley Similo, of course, reflecting on uh, the beginning, how they had to bring the news to the nation uh, at 3 o'clock in the morning. Uh, that is, of course, on a Sunday morning. And uh, somebody was saying last night, one of my nieces, that uh, the president, even in his passing, still has jokes. How does he uh, have his burial on the one day uh, that most things are prohibited. Stay with us. We'll be back after the break. there you can see uh, the uh, visuals from the procession uh, that took place uh, on Friday uh, was of the body of uh, the late Dr. Hageji Kengop to be viewed by the nation. That was uh, around Soweto Market in Independence Avenue um, at that very moment uh, where it was moving to. Of course, it started initially uh, from the State House around quarter past 12 on Friday. Uh, that's uh, with the procession being led by the uh, chief of the defense force uh, alongside the president as well as the chief uh, mourner or the mourner in chief. And uh, starting off first with the Yang Yonger Street headed to David Hosea Meroro Street. 
uh, in uh, Hockland Park and uh, continuing turning into right in Hockland Park to Dorado Park with uh, Hendrick Vetboy Street. After that, of course, uh, Moses Tarweb uh, into Komazdao and then uh, Ochimise with uh, Winnie Madikizela Mandela Road. Immediately after that, of course, coming into Independence Avenue. Uh, and then uh, finishing at Casa Rosalia for four hours where the family had their intimate gathering on Friday. Yes, and indeed it was an intimate and sombre gathering, Ricardo, where the family members that we also uh, reported on, or them actually telling us that, they actually the family tree spreads across the maze triangle, starting from Oshiwarongo to Otavi to uh, Ocho and also Tsumeb, and then as well as towns such as Arandes and Korijas and so on. That's now the game family tree that's spreading across and all of them especially the elderly were present at Casa Rosalia alongside uh, the widow and the children to receive the remains and have their intimate moments with uh, the late Dr. Gengob before handing over the body to uh, the state. That's actually also another traditional manner in which uh, the handing over of the body is uh, being done in the Damara or the Ngukwe culture. So them also just accord, uh, giving thanks to the state for according the highest honor to Dr. Gengob as the commander in chief. But what was so heartwarming, Ricardo, is that Namibians coming out, as your niece later also said last night about the president's burial taking place on the day of. Um, on, on the day that most uh, activities are prohibited. Yes. Someone also <laughs> mentioned on uh, on Friday during the procession or as they were watching the procession on NBC that even in his death, he is still sticking to uh, his mantra of, of no Namibian should feel left out. And that is what the, uh, the army or the military made sure uh, for them to have a glimpse of Dr. Gain Gopa by taking him to the people as he was the people's president. Well, of course, we know also in terms of the procession that you're seeing there, uh, there was, of course, also a very deliberate selection and really tells you also about the uh, makeup of, of Ventuk City because all of the streets uh, that were used for the procession are streets that are named after liberation struggle heroes or those that are tied to the liberation the or anti-colonialism mm. to a certain extent. Of course, David Jose Amororo, we know uh, he was uh, instrumental in the Namibia liberation struggle from Angola as part of the People's Liberation Army of Namibia plan between 1975 and 1989. Hendrik Vertboy, of course, mm -hmm. we know, uh, uh, located in the southwest uh, part of Ventuk was formerly known as Charles Marais Street uh, and the street is named after Hendrik Vertboy. He was an African leader of the of the Kovas and Nama people mm -hmm. uh, and of course the first deputy Good. prime minister and also a vice president, former vice president of uh, uh, the Swapo party as well. And uh, Lauren Desir uh, Gabila, of course you know who that is, also from the DRC as well. Nelson Mandela, who doesn't know who Nelson Mandela is? Part of uh, mm -hmm. the uh, procession was also Nelson Mandela Avenue. Winnie Marie Mandela, one of the longest stretches in Katatura as well, mm -hmm. formerly known as Tochumisa Road, uh, was also being used there as well. And this one will catch you by surprise, uh, Sean McBride Street, uh, the street, of course, one of the streets leading us to the Independence Stadium, uh, is actually named after Sean McBride, who is one of the co-authors, the co-drafters of the constitution of the organization of the African Union, who is the African Union as African we know Union it today. today as, well as well as Moses Hattaro, again, mm. another liberation struggle stalwart, who is also buried at the Heroes Acre way. Dr. Gengob will be buried as well. well. For now, let's quickly cross over to Selman Dikwa that's standing by at the Independence Stadium. Selma, good morning. Good morning. We are still here at the Independent Stadium. It has been an overwhelming, uh, you know, period. For some, it has sunk in. For some, it is yet to sink in as we come to terms with the death of our late president, Dr. Hage Gengob. Now, you will agree with me as it has been expressed over this past two weeks, you know, that the number of people symbolize his selfless and exemplary nature. Now, of course, uh, people came from all walks of life. In fact, some even overnight here, um, 
to pay their last respect to the late president as he's actually also still lying in state. And uh, from here, you know, just to pay their last respect to the prodig uh, prodigious leader. And of course, from here, quarter past nine, the procession will start in reverse order um, all the way through um, um, Rugby Road, Hosea Kutako Riopos Road, that is a B1 road, accompanied by President Nangolo Mbuba and a full military honor. And from there, the president, uh, President Gengob, rather late President Dr. Gengob, will be laid in a mycelium reserved for presidency um, that is at Heroes Eka, close to a statue of an unknown soldier. And of course, he himself was a gallant soldier with a nature worth emulating. Now, as new developments emerge, we will keep the um, nation updated. But for now, let's just gauge the public. In fact, some of those who actually overnight here to pay their respect to the late president, um, Dr. Hage Gengob. He actually advocated for the betterment of young people and I am joined by one of the youth here. Thank you so much for joining us. What does this moment feel for you and what is that impact that um, the late Dr. Hage Gengob played in your life? A very good morning to everybody out there. I would like to say that we are here at the field where we give our last respect to our president. This is a very heartfelt and heavy moment to take. It is very hard to see him say goodbye to us. Um, we are here to say our last respect to him, whereby I just want to remind the youth that we should look into the path that our president has left for us. We should hold on to the theme whereby he says inclusivity spells harmony and exclusivity spells conflict. And we should not look to, look to the bad side of the president, but we should also look to the good side of him, whereby he has made a very big structure in this world, in Namibia mostly the most the young people and he has built a house for us where he leaves nobody out and we should make sure that we join this house and he has gone home and we should say our last respect to him well the Lord has given us and the Lord has taken and we are very grateful that we had a very reverent leader like him he was the father to the nation he was the father to the fatherless a child to those that do not have children especially the old people and I'm very heartbroken to see that he has left us forever. I thank you. A heartfelt message indeed. Now the other thing as well is that uh, the or rather that the president really emphasized on is building a Namibian house of unity and inclusivity, just as she said. But the other thing as well is that the late Dr. Hagi Gingob really advocated for the betterment of old people, pushed for the better living conditions of old uh, people, in particular, you know, the social grants, pension grants in particular. Just here in the crowd, I'm joined by some of the elderly who in fact travel, traveled rather all the way from, you know, from the farm. Omar... Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Um, the late Dr. Hage Gengob really played a huge role in you know, advocating for the better living conditions of old people who fool Oma Fandag. I don't know how I feel, but the feelings I have will last with me until I pass on. He was a great man, he was a leader. He was a friend of youth and also for us elders. What he had to do for us the best for the elders, I don't know. But God will see. And what he promised, we will get it. We are not hurried about that. Therefore, I'm here today to show the last respect and farewell to him. Thank you. But what is that fond memory that Omar has of the late Dr. Hage Gengob? What do you remember about um, Hage Gengob that stuck, uh, Dr. Hage Gengob that stuck with you? Uh, he's great, he's great. Leadership. What I, what I mentioned already. Leadership. The peace. The unity, what he have for everyone, is a leader. Whether it's a young or sport or what, he was for all of us. What can I say? Ten in one. Do you understand? Thank you.
Thank you so much, Omar, for that contribution. Well, there you had it, uh, impact deeply felt and a vacuum left. That is by our late president, Dr. Hage Gengo. But we are still waiting for the processions to begin here at the Independence Stadium, and we will keep the nation updated accordingly. Thank you very much, uh, Salma, for bringing us uh, that report. And, of course, just an update on what's happening at the Independence Stadium. In a few moments from now, we will be crossing over uh, to the Heroes Acre just to uh, take a peek in terms of uh, the crowds gathering there and what is the activity at this point in time. And the gates have been open since six o'clock at this morning. But just on that uh, interview, the brief interviews that Selma had with the elderly, Ricardo, you remember that the late president mentioned in his New Year's message after Christianing the year as the year of expectation that mm -hmm. His wish is to see the increment of the old age grant at least from to the, between 2000 to 3000 dollars so that is what that uh, the Omar was also just touching on and that he has been as Sialma alluded to that advocating the, for the better living conditions of the elderly I can tell you Ricardo that the elderly were quite close to Omis. And of course, just during his tenure, we know that the uh, the grant, for the old age grant, uh, more than doubled uh, since he took the, over the office of the president. Of course, now um, there were the announcement of between the two and three thousand. That's the big one. The expectation. I asked the minister of finance last week when he came to pay tributes. Mm -hmm. They say, I mean, so they say that uh, uh, the, the last wish of somebody that passed has to be honoured. Has to be honoured. Uh, yeah, yeah, and uh, he said that definitely they will be looking into that as well. So who knows? There might be an emergency cabinet meeting just this week uh, to take a look at that particular issue as well. We are of course also aware that the national budget is going to be announced be uh, this yes. coming week as well. Uh, so perhaps that might also feature in that conversation. But tell me about the theme of, of, of the memorial yesterday that the youth relayed a bit earlier on. Yes, yes, it was his famous, uh, the, the famous saying of Dr. Gengob, which was inclusivity spells harmony, exclusivity spells conflict. So for Dr. Gain Ricardo, these were just more than sayings or mantras. He actually, he was actually striving to live by it. As you can see from his cabinet appointments, his uh, appointments when it comes to the advisors, his appointments, when it comes to even the heads of foreign missions, it was a build up to what he termed as the oh, Namibian, Namibian house, house. A house that will, a house whereby Namibians will not be identifying themselves with individual tribes, but rather as the Namibians first. So for Dr. Gainkop, he lived by those uh, those mantras. He actually, that was his wish that now we just have to live or we just have to carry on his legacy that there is unity actually in diversity. And we are fortunate, Ricardo, I can tell you, we are fortunate to be in a country that, uh, that cherishes peace over anything else. I have been to several countries whereby, and you've also listened, uh, listened after the smooth transition of power, how Namibia was actually praised for a young democracy, actually. And these are some of the attributes that are, or praises that are being, uh, that the late Dr. Gengob is being hailed for. So that's, it's, it's quite a journey that this, uh, the late statesman has worked from the age of 21 when he left uh, Namibia going into exile and then till the age of 82. So it was quite a journey that he has been on his feet for the interest of this country. Of course, over six decades of service there from uh, Dr. Hage G. Kengo. But nonetheless, he will be laid to rest at the Heroes Acre. Uh, the gates, of course, are open. People are arriving as we speak. Dignitaries, members of the Diplomatic Corps and others, of course, already have arrived uh, at the Acre as well. But to give us more details in terms of what's happening there, let's simply cross over to Emil Sabeb, who's standing by at the Heroes Acre. Uh, good morning, Emil. Thank, Thank you, you Blanche and Ricardo. Like you rightfully said, um, the gates opened at 6 o'clock at the Heroes Acre. Um, the queues are far-reaching, quite lengthy queues behind me. You Hello. can see it is Good getting uh, fuller. 
by the minute um, Dr. Tengop's body will arrive here shortly before 10 o'clock, um, where he will then be laid to rest here at the Heroes Acre. Now, last night at Independence Avenue, um, the official ceremony ended with a traditional scent of uh, the Nukwen ice, of course, engaging in Kwangobos, some of them directly coming from the Independence Stadium. I'm joined now by Mr. Khwagup, who was also at the stadium, a mourner um, here to to see off the president. Marisa. Aroma <laughs> Uh, just to summarize, thank you so much, sir. Uh, just to summarize what he's saying, this, um, the whole news has been shocking, um, still uh, struggling or trying to find answers in the passing of Dr. Kengop. So far, uh, dignitaries have started arriving. I've seen various political um, leaders, uh, parliamentarians from uh, various political parties also arriving. Uh, Pastor Reverend uh, David is also here to speak with us, um, paying his respects, mourning the death of Dr. Kengop. Madiwake <laughs> Ida <laughs> Uniga, Tomasiba Mabis, Cosi, Chitake, Kadira Kangan, Kenko, Um Arisia, Nadi E.
uh, uh, presiden uh, uh, singa presiden na rakan kan nang kolopa ma amda sip neces onata niti ni sa sa se sip taip ma sida di presiden di sida di mung sida di papa pa to chin stinin kesa Uh, what she's saying basically is uh, expressing her thanks to Madame Monica Kengos for allowing the traditional process to take place. What I also understand from her is the First Lady joined in um, on, the, on the, the, the rite of passage where she expressed that they gave over uh, the spirit of Dr. Kengop to the ancestors. Um, Blanche and Ricardo, we will still see what we get from the Heroes Acre um, arrival of the dignitaries, arrival of of the public still ongoing here at the Heroes Acres. Those were the scenes from one of the candlelight vigils in the two, one of the two Kavango regions. And I must mention that throughout the three weeks, the different towns, different regions have been ha having the candlelight vigils whereby mourners would pay their last respects to Dr. G the late uh, president, Dr. Hage Gengob, as well as to reflect on the life and times of his uh, legacy. Well, of course, in terms of that as well, we are going to continue with these reflections just to let you know uh, we are expecting the official, uh, in fact, commencement of the funeral at exactly uh, 10 o'clock uh, in terms of the arrivals right now. We know the general public, public the gate was open for at 6 o'clock. Uh, many of them moving from the Independent Stadium uh, to the Heroes Acre. At 7.55, the uh, service chiefs started arriving. The service chiefs, of course, all the service chiefs of the Namibian Defense Force, including the police as well, that is uh, the chief of the Navy, uh, the Army, as well as the Air Force uh, and the Namibian uh, police, uh, represented by Inspector General uh, Joseph uh, Shikongo as well. And at exactly five minutes past eight, the members of the diplomatic corps started arriving. That's, of course, all our ambassadors and diplomatic staff uh, from other countries. And then uh, Chief Emmanuel Klasev, the chairperson of the Council of the Traditional Leaders, of course, opening up the arrival of our national leaders, followed by Dr. George Simata, the uh, secretary to cabinet, and then the hosts, uh, the mayor of Ventuk, as well as uh, the regional governor of uh, Thomas region as the host, of course, also arriving now to receive the rest of the dignitaries uh, that will be showing up uh, for today. And then, of course, in the next few minutes, we will witness also the arrival of Honorable uh, Vikendri Manani, the leader of the uh, official opposition. Uh, he was, of course, also one of the Paul bearers uh, selected uh, for uh, the funeral, the burial, the memorial, as well as uh, the burial and what a tribute uh, from Honorable Venani yesterday. Yes, Ricardo, and the poll bearers, well, the selection of the poll bearers remains. So um, uh, the leader of the official opposition also will uh, perform that function today alongside the military uh, poll bearers. So that is what will continue. But just before we had the the visuals or showed the visuals of the candlelight virgils from one of the two Kavango regions, we had Emil Sapep from uh, the Heroes Acre where he spoke to the members of the public 
Mike who were at, who were at Independence Stadium. Some of them that he said uh, made their way immediately after uh, sun rising with the remains of the late president, uh, Dr. Gingob. They made their way to the Heroes Acre as the gates opened at six o'clock. But let's now cross over to the Independence Stadium where Denver Kisting is on standby with the latest. And just uh, as, as an update that the procession will move from Independence uh, Stadium to the Heroes Acre. Good morning, Ricardo. Good morning, Blanche. Good morning, Team Studio 2. Thank you for holding the fort at headquarters. My name is Denver Kisting. We're coming to you live from Independence Stadium where the body of President Haki Kengup is lying in state until it will be moved to Euros Acre later this morning for the official burial that will commence at 10 o'clock this morning. For a regular traffic and related update, particularly as far as it relates to the proceedings for today, we're joined this morning by Superintendent Marceline Murapa from the City Police's Public Relations and Community Policing Section. Good morning to you, Sup, and thank you so much for joining us. Good morning. Um, good morning to you and good morning to our viewers. Sup, I'm sure yesterday was a very busy day for law enforcement. Could you take us through what transpired today and perhaps also tell the viewers what it is that they can expect today? Uh, uh, this morning, I'll start off with the traffic updates, uh, which is a few of our roads that are affected, especially the CBD and the City South. This is the road that will be leading us to the Heroes Acre. We have the intersection of Dr. Abby May and Robert Mugabe that's currently flashing on red. We have Sam Nuyoma Drive at Dr. Kwame Kuruma also flashing on red. Ours Road and Michelle McLean. Uh, intersecting Frankie Friedrichs, also flashing on red. And mind you, this road is the route uh, um, among the route that uh, it's part of the route that's leading us to uh, the Heroes Acre. It's currently flashing on red, but um, it's not something to worry about as our officers will be there to assist uh, with the directing um, uh, the flow of traffic. Um, with that said, again, um, in the CBD, we have uh, Borumba Kerina intersecting Independence Avenue that's also flashing on red. Uh, but like I mentioned earlier, a traffic officer out there to assist. Uh, if we are uh, more uh, occupied, we'll also use the shift that's on duty to assist us now directing the, the flow of traffic. There's also a road closure, Independence Avenue intersecting um, Daniel Monamava. Um, that is closed off because of the construction that's currently um, going on there. Uh, with that said, just to again inform our viewers that at the Heroes Acre itself, we have erected a few signage that will assist us to guide the um, the, the uh, private vehicle as well as uh, all the vehicles that will be going there in terms of parkings, where will the public park and where will the dignitaries park. Uh, although there are those who are already assisting to direct as you enter uh, the main entrance to the uh, Heroes Acre, we still have signage. Should you find yourself not sure, being not sure of where to tend to, you will see that there are signages there that will uh, assist with guiding before we proceed, Sup, I think it's important to ask you, in the event that I'm a civilian arriving there with my own transport and I see that public transport spaces have been occupied, is it your recommendation that I rather leave or what would you advise under those circumstances? No, I will not advise you to leave, but if that parking is full, like I mentioned, there are those people who are already at the entrances. Those people, they, are, they, will, they will be informed if the parking is full, just to advise the, those with private vehicles to see where they can get parkings, maybe somewhere closer to, to the Heroes Acre, just uh, to allow everyone to attend. Yeah, um, also to mention a few, um, we have our officers all over. I understand there are still those that are being picked at the bus stops. And uh, our officers are also there assisting with the crowd control and making sure that everybody is getting in the bus safely without fighting and all those things. But uh, again, um, I understand there will be a number of kids also allowed to get in the bus to go to the Heroes Acre. To the Heroes Acre. But as of yesterday, we received uh, a report whereby two uh, minors um, came to the stadium, but they did not return home up to now as we speak. One is 13 years old and another one is 12. Just to urge the members of the public there that should you see the two young um, girls or maybe anybody that know their way about, just to inform um, the police station or to 
take them to the police station so they, they will inform um, the relatives or the police so that we contact them. I'm also urging the parents that if your child is going either to the independent stadium or to the Heroes Acre, please uh, take care of your kids, especially if you are going with them. So we avoid this type of incidents that happened uh, yesterday. Just one moment, sir. Is it your understanding that the two girls who are missing at the present moment arrived here without any parental supervision, without any guardians, without any caretakers? Yes, they, they actually asked the parents if they can come to the stadium, but the parents said, no, you cannot go. They said, okay, it's fine. They were playing outside. Before the parents... Um, went outside to go check if they were still there. They were gone with the buses. They were only informed by some of the family members that know them that there were kids, that uh, they, those kids were seen at the stadium, but then they did not return home. Uh, I spoke to them this morning, but I advised them to visit the police station because what we do most of the time is if a child uh, gets missing and uh, is found, they will most of the time bring them to us or to the nearest police station and they, after then the, the parents then will be aged to go visit the station to see if they can find them. I told them to visit Katutura, all, um, even the mobile station nearby them, to see if they are in case taken there by the public member or anybody that got them. I remember you flagged this issue yesterday morning when we touched base with you at Parliament Gardens and that parents need to be mindful either to leave their children at home with a trusted adult or in the event that the children accompany them to make sure that they're aware of their children's whereabouts throughout. In the event that my child asks me whether or not they may come to Independence Stadium or Euros Acre and I say no and then they vanish without my knowledge. Is the parent still held accountable in the event that something happens to the child or what happens? Not necessarily, but a parent, now if you notice that your child, you haven't seen your child 10, 15 minutes or 20 minutes, you are looking for the child, you can't find the child. Immediately just inform the police to assist you, see if we can locate the child. And if, for instance, the child already asked you if they can go to the um, hero's acre, you refuse a few minutes after the child is missing. Obviously, the, the one thing that you think of, that child could be gone to the hero seeker. So go there and try to see if you can find the child, because um, it, it's really not safe for them. Because the whole day, when a parent did not allow a child to go, obviously you know not give them anything, money, maybe for instance to go buy food. How will they be the whole day with no money, no, no food, no water? So it's for a parent also to go out, they ask the police to assist you and go look for your child, so you go get your child and bring them back. And I'll also advise that for those minors that are allowed to get in the bus, at least not below the age of um, seven, eight, or maybe 10, because those are too small. Um, those that are a little bit bigger, who may know where the house is, that will be better. But now as for these two kids that are missing, they, uh, I asked the parents and they told me that no, they know where home is, unless maybe they just did not get transport to take them home, but they cannot really get lost in Windu. They know, especially the side of Katutra, the area, they do not know is the area of uh, Olympia and the Klene Kupe. Maybe this is the area they could maybe not know from here to their houses. Is there perhaps a mechanism, because we do know the buses are City of Antuk buses, is there a mechanism, is there an additional team member on the bus to verify that if a minor boards the bus, that they are in the presence of an adult that they know, or is anyone allowed onto the bus provided there is space? I would imagine that it would require additional manpower to go through that verif verification process, and of course it would put pressure on the resource of time as well. Yeah, no, unfortunately, uh, myself personally, I was only informed a few minutes as I was approaching here that, uh, uh, not informed, but I overheard it on the radio to say that uh, all those that are picking up uh, people at the bus stop do not um, allow the kids also to get in as, the, as per the indication they received. This should be somebody that uh, I think uh, supervising those that are picking up people. But then I could not now verify that time to see as to is there somebody that's assisting verifying as per your question. Notwithstanding the very dark period that we're going through as a nation, notwithstanding the very dark day that today is, seeing that we will be laying to rest our president, we do know that criminals, unfortunately, may make use of the opportunity. Have any incidents report, been reported around that, especially in this area? Yeah, um, incidences of um, theft out of motor vehicle. Yesterday, I 
encouraged the members of the public not to leave valuable um, in their vehicle. But there were a number of uh, theft out of motor vehicle that took place somewhere around here, and that is in the area of um, um, the criminals breaking into the car and get the valuable that could be visibly seen in the vehicle. I will still encourage members of the public, vehicle owners, not to leave valuables in the vehicle, laptop, cell phone, handbag, or even a $10. Don't leave it on a seat unless you forgot. Forgetting is something else. But try to keep it somewhere out of um, anybody that will pass sight. That is just to prevent or to reduce the cases of theft out of motor vehicle. And the other issue is um, also where there's a crowd, um, the criminals will always take chances. Uh, Pickpocketing, they like to do that. You feel like, okay, because we are too many, the person maybe is just passing and, uh, you know, maybe you might sh rub shoulder to shoulder as you are passing. It's not, sometimes it's not normal. They all do that, but at the same time, touching your hand back, your pocket and all that just to get whatever that you have. While we are mourning. Yes, um, not everybody is um, here to mourn, although they are touched, but at the same time they are up there uh, to make use of this opportunity because they know that uh, almost everyone is vulnerable this time, so they will take advantage of that. So any final thoughts before we let you go? Um, for now, I'll just urge again the public members, not the public vehicle, to leave on time. Uh, I'm not sure of the, the capacity. They understand it's a little bit, um, um, it might not accommodate a lot of people, but I'll urge that they leave on time to avoid congestion. As we speak, our, our road might be heavily congested already because uh, the direction is to the southern part of the city. So we should live on time to stay out of a congested area and also just protect ourselves and our little ones as well as um, keeping our available out of sight. Perhaps a reminder of the numbers that anyone, a visitor and a resident can call or send a message to in the event that they encounter something, please. Yeah, for anything that may need um, our listeners, our viewers' attention, uh, City Police, uh, toll-free number is 061-302-302, or SMS line, which is double four double four. You can send your information there. We can see it and send someone out. Or you can contact our counterpart, Namibian Police, which is on one zero triple one. It's always reachable. We are working together. We are in joint uh, uh, operation, all of us, uh, starting from the day. Everything started up to now. But this is not only the period that we work together, but throughout we are always together. Thank you so much. Nitu Mezi, Superintendent, thank you for your time. Thank you for your continued service. And also today may also be a, a heavy day for you. He was also your president. So our thoughts are also with you. Thank you so much. Shangwe. That was Superintendent Marceline Murapo from the City Police's Public Relations and Community Policing Section calling, as always, for continued vigilance, particularly today. We do see that members of the public are still arriving here at Independence Stadium to pay their last respects to President Kengop. The body is still lying in state. It will be closed soon before the procession will get underway from year to year as acre to his final resting place.
heart of Namibia, a legend emerged. The people's president, a man larger than life. He possessed a presence that extended beyond what met the eye. To truly grasp his impact, one had to be in his presence. He was a man of many facets, a people's person, a farmer, a seasoned diplomat, a family man, a straight talker, a lover of sports, a true gentle giant. Born under a tree on a farm, his journey led him to become the first prime minister and the third democratically elected president of the Republic of Namibia. His legacy lives on, forever engraved in the hearts and minds of the Namibian people. Let us celebrate the extraordinary life and leadership of the people's president. Together, we carry on his vision. Remember, inclusivity embodies unity, peace and harmony, while exclusivity breeds conflict. shared prosperity. With each new year, the promise of better opportunities is inevitable. Go well, go well, go well. Go well, go well, go well. Till we meet again, son of the sun. a tribute song go well well Ricardo have you noticed how over the last three weeks the creative arts industry also came out and paid tributes to Dr. Gainkop in their own man, way man it's 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 been incredible over the last three weeks particularly in that aspect uh, we know there was a number of songs uh, um, that were released I think particularly also the likes of Big Ben I think for Big Ben uh, in particular for Big Ben it was the next day, if I'm mm -hmm, not mistaken, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. either the Sunday evening or 
the Monday morning, oh, the Monday, I received yeah. <laughs> the song in, 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 in the WhatsApp inbox. And that's how quick the arts were also to, of course, respond uh, to that as well. We know that the president was an avid music lover. He mm -hmm. supported local musicians. And he, supported he could local dance. Music. He could bust the move. He could definitely bust the move there. So that I'm pretty sure a little later on we'll play in some clips of him busting some of those moves. Good thing, of course, is that the musicians were also given their platform and the time uh, to mourn the president Thursday. Uh, last week they had uh, that concert the at concert, Independence Arena, yes. the free concert, where we had a variety of artists uh, perform for the Namibian uh, people from the afternoon straight up until uh, past midnight there as well. You know, it's, if you look at the kind of thing that we're dealing with, one would really understand why it takes some time for us to come to the day because there are so many sectors that he had a hand in. Everybody yes, wanted and, to have their tribute and show their respects. And before the broadcast, Ricardo, I had a chat with the Selima, our, our, our reporter, where she even said, even just the inserts that uh, the NBC and all the other media houses produced, where one could actually put the late president in every beat, which is now the type of uh, story or the type of field that one covers. In fact, even the sports uh, fraternity also had their day for tributes, the business community, so and the youth and the elders. So one could really just uh, put or place Dr. Genkov anywhere and everywhere. Oh, there he is, busting a move. And I remember that was a soccer match between Zambia, a friendly between Namibia and uh, a Namibian team and a Zambian national team. Is that is that correct? Yeah, I think that I think that's correct. I think that's also it's a football match that that, that I remember as well. Uh, all those moves, and then that's the kind of energy he had. A, a happy person, uh, for the most part, of course, even on serious occasions, and. Uh, just this ability to charm different crowds, whether it was young people, whether it was older people, uh, he was truly blessed in You see, somebody even that said area. that for, for him to master a particular dance so move, quickly. all you just had to do is show him once. Uh. Just demonstrate it to him once and then he'll do it there even better than the teacher. <laughs> so that was the kind of person Dr. Gengob was. And I'm pretty sure, of course, in terms of the arts uh, sector, they are also quite happy with, with the opportunity that they had to, to mourn him as well. And I'm pretty sure there will be uh, more work that will come. Of course, music is a little bit much faster for, to, for production, but I understand there is a lot of work in terms of uh, video, documentaries, etc., etc., uh, that are still in play. Uh, for folks, I know this is the Swapo Party headquarters. <laughs> one of the most popular videos of his. Of oh, his. He was always just the, that person who cheer everyone. Uh, look at the vice president of the, of the Swapo Party. Also just behind him with her fist, trying to also master the moves. But I used to tease him a lot, uh, Ricardo, that <laughs> how is it that all of them came back that was the favorite. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> I think this looks like the Congress of. Yes, yes. One of one of the Congresses of the party. And it's so amazing how the Dilimani band was always just in tune at that particular moment, him busting that move. We tried to master it, but I'm sure even the comrades at the Swapo, <laughs> Swapo party, Kedas also tried to master that move, but now nobody could do it better than the master himself. Nobody could do it better than the man himself. And of course, we know there will be uh, a lot of celebration also today as well. Uh, some of the messages that I'm receiving already saying, listen, we are preparing. We're going to go buy wood early in the morning. We are celebrating our president today. Uh, and that's the spirit, of course, uh, that he has left us with a lot of joy. Uh, even though it is still a somber time, uh, he will be remembered as a charming, as a happy uh, president, a people's person, uh, uh, for a lack of a better word. When we come back after this short visit to the marketplace, we will speak to Colonel uh, Shalumbu, who's of course going to be joining us here. And today he is in particular draped up. The one thing, uh, before, I want to, before we go for this break, also Blanche, that I've heard throughout all this tribute was that he was very serious about looking good. 
even if you come, if you show up for work, you need to look the part as well. And we've had a number of individuals. Dr. Orden Marty told me the first time he came to the office after he was offered the personal assistant job um, already in the 90s. Uh, when he showed up, he had two different colors on in terms of his suit blazer and the trouser. And mm -hmm, the president mm -hmm. sent him home and told him, listen, that yellow that you're wearing and that blue, it's, go home, it's not on it. go it's and put on a on proper suit and come back. You're not going to start your office day today mm -hmm. unless you're dressed properly. Mm -hmm. But of course, that goes together with the, with, with the discipline, showing respect, of course, for your audience, the people that you're meeting and the profession that you're working in. Now, he always had this saying, Ricardo, that your dress code should announce your arrival. Mm -hmm. So, and that goes with the scent as well. That goes with your discipline, as you said, but that also goes with the hard work that one puts into whatever you are doing at that particular moment as well. And that, uh, those uh, discipline or him reprimanding his, his uh, support staff was also extended to us as the media crew who would accompany <laughs> him. And I wish we had an opportunity to speak to my two camera operators, Tala Gasheta and uh, Thomas Amkwaya. They used to imitate the late president to the latter. And with that, I would also say even the type of ties they would put on, even the cufflinks, even just the walk, you know, the signature walk that of putting the hand in one pocket and then I used to tell my two camera operators guys please don't do that because you have to carry the camera <laughs> the and camera, yeah. you carrying the camera requires you to have to put both of your hands on the camera we need steady shots leave the walk for Ahaba. <laughs> so, well, yeah. of course, the procession will be started. The ceremonial route procession will be starting very soon uh, from uh, the Independent Stadium, of course, headed to the Heroes Acre, uh, where the uh, burial ceremony will take place. We have Colonel uh, Shilumbu uh, joining us after the break, so we can just unpack for us what we can expect uh, for today uh, from the side of the Namibian Defence Force and the procedures that will be employed. And also, just before we cut to the break, uh, Ricardo, earlier on, we did a show visuals of the military personnel at Independence Stadium taking turns to salute uh, the late president who at the time until the time of his passing was the commander in chief. Fellow Namibians, we have now turned the tide and the Namibian house is in much better shape. We have to look forward in our march towards shared prosperity. With each new year, the promise of better opportunities is inevitable. Go well, go well, go well. Go well, go well, go well. Till we meet again, son of the soul. Full of liars, son of the soul. 
Well, of course, Josie Josie in the background there with uh, Go Well, one of uh, the many uh, songs that were released by uh, Namibian artists, musicians, of course, over the last three weeks to pay tribute uh, to their late president, who had, of course, supported the arts industry uh, so gallantly uh, during his uh, period. Of course, we know that there were also provisions made throughout the, the National Art Council during COVID uh, to provide financial assistance to up to 75,000 apiece uh, for uh, musicians. Uh, so, of course, we know that they are showing their appreciation for some of those efforts, one of many uh, from the side of the late president. But now, of course, we know that this is a state funeral. There are a number of uh, procedures that we need to observe uh, in as far as how the body has been handled, how it's being transported, and some of the activities that take place around that as well. And as we know, uh, when it's a state funeral, the Namibia Defense Force is in charge. And this one in particular, uh, much more special for them because the late president uh, is or was rather their commander in chief at the time of his passing. I'm joined now by Colonel Shalombu from the Namibia Defense Force uh, Public Relations Office uh, to reflect on the activities for this morning. Uh, Colonel, thank you so much for making time out to join us once again this morning. Good morning, Ricardo, and good morning, Namibia. Mm -hmm. Well, Colonel, of course, I just want to say, I think when you were here yesterday, the, the, the draping was completely different. You were in camouflage, but I see today uh, you have switched up. Just speak to us around, uh, around this. Is this now the ceremonial outfit or? Yes, uh, you are correct. Uh, the uniform that I had yesterday on, it was a camouflage, which is a combat uh, uniform, ready for combat or for any operation. Uh, and the uniform that I'm having today, this is the ceremonial uniform, whether it is for any celebration or for the ceremony like uh, the state funeral of our former head of state and uh, commander in chief of the Namibian Defense Force. So this is the gear that we put on, especially most of our senior officers, junior, some of the junior and NCOs. So this is the uniform that we, we have to put on today. Mm -hmm. But don't be surprised, uh, the escort that I've, I've told you yesterday, yes. the big number of troops, uh, they will put on the camouflage, the combat uniform. They so, will put on the camouflage. Yes. And now there is uh, the, 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 the number of troops, the 200 that will be standing at the entrance. More than 200. And More they will also be wearing camouflage. They will be also wearing uh, camouflage. Okay. But they are commanders, uh, the officers, they will have... Uh, the ceremonial dress. They would have the ceremonial dress on yes. uh, there as well. And of course, I've always been mentioning that no one audience is the same. I just want us to also just tell will be followed uh, throughout the, uh, the, the, the ceremony today. Let's start off with what's happening at Independence Stadium. What is the status right now? We know, of course, that the body has not been loaded onto the carriage yet. As we are speaking right now, I was just communicating with my crew members on the ground. They have informed me that uh, uh, there are still some members of the public who are still turning up to view and pay their respect uh, to our former president. So there's still a number of people who are coming in, and these are the people who are making their ways to Independence Stadium. And uh, immediately after that number have reduced or completely there's nobody else coming in, the casket uh, will be then be prepared for Hiros Eka for the burial to take place later on this morning. Is there an exact time that we expected for, uh, for, for that procession to start moving or is it depending on the amount of people that are still um, remaining at the Independence Stadium? We are expecting the casket to be or to arrive at Heroes Acre by 9.45 this morning. Uh, that's the time that uh, the casket should arrive at, uh, uh, at, 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 at Heroes Acre. Mm -hmm. Exactly at 9.45 the casket should be at Heroes Acre. Mm -hmm. Uh, what, Colonel, take us through uh, one last time, of course. We've seen the guards that are standing around in the visuals just now. For the laymen on the street, what is their responsibility? We've been seeing, and of course, some movements around uh, the, the coffin throughout the evening. If you can just talk us through that. Uh, the vigil guards uh, were tasked to make sure that uh, the body of the late Commander-in-Chief should be guarded throughout the night. And beside the vigil guards, we also have sentries far from the coffin or far from the casket who are around the stadium in and outside to make sure that uh, the stadium is it's well protected and also for members of the public to come and view without, without any disturbance. So uh, that is the symbol, uh, 
duty of the vigil guards plus the sentries to make sure that uh, the casket is uh, well protected and security is provided throughout the night and also uh, to assure the public that uh, whatever time they want to go and view uh, the body of the late they can do that and they've been doing that throughout the evening or mm -hmm. throughout the night of course the important point now would be in the next few minutes uh, we'll have the body loaded onto the carriage mm -hmm. and then the the uh, the ceremonial route procession will complete its uh, route to the Heroes Acre. Uh, for the laymen on the streets and perhaps also for the benefit of those that might not have uh, heard you uh, concerning this, can you just take us through uh, the arrangement of, of, of the procession and who is where um, and who are, of course, the accompanying officers and their ranks as well? Uh, the procession towards Heroes Acre, the NDF will provide a final, this is a final highest military respect to the commander-in-chief with an escort and street lining of NDF, of NDF troops. As I stated yesterday that uh, this lining or the street lining of NDF troops uh, along the road will, will start at the pointing 10 into Heroes Acre and it will continue until at the internal flame on top of there. So that whole portion will be covered with the street lining immediately after the police roadblock then you turn in so you'll be able to see uh, some some of the visuals when they come in uh, from aerial will be able to see that street lining uh, of, of our troops being displayed yes just, just talk us through the uh, what we see in the visuals so at first i think we said the four bikes starting with those uh, the four bikes uh, and the city police are the sweepers in front followed by the army provost uh, vehicles, followed by the APCs. That's so those the, two are the provosts, that's the military police yeah, now? Yeah. Pol military police, those sedans, those two. And then uh, you get your forward protection. These are the armed personnel vehicle called uh, P5, P05. And then you have uh, the chaplain uh, Agarare, that's the Agarare with a chaplain. And then uh, this is the RG32 pulling the gun carriage with a casket on. Uh, those are the visuals from, from Friday. Mm. And then we have also the rear protection, uh, the APCs again. And then the bus with bearers. And then I can see the vehicle of uh, the service commanders. That's now the army commander, the air force commander, the navy commander and other major generals, uh, such as uh, uh, Major General uh, Nathinge. I also see uh, the other vehicles of other generals, uh, like uh, Brigadier General Shikomba, the ambulance, and then this other RG32 behind. They are also there just in case the one that is pulling uh, the casket or the pulling the gun carriage, anything happened to it, you have a backup. Plan A and Plan B should be always be implemented. Definitely, Plan A and Plan B, and of course, uh, I think that closes off the procession finally with the, with the Namibian police uh, behind them um, as well. In terms of what you're saying a bit earlier on, of course, just take us through. We know that uh, next to uh, the, the the coffin, they are a number of individuals that are there. We know they are pallbearers, and we also know that they're also the military pallbearers. Just talk to us through who are the military pallbearers and their respective ranks and the reason for those ranks as well. Okay. Um, the pallbearers, um, as I stated uh, yesterday, uh, they are major generals and few brigadier generals. Mm -hmm. Simple because uh, this is one of the highest uh, uh, state funeral where we have lost uh, a former, uh, where we have lost a president, or even if it was a former president, it would be again, uh, the Paul bearers would be of the same rank category. So in this case, we have uh, uh, Army Commander, Major General Aktofel Nambahu, is one of the Paul bearers, Air Force Commander, uh, uh, that's Air Vice Marshal Teofelas Shaende, he's also a Paul bearer. We have um, Admiral Paulus Amogulu, Navy Commander, is also a Paul Bearer. Then we have Major General Petrus Nathinge, is also a Paul Bearer. We have uh, Brigadier General uh, Air Commodore Hawanga Muhenge, mm -hmm. 
is also a pole bearer. We have uh, Rear Admiral Junior Grade Ready All Depth, Go Depth, Go Depth, it's also uh, one of the pole bearers. Mm. And then the bearers, uh, these are the trusted uh, formation sergeant majors who must handle now the, ca the, the casket to pick it up from, example, from the casket, I mean from the gun carriage to the internal flame where it will go and stand for, for a few, few, few hours. So those are the formation sergeant majors. The formation sergeant major, we started with um, warrant officer class one, Mungome. It's a formation sergeant major from 1-2 brigade that is based in Kietmans. And then we have warrant officer class one, Ipinge. He's a fleet command master at arms from the Navy. We have also warrant officer Kandume, support command master at arms also from the Navy. We also have warrant officer class one, Paulus, formation sergeant major from uh, Karibib Air Base. We also have warrant officer Shikongo, formation sergeant major from Air Base in Hrothfendain. We will also have uh, warrant officer Kadila, it's a formation sergeant major from uh, Air Defense Brigade. We have Warrant Officer Class 1, Ishuna. is also a formation sergeant major from 4 Artillery Brigade, that is in Ochivarongo. We have also a Warrant Officer Class 1, Bernard. Uh, he's from um, the Namibian Defense Force Training Establishment. We will also have a Warrant Officer Class 1, Kanyungu. He's a regimental sergeant major from the ceremonial battalion here at 21 Battalion, 21 uh, Brigade in Winduk. We also have a very dedicated uh, warrant officer, Muti, regimental sergeant major. He's also from uh, NDF training establishment. We also have warrant officer, Kangupa. He's from 211 battalion, from 21 brigade. We also have warrant officer, uh, class 2, Kalimbo. He's also from uh, the NDF TE. So those are some of the sergeant majors, formation sergeant majors that are entrusted to carry and handle the casket from point A to point B, especially when they are offloading or loading it on the gun carriage. We, of course, also have uh, the uh, civilian uh, Paul Barris that will be serving alongside uh, the Namibia Defense Force uh, yesterday and today, uh, starting off with the Honorable Alfius Narus, a former member of the cabinet as well, uh, Mr. Mangaliso Kengob, who is the uh, eldest son uh, of uh, the late president. We also have Honorable John Mutora, who was just sworn in as the Deputy Prime Minister and the Minister of Works and Transport. Of course, also a long-time friend of the late and a member of Parliament and Cabinet since independence. Also, Honorable McHenry Vanani, the leader of the official opposition, he is also one of the Paul Bearers, uh, delivered a statement, not only a statement, but a tribute and uh, remembrance yesterday, a remarkable, remarkable uh, statement yesterday made by uh, the member of opposition, of course, but also a, a quite a good friend of uh, the President uh, King of as well. Also, the other pen bearers, uh, Paul Bearers, uh, Honorable Ben, Amadila, also former member of cabinet and uh, Swapo party stalwart as well. And he's also one of those that will be the Paul Barris. And last but not least, uh, Lieutenant General, uh, retired Martin Charlie, former uh, chief of the Namibia Defense Force, uh, will also be the final uh, Paul Bearer uh, alongside the Namibia Defense Force. Let's talk about the activities now. Is there something you wanted to add before we move over to the activities at the venue? Yes. Um Yesterday, we spoke of the number of gun salutes yes. for different categories. Uh, today, I have that number, and I would like to share that number with the public so that they can also know for their own uh, consumption. Uh, one of them is um, the former president, for example, uh, is entitled also to the same treatment that is accorded to a sitting president. So it's a 21 gun salute. And the number also will not exceed uh, more than 2,000 troops to participate in the state funeral of a former president. And then um, for the prime minister, the gun salute, it's been reduced to 19 gun salute. Mm -hmm. And the number of troops that are going to participate, it's not more than 900 troops. Mm -hmm. uh, for the speaker of the National Assembly, the number of gun salutes are 19. And the number of troops not to exceed 800 men and women in uniform to participate in the type of uh, funeral that is accorded to the Speaker of the National Assembly. 
The chairman of the National Council is entitled to 17 gun salute and also the number of troops not exceeding 800 men and women in uniform for the type of uniform for the type of uh, funeral that is accorded to the chairman of the national council the chief justice is entitled also to 17 gun salute mm -hmm. and the number of troops not change it's 800 deputy prime minister is also entitled to 17 gun salute and the number of troops participating for that type of a funeral accorded to the Deputy Prime Minister is not also exceeding 800 men and women in uniform. Cabinet Ministers is entitled also to 17 gun salute and the number of troops, no change, it's also 800. 800. Attorney General is also entitled to 17 gun salute and the number of troops are also no change, are 800. Any other citizen as directed by the President Depending on the type of funeral, the gun salute is 13, and the number of troops not exceeding 600 uh, men, and men, and men and women in uniform that are going to participate in the funeral. Oh, that's 600. Okay. That's a very, very clear in terms of the numbers, and of course it reduces according to, to, to the different ranks you are right. uh, that you find. In terms of uh, the activities that will take place, the ceremonial activities from the side of the Defence Force mm -hmm. at the burial site today, mm -hmm. the gun salute will be one of them. Yes. Uh, we'll have a gun salute. Then you'll have the, the then, fly salute. Then we'll have a fly salute. Uh, it will be very, very interesting. Um, yesterday, after I left, I went to get in touch with the colleagues from Air Force just to highlight me more and give me more information regarding uh, the salute. Um, For this, the benefit of those that haven't tuned in, just take us through, yeah. through, through the fire salute and how it happens in, at the same time in parallel with uh, the 21 gun salute as well. During the lowering of the casket, the whole parade will be commanded by the escort commander for national salute. And this is uh, Brigadier General Orange. Uh, he's the one who's going to command because the parade, the main parade, or the main escort will be at the lower ground. While the lowering of the casket is taking place at the gravesite, but with a, uh, with, 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 with a guard of honor very close to the, grave, uh, to the gravesite. Mm -hmm. So the escort commander will command the whole parade, including the guard of honor on top, mm -hmm. national salute. And then immediately once he command national salute, the gun salute, the 21 gun salute, will be fired. At the same time, we are expecting now a missing main salute to be carried out by the Air Force. Mm -hmm. Meaning, um, we expect eight, K-8. Eight, K-8, K-8 is the name of the jet fighters or the aircraft. Uh, they will be flying from west to east mm -hmm. of Windhoek. One of the aircraft will lead in front, while the other seven or the other seven aircraft will follow their leader in a VIC formation. The formation they are going to fly it's called a VIC or arrowhead. The formation will display presidential and national colours. We know these colours. These colours are blue, gold, green, and red. The leading aircraft will not display any color because it will break off by pulling up and break off to the right. Means a lost man formation will symbolize that we as Namibia or Namibians have lost a leader who was now, in this case, His Excellency Dr. Hage Kinkop. But as a nation, we have to move forward. Therefore, the seven remaining aircraft will proceed without the leader displaying the presidential and national colors. So that is the most attractive uh, action that is going to take place at Heroes Acre, especially when the casket is being lowered with a 21-gun salute concurrently being fired, also with a missing main fly salute taking place. Well, of course, in terms of this, we know that we have uh, 
uh, quite a number of, of, of high-level visitors here in the country with us as well. And we know that, of course, we're seeing a little bit of military presence here. Just talk to us, how many uh, uh, NDF members are participating in the overall ceremonial activities? Overall, uh, we have mobilized um, 2,000 troops to participate. 2,000 troops? 2,000 troops. 2,000 troops are participating in this uh, state funeral of our late uh, president. And that's why you see some of our troops has been uh, deployed along the city, especially where now we are focusing from Independence Stadium to all those suburbs, Sibibasia, uh, Klein Kope, until at Heroes Acre. Our members are deployed at the intersections and in some of them you might not see them they will but take they cover there. they are there they are only they are the only ones who can see all the movements that's happening so the security it's really not not compromised at all so you you are you are safe have there been any reports uh any any security issue reports uh, over the last two days particularly uh where the body is laying in state uh there was no single incident that has been reported although on 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 friday evening when we left uh, the studio here, uh, I went to Parliament Gardens also to go and pay my last respect to uh, the former, yes. uh, I mean, to, 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 to the late uh, president. And around 10.30, um, I met one of the guys at, at Parliament. Uh, he was really disturbing mourners. Uh, he came there with uh, alcohol and a screwdriver, you see. Uh, he, he was just under the influence of alcohol. So our military did not has, uh, entertain his disturbance. He was told to leave immediately. And that was the only isolated uh, incident? Uh, that the was the only days. incident, uh, but mm -hmm. it did not uh, uh, really cause any harm to anyone. But other than that, mm -hmm. everything is under control. We know, of course, uh, we have been celebrated globally for the peaceful transition that we've had on, on Sunday since the passing of the president. We hadn't really seen any military presence until I think around Thursday only when you had to, of course, get ready to receive some of these guests um, as well. Uh, talk to us about the posture and the mood uh, amongst the forces. Um, the transition was a smooth transition. And I want to take some words from uh, our, our, our former first lady, uh, Madam Kinkos, when she said she, she, she was impressed because the, the transition was a smooth one. There was no vacuum. There was no uh, uh, power struggle or power hungry. So beside that, uh, us in the uniform, we were also calm and observing what, how the transition uh, was going to take place. And uh, this show the maturity of our politicians. And uh, it also assured Namibians that we are in the capable hands of all our, politi of, of all our political leaders, being the ruling party, being the opposition, being whoever is involved in politics. The defense us, forces are political. Yeah, the defense forces are political, and we are only uh, waiting for the instructions to come from us. Whatever we are going to carry out, we'll do that. So during the day, like for example on Sunday, particularly for those that might not have heard, mm -hmm. uh, what was the posture of the, cause of course, because we know the service chiefs also attended uh, the swearing-in ceremony, but they had absolutely nothing to do before then? No. With any of the activities of the transition? Nothing at all. For them, it's just to be invited that there will be a new uh, president to be appointed. Mm -hmm. You are invited to go and attend. Mm -hmm. They went to attend without... Uh, a number of troops accompanying them or without alerting the security forces to be on standby. Uh, so it was a very smooth transition, which we are proud of as Namibians and as Namibian Defense Force members. So that's just to hear, look, this is uh, the new president, the new commander-in-chief, and your responsibility is, of course, to carry out instructions. Exactly. And that's what we are doing. Well, there we see, of course, uh, coming back to the Independence Stadium there as well. We understand uh, the president uh, is on his way to the Independence Stadium. 
I think uh, that is now the administrative head of the president on uh, just to go and make sure that everything is going according to plan as well. We will be crossing over uh, to the Independence Stadium in a few minutes once he arrives at the venue. We still see a crowd standing outside there at the Independence Stadium uh, that are, of course, uh, going there to view uh, the uh, body of the late uh, president. Just a reminder, of course, and I think I would like to urge the public at this stage to rather just head over. If you are planning on uh, attending the funeral, to rather just head over now to the Heroes Acre as uh, the uh, body will move anytime soon um, from that end as well. Uh, I just wanted to come back before we just go for a quick break. I'm sure you are with us to, to, to just chat with us throughout the, 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 the burial proceedings uh, around some of those activities. Uh, Talk to us about the, the portion. Now that if, if the funeral is done uh, and, and the body, of course, is laid to rest, what will be the next steps on the side of the NDF or is that where your job ends? You are correct. Uh, after the funeral, we have done or we are done with the state funeral. And that's where the Namibian Defence Force is going to end. And nothing else after the funeral is going to take place. So the 2,000 troops will also return, return back to their return barracks. Back to base. They are returning back to their barracks. They are returning back to their service headquarters. They are returning back to their formations and units. And how so, soon does that happen? Um, the sooner the better. If all the logistics are in place, uh, they can kick off uh, either on Tuesday, because tomorrow is a public holiday. Yeah. They'll kick off. Uh, they are returning back to their units as from Tuesday. And those ones from the units surrounding Windhoek, they also return back to their barracks. And that's the end of uh, the state funeral. Yes. Well, of course, uh, Colonel Shalom was just, uh, Shalom was just giving us some insights with regards to some of the procedures that are taking place uh, today uh, in the commemoration, celebration of the life of this great man, the son of the soil, a gallant fighter, uh, Tabon Beke, of course, the President Tabon Beke, just calling him also a revolutionary of note, a major void uh, left within the uh, Pan-African architecture uh, of the continent, the new Africa that they envisioned together as elder statesmen, of which now we have the legacy, the responsibility to carry on uh, that legacy. We'll be going for a short break. When we come back, we continue with this special broadcast as we have, of course, our presenters and reporters standing by across the country at Heroes Acre as well as at the Independence Stadium. Stay with us. Oh, 
Kamang Hide, I don't need to come with the body when the military because it's marching now to come pick up the... Okay. Yeah, can you hear you? Which side do I move out of the way? Okay. Quack, quack, quack. 
Wait, just wait. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Just wait for me. You're always there. Yeah, you come.
Somber visuals there from the Independent Stadium. This is live as we speak, of course, uh, a small contingency now. Moving with the body of the president, the casket of the late Dr. Hageji Kengop uh, being taken now from the Independent Stadium. The last time he will be leaving this heritage site the Independent Stadium. This is, of course, where he was sworn in as president in 2015, on the 21st of March, as the third president of the Republic of Namibia. That's, of course, also where he witnessed uh, the swearing in of the founding father, him as the prime minister of an independent Namibia in 1990, the 21st of March. Of course, plenty of football matches by the brave warriors and the domestic teams that the president himself went to go and watch there as an avid football lover and of course the final goodbyes um, the namibian defense force uh, as you can see on your screen uh, will continue with its noble task this morning uh, to take the casket from independent stadium to heroes acre for the burial and the final resting place of our former commander-in-chief. Uh, the following route will be used from Independence and the body will now leave uh, Independent Stadium. They just entered the Rugby Street. After the Rugby Street, they will enter the Softball Street. Then they will go into Vika Street. And then after Vika, they will enter the St. Mike Bright Street, then Frank Frederick Street, Hours Road, B1 leading to Rioboth, then arrive at Heroes Acre by quarter to 10. I earlier mentioned that uh, this procession will will provide the final highest uh, military respect to the late Commander-in-Chief with an escort and the street lining of Namibian Defense Force troops along the turning point of into Heroes Acre. And uh, this will show the respect 
because all our troops will be in the street lining. They will salute as the casket pass by them. And we have about uh, two to, two to, between 200 and 250 troops who are participating or line up in that street uh, just after the turning off into Hiro's Acre. Once the casket arrive at the, at the entrance of uh, Hiro's Acre, the escort commander, Brigadier General Patrick Owen Orange, who is also at the same time the officer commanding uh, air defense, uh, the, the, he's, he's the general officer commanding air defense brigade, will lead the procession until uh, the internal flame. His deputy is uh, uh, Group Captain uh, Sisamu, uh, commander of Air Base Grotfondain. Uh, the escort commander, Brigadier Orange, will be followed by the military personnel in a brigade formation, which is called uh, this time around the escort troops. They will be followed by the chaplain, they will be followed uh, the casket with the military uh, pole bearers will be on the, on the, on the, on the, on the, just on, alongside the gun carriage where the pole bearers and bearers will also follow. The state chief mourner, His Excellency Dr. Nangolo Mbumba, will also follow after uh, the gun carriage. And then the chief of the defense force will follow the commander in chief, Air Marshal Martin, Air Marshal Martin Kambulu Pinias who is the military uh, chief mourner, who follow the chief mourner, the president. Last but not least, the family and the widow, they will also follow. And then uh, the procession will kick off uh, immediately after the arrival of the casket at the internal flame. In terms of this, of course, the major difference I'm seeing now is that yesterday and the day before on Friday, the procession did not include the, 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 the widow and the family. Mm -hmm. But this procession from the Independence Stadium to the Heroes Acre does. Yes, uh, because um, on Friday, the family were at Casa Rosaria waiting for the casket to come home. And uh, even when the casket was transported from Casa Rosaria to Independence, very few members of the family uh, who accompanied the casket formed part and parcel of the procession. But this time around, um, some of the family members will join at Independence and some might join at the entrance of Heroes Acre. But it is expected that uh, uh, they should form part and parcel of the The, 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 the white painting at, at, at the bottom, uh, Colonel, you were mentioning that it's, it's not part of the standard color of, of the vehicles. No. Uh, these vehicles were just painted white for this specific uh, uh, state funeral. Uh, white, it's always uh, reflecting peace, love, uh, but mostly it's peace. And that's why they were painted uh, to be white for this ceremony and to make the ceremony more colorful than only having uh, our usual color of camouflage. Well, of course, uh, for now, just to uh, take a look at what you can expect also at the uh, burial site at the... Uh, a Heroes Acre, it's going to be quite a very, very short program that is expected. If you look at the time right now, of course, we expect an arrival already of uh, uh, all the service chiefs, uh, the judiciary, of course, also in attendance. It's one of those few occasions where all three branches of government are gathered in the, f the same place besides, I think, the opening of parliament and the national budget uh, uh, appropriation bill announcement being the other two occasions that all three branches of government are usually uh, together. Of course, we see the procession has started moving. Our time is exactly about 26 minutes past 9 o'clock. And uh, Colonel, you're saying they, they are expected to arrive at 9.45 at Heroes Acre. Exactly. At 9.45, we expect the casket to arrive at uh, Heroes Acre. As you can see that uh, they have already uh, left Independence and I believe they are now entering uh, the Softball Street on their way to Heroes Acre. Uh, the formation that you can see or the leading vehicle currently, that is the Agarare with the NDF chaplain, that is Wing Commander Jeconia Taukuheke. Jeconia Taukuheke will be joined by the bishop uh, who will be leading the procession at Heroes Acre. 
I was informed that uh, there is a bishop, I think even according to the program, mm -hmm. there should be a bishop there. So uh, the Agraria is uh, followed by the, the gun carriage, pulled by the R RG32 armed personal carrier. That is the vehicle that is uh, pulling the gun carriage with a, with a casket on. Mm -hmm. And then uh, they are also followed by the rear protection uh, uh, armed personal vehicle, two of them, those ones, those are the armed personal vehicle. These ones are the forward uh, protection, and then you have two forward protection and two rear protection. And then we also have, again today, uh, our air support, uh, our air support operation conducted by three helicopters, uh, the Aluete, and then with the MI-24 helicopters. So that air operation is very, very critical to provide air support. Those are, of course, just some visuals uh, from uh, the Heroes Acre as we speak. What's happening, of course, at the Heroes Acre as well. Uh, live, we see that there is already uh, attendance uh, at the Heroes Acre, and the numbers, of course, are filling up uh, slowly but surely as well. And these are, of course, some of the visuals from there. Colonel? I spoke to you earlier that uh, we have street lining. Mm -hmm. Those are the troops forming part of the street lining. Um, it's a combination of both forces. Uh, you have the Army, the Air Force, and the Navy. Currently, the visuals that you are seeing, uh, those are from the Navy in white. So they are waiting. Once the escort commander give the command they will adopt um they, they will salute they will salute and pay compliment as the casket of the late pass by them and you're saying that they're lining up right from the entrance of uh just the turn off from the b1 uh, just the turn off acre. just the ten, from the turn off until at the internal uh at the internal flame there uh, what is what is the distance between the offices? Because it looks like it's calculated. <laughs> yeah, uh, the distance is between uh, five to ten meters between them. So it's a big number that you have there. More than two hundred troops. More than two hundred troops that yes. are now stationed just for that. Yeah, on the side, alongside both left and right of the road. Here we of course see also the crowds in attendance uh, there at the. Uh, Heroes Acre, it will definitely get full uh, before the beginning of uh, the program um, at the Heroes Acre. Just to take a look at the order of procession uh, for today, it will be the Namibia uh, Defense Force Chaplain, the casket, His Excellency uh, Nongolong Bumba, President of the Republic of Namibia, Commander in Chief of the Namibian Defense Force, Chief Mourner, and Madame Kengos, uh, the widow as well. The children and the grandchildren, representative, etc., are following um, after that. At 10 o'clock sharp, the program will start with the National and African Union anthems, and then remarks will be made by the Director of our Ceremonies, the Director of the Ceremony, the Right Honorable Prime Minister of the Republic, uh, Sarah Nguela Madela, and the Minister of Defense, uh, Honorable Franz uh, Kapofi, are the directors of ceremony of the program today. After that, we'll have a prayer and scripture reading by uh, uh, Reverend Bishop Sakhir Streep, uh, Evangelical Lutheran Church in the Republic of Namibia. And then after that, we will have a performance by the Namibian Defense Force Military Band. And then uh, basically the only speech at the Heroes Acre, a message by His Excellency Dr. Nangolong Bumba, a president of Namibia and Commander-in-Chief of the Namibian Defense Force and Chief Mona will deliver that statement. Immediately after that, the casket is taken to the gravesite and then the removal of the flag by the bearers and then the lowering of the casket will follow concurrently with the 21-gun salute and the fly past and then there will be the last post and the revel as well and then after that the right of committal by uh, retired Reverend Bishop Sakhir Streep uh, from the Evangelical Lutheran Church as well. After that, we'll have the covering of the grave by the Namibian Defense Force and then the handing over of uh, accoutrements to uh, Madame Kengos, a widow uh, by His Excellency Dr. Nangolong Bumba, President of the Republic of Namibia and Commander-in-Chief of the Namibian Defense Force. Well, um, the procession is proceeding now to Heroes Acre. As you can see the visuals uh, in front there, we have the city police and uh, Nampol uh, sweepers followed 
by the uh, front protection that's the zero five the zero p05 uh, amped personal carrier followed by the agarare with the chaplain ndf chaplain uh wing commander jaconia taukuheke from uh, air base rotondain i mean air base um, caribeb and then we have uh, the rg32 uh also in uh, apc uh, that is pulling now the gun carriage with a casket of our late president and as we are seeing now this is the street line that i have been talking about um, from the main entrance there actually from the turning point from b1 up to the internal flame in the heroes acre so there you have uh, members of members from the namibian navy and then you also have some members from the army and also from the air force so those are the troops uh, assigned to line up for the for receiving the casket as as it passes through them they will they will respect they will pay a, a respect uh, which is a military honor to the fallen uh, uh, late uh, president of course in terms of what we've also seen there uh, uh, the arrival of quite a number of uh, international dignitaries we have 18 heads of state, sitting heads of state uh, that are attending the funeral from across the world. We, of course, uh, also have about 27 delegations uh, on behalf of uh, heads of state that could not be here uh, that are attending the funeral as well. And you see some of those uh, arrivals um, at the Heroes Acre. Colonel, there's one important activity, of course, that also takes place at, towards the end, and that's when the, the handing over of the accoutrements uh, to uh, the widow by His Excellency. Of course, the flag is going to be removed from the coffin and part of the accoutrements that will be handed over to uh, the widow would be the flag as well. Just chat to us about the symbolic importance of, of, that, of that handover. Um, <clears throat> that will also consist of uh, the headdress. Uh, that's the cape, the uniform, camouflage. That included the rank insignia of the former commander in chief plus the one of his awards medals that was awarded to him during uh, i think during his his, his uh, inauguration 2015 if i'm not mistaken mm. so that package uh, will be handed over by the commander in chief to the family in this case to the widow to receive it uh, this is uh, just an indication or it's it's in memory that uh, the commander in chief had a very big position in this country. Being a commander in chief, those rank insignia should be displayed somewhere in the house for future memory to remember that uh, this was for 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 the president. Uh, and also the flag, it's 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 a national symbol, and therefore uh, giving it or presenting it. To the widow and the family it's very very important for them to keep it as a memory that uh, the late was someone very very important not only in namibia globally and uh, we we will see how that uh, uh, procession is going to take place of course uh, moving through sean mcbride now uh, with the casket of uh, the late president. These are live visuals uh, from uh, Sean McBride Street here in the city of Ventuk, headed to the Heroes Acre. The Heroes Acre, of course, the shrine where all the heroes uh, of Namibia uh, get laid to rest. I would also like to take the opportunity to just to welcome all our viewers that are joining us across Sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, thank you for joining us and thank you for mourning uh, with the Namibian nation and mourning for your fellow uh, African leader. Uh, at the same time, I also like to welcome all the listeners that are joining us on our radio services, the radio language services, all 11 of them, of course, nine different uh, native languages are being represented and that news and the burial of the president being brought in those different languages as well. So if you don't prefer English, you can always uh, switch your audio to uh, one of the local languages on the radio and of course uh, hear it in a language that you understand as well. In the next few minutes they will be arriving there and then we can reflect on it. I'm still uh, accompanied here in studio uh, by Colonel Shulumbu.
the procession have just ended uh, uh, Frankie Fredericks Street and uh, they are passing uh, behind uh, uh, Lady Pohamba, the hospital where uh, our late president passed on and immediately they will enter ours uh, street or ours road then into B1 leading to Rehoboth then uh, turn off into Heroes Acre. So with the timing, well, I don't think we are behind time. We have now about uh, 10 minutes to get there, to get to Heroes Acre. And uh, also the RG, uh, the RG32 uh, APC that is, uh, that is now pulling the gun carriage, it, the, the tires you can see they are also painted also white. Also painted white as well. Yeah, it's just for this ceremony. It's not the normal color for, 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 for that uh, uh, APC. And then you still have, uh, at the rear, you also have uh, uh, those uh, protection vehicles, the APCs, uh, 05, P05 uh, armed personal vehicle. And they are proceeding, and we expect them to arrive on time at uh, Heroes Acre. Of course, on your right hand side there, that's the uh, Lady Pohamba Hospital. Well, that accommodated the late president upon his arrival from the United States. And I can see that uh, they have also maintained the speed of, uh, of, of between 20 and 35 kilometers per hour. They are not speeding and they have uh, uh, enough time to just arrive at Hiros Eka as per plane or as per the program. Of course, the line, the streets are still lined up there. We have it on the right-hand side. That's uh, the visuals of the uh, Lady Bohamba uh, Hospital there as well. We know, of course, that at Independence on the uh, 21st of March, 1990, Dr. Kengo was appointed as the first prime minister where he dismantled the apartheid administrative system in favor of an inclusive public service geared towards serving the interest of all Namibians. And he served, of course, for 12 years uh, in the position of prime minister uh, before taking a brief hiatus from political sphere and in 2005 returned as uh, in politics and served as chief whip of the Swapo party in the National Assembly and also chaired the Parliamentary Standing Committee on Economics. There we have it, of course, the arrival still continuing. That's the uh, Second President yes. of the Republic of Namibia, Dr. Hivikopunye Pohamba. And Madame Pohamba. And Madame Pohamba, of course, arriving at the Heroes Acre. And immediately after that, according to protocol, we should be expecting the arrival of the founding father of the Namibian nation, Dr. Sam Shafashina Nioma. Of course, following his election in 2007, as Vice President of SWAPO, Dr. Kengo was appointed in 2008 as the Minister of Trade and Industry. And as Minister, Dr. Kengo spearheaded the Small and Medium Enterprises or SME assistance uh, through the Equipment Aid Scheme, the Industry Policy, and of course the creation of the SME Bank. These visuals you're seeing are now live uh, at the same time from the Independence, uh, uh, not the Independence rather, but uh, the Heroes Acre on your left. And on your right hand side, the procession that's heading to uh, the Heroes Acre. A fervent defender, of course, of the unity of the Namibian people. His themes uh, always included inclusivity. Talking about inclusivity spells harmony and exclusivity spells conflict. Uh, one Namibia, one nation. And no one should be left out of the Namibian house. Uh, just one of but many of the sound bites and the themes that the president shared with us during his time in office. A proponent of... There we have it, of course, that's the, uh, one of our guests of honor, a very, very good friend of uh, the late president, uh, His Excellency Masisi, the president of Botswana, arriving to be part of the procession for today. 
of course, uh, Namibia and Botswana, it's uh, not only shared brotherly neighborliness, but the two presidents also shared a very, very close bond as well. Uh, President Masisi being the first head of state to, in fact, make his way the following day after the passing of the president, immediately on the Monday, his way to Ventuk to come and pay respects and, of course, his condolences uh, to the widow as well as the Namibian people. We will see more arrivals, of course, of uh, those uh, international guests and heads of state, about 18 of them present here in the country. We know at the memorial you didn't see the South African president, but he, of course, also arrived a bit later on, I think just after 8 o'clock uh, last night. He arrived and he will be at the funeral. Asarol Ramaphosa, of course, His Excellency was here about a fortnight ago to come and pay respects before returning back to South Africa to handle uh, official business on that end as well. The Amir of Qatar, Al Thani, also arriving. He, of course, also made efforts to head to Casa Rosalia yesterday after arrival and went to personally go pay respects to the widow as well as the Namibian people. Sheikh Hamad bin Khalifa bin Hamad Abdullah bin Jassim bin Mohammed Al Thani is his full name. He's a member of the ruling Al Thani Qatari royal family and was the ruling Emir of Qatar from 1995 until 2013 uh, when he abdicated the throne, handing over power to his fourth son, uh, Tamim bin Hamad Al Thani, uh, who was born to his second spouse, uh, Moza Nazir. Uh, the Qatari government refers to him as Father Amir and he's referred, of course, in Qatar basically as the founding father uh, on that end as well. Very, very strong business and economic ties that Qatar seeks to establish with Namibia as they have that as well. There are, of course, visuals of uh, the elder son of the late president, Mangaliso Kengop, Mangaliso Fernandez Kengop, also one of the Paul Bearers. The Chinese delegation, of course, also arriving there. We know the Chinese delegation, quite a high level delegation was also sent to come and represent these uh, very, very serious uh, trading partners of uh, Namibia. And they have come in to pay their respects, of course, also a strong statement of solidarity uh, delivered by them at the memorial yesterday, highlighting the Pan-African efforts uh, by the late president, as well as his knack for unifying whichever environment he finds himself in. China, of course, also indicating uh, their recommitment to the solidarity and friendship between the two countries and saying that despite what the country is going through right now, they can rely on China as a friend during all sorts of weather. Angolan President uh, Joao Lorenzo. Uh, the Angolan President Joao Lorenzo, of course, also came with a strong delegation of 22, accompanied by uh, the First Lady as well as the First Daughter. Uh, Joao Lorenzo, of course, quite close to our late President as well. Angola, a country that has a very, very rich brotherly history with Namibia, our fight for the liberation struggle, some of it, of course, also waged there. Uh, the Kasinga Day, the massacre, the Kasinga massacre that took place that is of course uh, on the 4th uh, in Angola as well. So the relationship between the two countries are uh, quite 
a significant one there as well. In the frame there, you can see an elder statesman, uh, Joachim Chasino, the former president of uh, Mozambique, also considered one of the elder statesmen. Of course, he's here alongside the likes of uh, Olusigan Obasanjo, as well as uh, Tabombeki as uh, elder statesman. As Joachim Chasino was uh, the president of Mozambique from 1986 up until 2005. Quite a revered political figure uh, in that country. And he's credited with uh, transforming the war-torn country of Mozambique into a successful African democracy. After his presidency, Chisano became an elder statesman, an envoy and diplomat uh, for both his home country and the United Nations as well. It's about to arrive at the roadblock. Uh, as we can see that some of these visuals that are coming in are currently on B1. And uh, uh, we expect them to arrive anytime soon to Heroes Acre. Uh, the RG32 uh, APC pulling the gun carriage is still uh, proceeding uh, on a good speed, uh, which is between 20 and 35 kilometers per hour. It's followed by the rear protection. I should also mention that uh, immediately after the roadblock, the protection will not enter Hiros Eka. The protection vehicles are likely to turn to the right to the new constructed uh, road uh, to Okahanja. Uh, they will break uh, right and then the gun carriage being pulled by the RG32 will continue into Hiros Eka. So it's only uh, the army provost, the small cars might enter the Heroes Acre. Otherwise, it will be a little bit difficult for them to turn around and maneuver uh, in uh, Heroes Acre since the parking is also limited there. We also saw just the arrival of the Mozambican president, Philip Nyusi. And of course, uh, one can only assume that they came together with the uh, elder statesman there as well, again indicating uh, unity within that uh, political space as well. He's been serving as the president of Mozambique since 24, uh, 2015. Um, at the same time, of course, inaugurated the same year and the same time mm -hmm. with our late president as well. And he's the current leader of uh, the Frelimo Party, the party that has governed Mozambique since its independence from Portugal in 1975. Additionally, he also served as the chairman of the Southern African Development Community, or SADC, uh, since August 2020, 2020. So they're currently sitting on the seat as the chair as well. And during his time, uh, President Nusi has promoted peace and security and signed multiple agreements uh, with the late, uh, with the uh, uh, Renamo, who is, of course, uh, their arch rifles um, in Mozambique there as well. And talking about uh, um, other elders, uh, of course, in the political space there, uh, Jerry Akanjo, former member of uh, cabinet, uh, of course, uh, an anti-apartheid activist also arriving there, one of the founding members uh, of the Swapo vo uh, party, and of course, a very, very strong voice uh, in the party until this day, arriving there to come and pay respects and say goodbye uh, to his fallen comrade. The delegation from Nigeria also arriving there now being received by uh, Ambassador Ipumbu, the Chief of Protocol. On his right is the recently sworn in new Minister of Information and Communication Technology, uh, Emma Teofilis. Emma Teofilis, of course, also forming part of that legacy of the late president as he was very deliberate in terms of empowering young people. Only at the age of 23, the tender age, she became the youngest member of parliament by selection of the president as part of his uh, eight that he has uh, to appoint to the parliamentary structure and uh, only becoming the youngest member of parliament at 23 in the world and now recently about a fortnight ago also appointed by the new president as the minister of information and communication technology making her the youngest minister on the continent at the tender age of 27. Uh, in the area, of course, of youth development and support, the president, having done quite a lot of work there as well, the appointment of the likes of Patience Masua, as the member of parliament as well, and other roles and responsibilities that young people have been provided throughout his administration. He's also one of only three presidents on the continent that had a dedicated youth advisor in the president's office reporting directly to him as well. Of course, in the form of uh, a Desiree 
o bal. We see in Colonel quite a lot of movement in the arrivals of, of the uh, international delegates and guests, quite smoothly done as well. But I must uh, appreciate that there is quite a lot of uh, security uh, apparatus that operates in the background. What is the kind of collaboration that you have when high-level delegations such as uh, a president's visit? Uh, what normally happens, uh, both defense, NAMPOL, city police, or the security cluster, they come together. They also form up committees to discuss the security around the venue where uh, the ceremony is going to take place. So there is a coordinated meeting from time to time that has been uh, called and they liaise and they discuss matters of security. And that's why you see that uh, uh, when people arrive, all the protocols are in place and everything is just moving smoothly. It's because these people they have coordinated already who's to receive who, who's to provide what, who's to be where. Uh, therefore, uh, you, you don't see confusion. Uh, people are received on time. Uh, immediately as they are arriving, uh, there is already a dedicated person who go and receive them. And then you can see also the security personnel are also just in the background to make sure that uh, everything is in place. So you've got more arrivals uh, at the Heroes Acre as well as the Cascade is, of course, also making its way. If you just join us, a very good morning to you and welcome. You are watching the live broadcast uh, of the burial of the third president of the Republic of Namibia and the commander-in-chief of the Namibia Defense Force, Dr. Hageji Kengob. Of course, uh, if you have missed any of the interviews, uh, the previous uh, interviews, then uh, please do make sure uh, to... Go to our uh, YouTube platform so for you to be able to uh, listen to some of those conversations. We see there the Zambian uh, President, His Excellency Akainda uh, Hichilema, of course, arriving as well to Heroes Acre. Had quite a busy schedule uh, over the last week, but uh, made it in, right in the middle of the memorial service. Said he's not missing the funeral uh, for any other reason. Of course, if we know the relationship between Zambia and Namibia, also a very, very special relationship that tracks back uh, to the liberation struggle uh, of Namibia. We know that many of the civil servants, including ministers, executive directors, of course, formerly known as permanent secretaries, all of them, uh, close to 80% trained uh, in Zambia at the United Nations Institute for Namibia, that has officially opened uh, by the former president of Zambia, Kenneth Kaunda, in 1976 uh, with uh, pre the late President Kengob as the director uh, during uh, that time as well. Colonel? Ricardo, I can see that uh, the street lining has been extended from the turning point to the roadblock. And uh, as I indicated earlier that uh, the forward and the rear protection were not going to end the Heroes Acre, I can see that that road has, has been blocked uh, and they could not turn to their right but uh, I can see they are proceeding to Heroes Acre because it's overcrowded the, the traffic the volume of traffic at that turning point it's very high so therefore they have proceeded to Heroes Acre so the street lining has started from the roadblock until at the internal flame so the army have started the army troops have started with the street lining at the roadblock and this is now the turning point. They are already in the turning point. You can see they are, the, the casket, it's approaching actually. So, so, the so it's, it's much longer than we initially anticipated. Exactly, exactly. So, so we could be looking at way more than the 200 troops that exactly, you referred to a bit earlier. Exactly. On. And the distance here, it's, it's a little bit longer. Yeah, this is about 30 meters between. Can you see? 30 meters between, but it's you approach the internal flame, the distance has been reduced to 10 to, 10 to 15 meters. There we of course see the uh, president of Ethiopia also arriving there as well. Her Excellency Samia Hussein. Very, very special relationship with the people and the country of Ethiopia as well. Ethiopia houses uh, the African Union in Addis Ababa, which is, of course, 
uh, the center for our aspirations to become a united continent and a united people, a dream that the late President Hanga Kengop uh, bought into fervently as well. Of course, we are only one of about five African countries that sing the African Union anthem uh, alongside our national anthem at all formal uh, occasions where there are public office bearers present there as well. So a very, very uh, important uh, signal uh, that the president of Ethiopia herself had made the way uh, to be here uh, and be part of this uh, burial of a great son of the African soil, a great Pan-Africanist, as pointed out by Musa Faki, Mohammed, the executive chairperson of the African Union Commission in his tribute uh, to the Namibian people as well as the widow, calling the president, of course, a Pan-African icon, a revolutionary, and one that has stood for the new vision of a united Africa. A bit earlier on, of course, uh, we also witnessed the arrival of the uh, Finnish uh, president. We've got a very special relationship with Finland as well, Sauli uh, Vainao Moninisto, and uh, he's the 12th president of Finland since the 1st of March 2012. Uh, Finland, of course, responsible for a large number of uh, the missionaries uh, that came, of course, in the northern parts of the country. You can tell that by some of the names that uh, the locals have are also <laughs> Finnish names there as well. And they are also responsible for assisting in the development of our civil society, the non-governmental uh, sector in the country. And, of course, and supporting the establishment and uh, a building up of uh, our civil society as well. That's, of course, uh, Finland there. We see the arrival of uh, Frank Walter Steinmeier. Frank Walter Steinmeier, of course, the president of uh, Germany. He was previously the federal minister for foreign affairs from 2005 to 2009 and again from 2013 to 2017, as well as the vice chancellor of Germany from 2007 to 2000. And nine, and yesterday, of course, uh, making the promise to say that it's just sad and that the president, unfortunately, will not be able to witness the success of the con con conversation around the genocide reparations that are currently underway there as well. Of course, uh, in your screen now, the visuals of somebody who is no stranger to Namibians. That's uh, Cyril Ramaphosa, the president of uh, South Africa. He had quite a hectic schedule also during the week, but was here about two weeks ago uh, to come and pay attention, pay respects and tribute uh, right after President Masisi arrived as well. And then he came late last night in the evening. That's why you did not see him at the memorial service, but he had to ensure that he does not miss the burial of his brother and friend and fellow comrade in arms. That's of course Cyril Ramaphosa, the president of South Africa. The relationship with South Africa uh, stretching back to about 1910, 1911 between the two countries. And of course, after that, some poignant dates uh, between uh, the relationship of uh, the two countries. Of course, just yesterday, uh, when, or two days ago, in fact, at the ICJ, the Palestinian authorities pointing out that if there is any country that can speak on the definition of apartheid, it can only be Namibia and South Africa. So the bonds between the two countries really solidified by that as well. Colonel? We just witnessed also the arrival of uh, General Mafuanya. Mm -hmm. General Mafuanya is the, chief of the uh, chief of the South African National Defense Force. He just arrived uh, after His Excellency uh, Ramaphosa. We understand, of course, there are quite a number of generals uh, that have come to uh, support uh, yes. and pay their respects from the side of the Namibian Defense Force? Yeah, you are correct. Uh, we have uh, generals that came from uh, Angola. We have also generals that came from uh, Burundi. We have also generals that came from Tanzania. We have also generals that came from uh, Zambia. We have also uh, 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 some generals that also came from uh, um, other Sade countries. There is, of course, uh, one particular general that's coming from Kenya who was the deputy head 
Deputy Force Commander. Deputy Force Commander yes. of the UNTAG yes. during the elections. That is Lieutenant General retired Opande. Mm -hmm. uh, Lieutenant General Opande was here in 1989 until 1990. Uh, he was the Deputy Force Commander for UNTAG. And we know uh, the Kenyans, the role that they have played during that time of uh, UNTAG and uh, they even remain here after independence to assist uh, with certain uh, technicalities when it came to the establishment of the Namibian Defence Force. So we started with the Kenyans assisting us and they've been here for a quite uh, long time from 1989 to 1990. Chemin. I think who I'm seeing on the screen there is uh I think the arrival of is that Musa Faki. No, no, I don't think that's Musa Faki. Of course, the, the white hair is what gave it away a bit there as well. But we know, of course, a number of other eminent persons also joining, like it was mentioned, the Lieutenant uh, General, and it's Musa Faki. And yes, there we see on the screen, of course, another statesman uh, that has the African unity at the heart of his sleeve. Uh, that's the president of Ghana, Nana Akufo Ado Dankwa, arriving, of course, and being received by Ambassador Pumbu. Uh, the president of Ghana, uh, Nana, has been a stern and very, very vocal critic, of course, of Western policies towards uh, the third world, particularly Africa. At the recent African, uh, recent African Union Heads of State Summit about a fortnight ago in Addis Ababa, of course, him pointing out and making radical uh, propositions saying that African countries need to move to trading at least 30% of their trade volumes amongst African countries. Uh, so uh, Nana Akufo, a stern supporter of economic liberalization uh, of the continent. And talking about that as well, we've also seen uh, President uh, William Ruto taking the same approach and talking about em economic emancipation of the continent and part of that dream of Dr. Hage Kengo. Uh, Ricardo, the procession has just arrived at the entrance of Firos Eka. Mm -hmm. And I believe by this time around, they are waiting now for the chief mourner. Uh, that's now His Excellency Dr. Nangolo Mbumba to join and also the family, including the widow and immediately the procession will continue to approach the internal frame. Uh, I should also mention that uh, the other general that has also arrived uh, is General Christian Chiwewe from uh, DRC. He is the chief of the defense force of the DRC uh, defense forces. also being uh, represented there as well uh, by Juan Esteban Lazo Hernandez that just arrived there as well. It's been a, the president of the National Assembly of People's Power, the Cuba's parliament, uh, since 2013. And previously, previously, he was also the vice president of the Cuban Council of State and a member of the Politburo of the Communist Party of Cuba since 1980 and the National Assembly of People, People's Power member uh, since 1981. So these are some of them really close personal friends of the late president, the likes of Esteban Lazo Hernandez. You know, uh, Cuba has been a friend of Namibia, not only a fair weather friend, but an all weather friend of Namibia as well. Uh, we have, in fact, even as we speak, a contingent of doctors, uh, medical practitioners uh, from Cuba in the country. They have uh, been very, very strong in assisting us in that regard as well. Not only in that, we've also had cooperation in the sports field, with Cuba as well, physiotherapists and doctors of sports also coming uh, from Cuba. And of course, who can forget uh, the likes of the late uh, Dr. Abram Yambo, of course, went and got the tertiary education uh, in Cuba as well. He was quite fluent uh, in Spanish and often would show off uh, those skills also. So uh, Cuba, not a fair with a friend, 
but a friend of all seasons of the Republic of Namibia. Uh, Ricardo, I don't know if you have uh, picked up something as from yesterday, that uh, all heads of states that came for the state funeral, they are accorded uh, military officers who act as their ADC. ADC means uh, aid the camp. Mm. Uh, these are security personnel provided to these high dignitaries who came for the state funeral. So each of them, not only the heads of state, even some higher ranking uh, dignitaries from outside the country, they are also provided with ADCs. Uh, ADCs, I mentioned earlier that it's aid the camp. Mm. Uh, this is a guy uh, who's providing security of this head of state who has arrived or this uh, dignitary during the time while he or she is in Namibia. And that's different from the bodyguard who is just strictly there for security yes, purposes. Yes, yes. So the defense has provided such people that uh, they should be uh, providing security to the visitor. Are they uh, supposed to be from a particular rank? Yeah, they are, most of them are from the rank of uh, Lieutenant Colonel mm. or as, as a senior officer, which is a major, from a major, Lieutenant Colonel to Colonels. It depends. They're of course, in our visuals there, McHenry, Venani as well. Uh, sometimes you think how some of these uh, leaders, those who are, of course, close to the president, are handling this as well. Uh, but as he would have loved to say, uh, the business must continue. Mm. The business of running the country must continue. The country must continue uh, to function. Well, of course, always his words as well. So the rear protection and the forward protection uh, APCs will end up at the entrance of uh, Hiros Eka. You will not see them entering Hiros Eka. You can see that they have already turned uh, out of, they are making uh, way for the other uh, motor gate to come in. You can see they are turning to their right. So the only vehicle that will remain here, it's, it's now the, 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 the Agarare with a, with a, with a chaplain. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the gun carriage pulled by the RG32, and then uh, uh, the mourners, I mean the, 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 the pallbearers and bearers, they are the only ones who remain in the procession. And the visuals uh, in front of you now or on your screens are the escorts, the whole brigade uh, getting ready. To, 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 to march and for the parade to kick off. And then you have also the Army Sergeant Major, Warrant Officer Batista Pea, uh, who is commanding the bearers, the Formation Sergeant Major and uh, command, uh, command Master at Arms. So they are just getting ready and prepare for the procession to kick off. Police Sir Joseph Shikongo, also in display there as well, of course, responsible for internal security also during this time as well. And he was uh, on the platform and during his tribute conversation we had informing us how the president trusted the advice of the security cluster of which he is part of, and said that even though he was somebody who had strong opinions, he always followed the advice uh, from the security chiefs and the advice that comes from the security cluster said that he has never received any call at any time from the president to interfere in the operations and the business of the police and said that he was a man that not only spoke about respecting the rule of law but practice it even though he had the power 
to step over bounds every now and then. He never exercised it, according to Inspector Joseph Shikongo. Of course, the same utterances also by the Bank of Namibia governor during his tribute. Johannes Kabachab saying that the Bank of Namibia as an institution is as independent as it gets, saying that he had never received any call or any instruction from the president interfering in the operations or even inquiring on the business of the bank unless where it's legally required to be done so. live visuals coming from the Heroes Acre here in Ventuk, just on the outskirts of Ventuk City. And uh, of course, slowly but surely, we are coming to our end here in the studios and getting ready to cross over uh, live to the Heroes Acre. At uh, the Heroes Acre, we have uh, Kadembire Dembruka, veteran presenter and producer, also from the NBC, formerly uh, standing by, and alongside uh, Nora Apollos, of course, who was with me, uh, in studio on Friday. Part of presentation, they will of course be taking over a bit later on as well. And there's some aerial views of how it is looking like at the acre at the moment. Of course, Namibians showing up in their numbers uh, to pay their final tributes to the commander in chief. Of course, we're about to close off here in the studio. Colonel, from your end, any final message that you want to share? Um, with the Namibian nation, the African nation, and of course, uh, the world that's watching right now. Yes, um, I would like to say something, uh, to say that uh, um, the late president was a man with a remarkable ability to connect with everyone he met be it an ordinary person. And he made friends wherever he went. He was a person who was open for consultation and for engagement with anyone. His office doors were open to Namibians. Also in the region, um, especially I listened to His Excellency Ramaphosa the President of the Republic of South Africa during uh, the State of Nation in Cape Town, he told the South Africans that uh, as Africa, we have lost a champion of African peace, unity, progress, and development. So he remember His Excellency that he was full of jokes, mm. and one of them, or oh, I remember the, the, the President, that uh, he was a man of full of jokes. And at one time, a journalist, at uh, one time at, at, at State House, he told the journalist that during COVID, eh, uh -huh. he said, use common sense, use your common sense. <laughs> so <laughs> so I, I, I enjoy his... Well, of course, thank you very much, uh, Colonel, for making time out to join us here. Colonel uh, Peter Shilumbu uh, from uh, the Public Relations Office in the Namibia Defense Force uh, talking to us. This. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure having you over the last uh, three days. Thank you, Ricardo. Well, on that note, it's far as time now to cross over to the stadium to hand over uh, to Kadambire and Dembruka as well as Sonora Opolis that are standing by. And I think from my side, the only thing I can say is now from us, it's over to you at the Heroes Acre. So soon you must start turning that side because where you are, special NBC broadcast on this terribly, terribly sad day.
when we are going to um, lay the late president, Dr. Hage Gottfried Gengop, to his final resting place. We'd also like to extend a warm welcome to um, all the viewers in Africa on the DSTV um, um, channel or where DSTV has a footprint across Africa. You're watching us live on the NBC um, DSTV channel. And the um, people in the diaspora can, can watch the proceedings on YouTube. And this is because we want everybody to experience and to uh, be part of this historic day. We are here at Heroes Acre on a bright um, sunny day um, to lay the um, president, the late president, um, to rest. My name is uh, Nora Apollos and I'm joined by my co-presenter. My name is Kevin Dirembruka. As uh, we have rightly stated, it's quite an occasion to behold, um, a sad occasion at some level, but also a celebration of a life well lived. Uh, Dr. Hake Genkop um, is a outstanding personality that lived a distinguished uh, career in the service of his people and that's why you can see Namibians from all walks of life have made it to the Heroes Acre to bid farewell to their former Commander-in-Chief, bid farewell to their President, bid farewell to a man who was their founding Prime Minister, bid farewell to a man who was the chairperson of the Constituent Assembly. And I can go on and on and on. Absolutely, absolutely. In fact, um, there is a, a close, I would, I would estimate the crowd at close to 20,000. Um, um, I don't know, I may, I may be um, optimistic, but um, I know that rough estimates uh, Heroes Acre can take 10,000 um, people. This is what I was uh, I was told, and of course we have dignitaries from all walks of life. Um, we have 27 heads of um, delegation, 27 countries present here, including 17 heads of state and heads of government, and some of these um, include the presidents of uh, Zambia. Botswana, um, the former president of um, South Africa. You've got the prime minister of um, Sao Tome and Principe. You've got the president of uh, DRC, Democratic Republic of, um, of Congo, who is here. You've got the prime minister of, um, of Rwanda. You've got the president of um, Burundi. You've got the president of Sierra Leone. You've got the president of um, uh, Zambia and um, Ghana. So across the board, people have come to pay um, tribute. And we could hear in the various uh, tributes that um, took place um, yesterday, the glowing terms in which they described uh, the late President Hage Kengo. Indeed, and uh, obviously there are some dignitaries that made their way into the country late yesterday. Um, president from Zambia, uh, for instance, flew okay. in very late in the day. We have also seen the arrival of royal members of the United Kingdom, uh, royal family, uh, Princess Royal, um, has also made her way here um, as well, uh, representing her brother, uh, King Charles, as well. So the Commonwealth quite represented because Namibia is a member of the Commonwealth, but also, um, as we are rightly pointing out, neighbors um, from the SADC region, Parafield in other countries as well, East Africa, West Africa, well represented. But it goes to show, yes, that indeed um, Dr. Hage Genkop was a friend to many on the African continent. He was a diplomat uh, par excellence, and that's how he's being described. Um, and um, and, and that's why they are here, uh, to pay uh, their last respects. Some obviously due to their hectic schedules have returned to their countries, 
but we do have a sizable contingent of uh, heads of state that are still in country. And that are still present here, that are present here at um, Hiroseka. Um, I'm going to give you a brief um, rundown of what we should expect um, here at Hiroseka. All the dignitaries um, have arrived, most of them have arrived, some of them are still making their way uh, to the stadium, uh, to, to Heroes Acre rather. The body lay in state the whole night at Independence Stadium where the memorial was held um, yesterday. And it has lain in state throughout the night and it is now making its way to Heroes Acre on the gun carriage with a military uh, procession. And it is expected at Heroes Acre uh, any minute now. And obviously we will cross over when um, the, the funeral cortege uh, arrives um, at uh, Heroes Acre. With the arrival of the funeral cortege, that will mark the beginning of the official program. And this will be officiated by the Minister of Defense, uh, Mr. Franz Kapofi, as well as the Prime Minister, uh, Sarah Kukongelwa uh, Amadela. So these will be the two directors of um, proceedings. Um, the only speech usually at Heroes Acre at the burial the ceremony is very short um, because all the speeches um, were, were made yesterday. So today's ceremony will be extremely short and it will only be the benediction and then the final words by the president, uh, Dr. Nangolo Mbumba, and then it will be the committal into um, the grave. So it's going to be a very short ceremony. It will not be as lengthy as um, what happened yesterday. And in the pictures there, we are seeing the NDF uh, making their way up the hill to the foreground of the Heroes Acre where the program will commence. Um, we have pointed out there will just be one speech that will be delivered. However, in keeping with the stature of a sitting president, there are several things that are going to take place that are unique to this particular ceremony. We expect the burial place of our former president to be quite unique as well in keeping with the recognition and acknowledgement of his excellent service to the Namibian people. So there are quite a few things that will be quite new that we have never seen before. We have done these programs of burying our heroes at this national shrine before. So we are used to the activities that take place here. However, as I'm pointing out, today is a unique program. Absolutely. Um, and in fact, yes, the, the, the president's um, grave is going to have a roof um, over it, a, a mausoleum of sorts. So that is where he is um, actually going to be uh, laid to rest. That will be his final resting place. Um, over the last two days, um, people have been filing past uh, his body. First, it was lying in state at Parliament Gardens before it was moved to Independence Avenue for the, uh, the, the memorial service. Uh, and over those two days, it was lying in state. And thousands, literally thousands of people filed past to pay tribute. The, the whole two nights. The fact that it was night, the fact that it was raining didn't deter uh, Namibians. They came out in their hundreds, thousands to pay respect uh, to their president. Previously, on the Friday, the military had a procession through the streets of Vinduk to um, say goodbye in their own way to their commander, to their fallen commander in chief. And the procession moved through um, 
designated areas of um, Vinduk, designated streets. And all those streets, uh, we were told, had, were of special significance to um, the late um, president. They went through Moses Gutterweb Street, for instance, who we know was a, 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 a comrade in arms of uh, President Hage and uh, a close friend as well. They came through the trenches, they shared the trenches, and they came through the struggle for decades um, together. It also went through Hendrik Vidboy um, Street, and we know that Hendrik Vidboy was one of the stalwarts of the liberation struggle. And of course, it went through Sam Nioma Drive, and as the founding president, Sam Nioma was a mentor, political mentor, political guide, political inspiration to not only uh, the late president, but to many uh, freedom fighters, and not just Namibian freedom fighters, freedom fighters from other countries um, as well. Um, in fact, uh, we had a conversation with the former South African president, uh, Thabo Mbeki, where he said that, look, we shared a, a common uh, vision with, uh, with, with the Namibians, with, with Swapu as it were, and this is one of the reasons where he and the late president often had discussions um, around uh, and they looked at how they were going to uh, build a better Africa and uh, a better Namibia and South Africa for the benefit not only of citizens of those countries but of Africans in general. And spontaneous moments where Namibians have been paying their respects to their fallen leader. We have seen in several parts of the country, the 14 regions of the country, uh, services being held in celebration and remembrance of Dr. Hage Kenkop. We've also seen um, at um, Namibian residences abroad, um, at our high commissions and um, and and. Um, and embassies, um, uh, services being held, we have seen at universities uh, as well, uh, services being held. So this spontaneous, uh, you know, out, this spontaneous celebrations that we have seen really, really are a testament to the character of this, of the man and the, the character of this beloved president. And one of the things that we are pointing out is last night I made a turn at the Independent Stadium trying to get in a queue myself. I didn't manage because the line was just very long. This morning I stopped by as well. Uh, the line was still pretty long as well. So Namibians are, if they did not physically manage to attend some of those ceremonies, uh, some of those events, they are getting this moment now, uh, watching these events live as the president is finally being laid to rest. Yes, um, the, the funeral cortege is making its way into Hero's um, Acre. And um, we were noting yesterday already a difference in uh, the way the casket is being carried. Usually, it's an open, um, it's, it's left open on the gun carriage. Yes. But in this instance, it is covered. And it is covered in a glass enclosure. But you can clearly see the flag draped um, uh, casket but it is in a glass enclosure. And that already is a departure from uh, the norm. The President of the Republic just uh, behind uh, uh, in, in that picture that we are seeing, the former First Lady as well, uh, they are right behind the casket. Yes, and of course the, um, the President 
is is the chief mourner in in this instance what a moving tribute from the former first lady the poise the dignity in which she delivered her tribute to indeed a best friend um she described the late president um and my and husband my husband social media uh was reacting to that particular speech in in glowing terms ob obviously but it takes a certain character uh, a certain strength to be able to uh, mourn um and to be able to, to say goodbye to somebody so close in such a public manner exactly yeah in in the full glare of um not only local media but international uh media and it it takes a great deal of um inner strength and resilience and she pulled it off um beautifully indeed the ndf uh, we understand there are also civilian pole bearers and uh, you are seeing mckendry venani leader of the official opposition former cabinet minister afeus narusa that's the president angolo mbumba and um, you will uh, his son um, president gangop son first born son uh, mangaliso gangop is also one of the civilian pole bearers so is the deputy prime minister john motora um as well as the re retired lieutenant general martin shali um and then of course uh ben amadela former cabinet minister these are the civilian uh, pall bearers quite a strong international media contingent as well yes that are following this particular ceremony um we have journalists covering this um from afar that have made their way into the country capturing every moment and so these pictures are being beamed globally president fact, Cyril Ramaphosa also making his way in yes. yesterday so he is represented here as well as the president of angola he arrived um, earlier jo lorenzo arrived um, earlier yesterday we also saw the arrival of uh, the cuban um, delegation the president um, of ethiopia um the widow the widow in the foreground here yeah. former first lady uh, monica gengos <coughs> and uh, she is accompanied uh, by the children of uh, dr gengos embracing now the first lady of the republic and of the namibia first lady. madam bumba acknowledging her in her tribute uh, last night as well Absolutely. saying she played a huge role not only after the tragic event in um, terms of support in terms well. of support but when she was in hospital yes. with the president but also before that mm. very close close relationships between the bumbas and the and the gang cops yeah well this relationship um goes uh, goes back many decades to their their exile um, days and um, they've always been um, very close and this continued obviously um after um, independence president bumba coincidentally the first secretary to cabinet working very closely with the then founding prime minister and then later on he became minister several portfolios minister of finance minister of agriculture minister of safety and security amongst other portfolios that he has held in government until he led the swapo party um as secretary general and later appointed vice president by by president kenkop 
the proceedings this morning are expected to be um, a very, very short. Um, they will not be as long as uh, those yesterday out of the memorial um, service. Um, we, we can see a huge contingent of uh, media and a lot of the media here um, are those accompanying their, their heads of state and their heads of uh, government. Um, and there is a huge media scrum. Uh, Sister Nora, you had an earlier discussion. You went to meet and, and, and welcome the former president's son. Yes. His yes. eldest son, who's also now serving this as, well as, as, as a pole bearer. Yes. Really, yes. Um, the whole entire family. Um, Yes, are um, really people of strength during these moments where they had a sort of a public, very public... Um, yeah. in, in fact, a very little known fact is that uh, President Gengo is actually survived by two siblings, his older brother and his younger sister. And they are also um, present. Um, but because of their frailty, um, they were not able to participate at all the memorials, but they were here, um, they were there yesterday, and they are definitely here um, today. Yes, I did speak to uh, President Gengob's uh, first-born son, Mangaliso um, Gengob, and uh, he acknowledged that it was uh, a very difficult uh, time for the entire family, but they took great comfort in, in the support and the show of uh, love and gratitude that the people of Namibia and indeed the foreign dignities have had for, for, for their father. And, and this gives them um, great comfort. We are taking in the, the sights and sounds as we welcome the president, Tiro Zeka. Thank <laughs> you. 
and gentlemen, dear mourners, we are now ready to start with our program and we start with the national and EU anthems. I would like therefore to request that we all rise for the national and EU anthems and for the NDF band to lead us. Thank you very much. Yes, I would like to announce the arrival of His Excellency Dr. Chakwera of Malawi. You are welcome, Your Excellency and Madam.
Your Excellency, Dr. Nangolo Mbumba, President of the Republic of Namibia, and Madam, Madam Monica Gengos, the widow, and the children, grandchildren, and the entire bereaved family of the late Dr. Hage Gengo, Your Excellency, Dr. Sam Nyoma, founding president and father of the Namibian nation, and Madam Nyoma, Your Excellency, Dr. Hifike Punye Pohamba, second president of the Republic of Namibia, and Madam Pohamba, Your Excellencies, heads of state and government, and other foreign dignitaries, Your Excellency, Dr. Netumbo Nandi Ndaitwa, Vice President of the Republic of Namibia and of the Swapo Party, and Lieutenant General Retired Daitwa. Honorable Professor Peter Kachavivi, Speaker of the National Assembly. Honorable Lucas Sinimbo Muha, Chairperson of the National Council, and Madam Muha. Your Lordship Peter Shivute, Chief Justice and Judge Shivute, Honorable John Mutorwa, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Works and Transport, and Madam Mutorwa, Honorable Ministers, Honorable Sophia Shaningwa, Secretary General of the Swapo Party, Honorable Mark Henry Venani, Leader of the Official Opposition, and Madam Venani, Honorable members of Parliament, distinguished veterans of the national liberation struggle and the rank and file of Swapo Party. Honorable Laura McLeod Kashirwa, Governor of the Commerce Region and all other regional governors present here. Her Worship Queen Kamati, Mayor of the City of Winduk and all other mayors present. Chief Emmanuel Gasseb, Chairperson of the Council of Traditional Leaders, and other traditional leaders present here, members of the Diplomatic Corps, service chiefs, members of the clergy, fellow mourners. We are here today at these sacred grounds where we lay to rest the sons and daughters of our land who have distinguished themselves by their deeds and have been accorded the hero status to lay to rest one such distinguished Namibian, Dr. Hage Gottfried Genkop, our departed third president of our republic. These grounds shall become the new home of Dr. Genkop's mortal remains from today. He has joined the many other statesmen and women of outstanding character whom we hold in reverence. He has completed his tasks on earth and now takes his rest. While his remains shall be interned here, he will continue to be with us through the memories we shared and the legacy of his outstanding work in patriotism shall continue to inspire us to uphold our common values and strive for our common goals. It is these shared values that have bound us together and the common goals that have inspired us to pull together in the same direction, as per the call under Harambe Prosperity Plan. So although we are heartbroken, we shall let our beloved president go. After a long life of hard work and sacrifices, he will now be taken care of by the Almighty, who will give his soul peaceful rest until we meet him again. Let us, at this parting time with our departed president, also celebrate the richness of the life he lived. Let us honor his memories by embodying the virtues he exemplified, by living each day with purpose, 
and by making a positive impact in our own ways. Comrade President Hage Genkop, your physical presence will be profoundly missed, but your spirit remains a guiding force in our nation. Your legacy of impactful and transformational leadership is a treasure that we will carry forward. In our hearts, your memory will forever resonate. No one must feel left out. Go well, our leader. With these remarks, I welcome your excellencies and fellow Namibians to the final send-off of our beloved president. I would now like to call upon Reverend Bishop Sakeus Cape of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in the Republic of Namibia to conduct a prayer and do scripture reading. Bishop Cape. Thank you very much, the directors of proceedings. Allow me to stand on the protocol as established right now. Let us read and pray. Let us pray. Triune God, from whom we come and to whom we go, grant us the favor of your divine presence at this time in our earthly pilgrimage. Assure us by your Holy Spirit to comfort us while we are at this funeral of His Excellency President Dr. Hake G. Kengop. We are praying in the name of God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear bereaved Madam Monica Kengos, the widow, children, grandchildren, extended families, and the entire sisters and brothers gathered here today. We are gathered to pay our final respect to His Excellency President, Dr. Hake G. Kengop. He was elected in 2014 as the third president of the Republic of Namibia and sworn in on the 21st of March 2015, as well as re-elected for second term in 2019. Sadly, on Sunday, the 4th of February 2024, His Excellency President Dr. G. Haike Kengo passed away. At this moment of lowering the casket, 
officiating the rite as committal and covering of the grave of our beloved president, Dr. Kengo. I shall meditate on a biblical text from the word of God as recorded in the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verse 1 to 4, and it reads as follows. Trust in God, trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you, I am going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. Dear sisters and brothers, allow me to share concisely two important theological ideas from this text. One of the remarkable ministries of Jesus Christ was to make a living space here on earth. In Luke 6, 20 to 21, Jesus says, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who hunger now, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Remarkably, Jesus worked in his ministry here on earth to secure for people a place that they shall call home. Likewise, we remember President Hage Kengop. He was a builder of a Namibian house. His wisdom to build his, this nation house, Namibian house, was taken from Proverbs 24, verse 3 to 4. And I quote, By wisdom a house is built, and through understanding it is established. Through knowledge its rooms are filled with rare and beautiful treasures. Unquote. Therefore, he time and again struggled to enhance service delivery, economic recovery, such as inclusive growth, and to strengthen Namibia in terms of socio-economic challenges. In order to build the country, he said the following on Heroes Day 26 August 2018 at Ngurenguru, Gavango West region. And I quote, as we work for a better Namibia in which no one should feel left out, let us hold hands in the spirit of Harambe, unquote. In other words, the first and second Harambe prosperity plan clearly indicate President's desire for the nation, which is aimed at inclusivity and improved living. President Kenkop is remembered for the mantra, no one should feel left out. It means President Kenkop ensured that social grant increased and also expressed the desire to increase the pension of senior citizens and grant of most vulnerable before his reign ends in March 2025 to 3,000 Namibian dollars. As the Bible says in Matthew 11:15, whoever has ears, let them hear. Secondly, preparing the pathway to heaven. Everyone wants to go to heaven. As a matter of fact, no one wants to be left out to taste the beauty of heaven. Jesus went there to prepare a place for us, and we can go there 
but in God's way. We cannot get there by any other means. Jesus' way. God provided Jesus to know the way, show the way, and go the way. All we have to do is follow him and he will lead us. It means the following. A Christian, we live in two worlds at the same time. We are residents of the earth with very real responsibilities that God has given us to fulfill. But we also are citizens of heaven. While we are here, we are to making preparations for there. It means to prepare the road, a pathway to heaven. Now, let's look at the way to prepare for heaven. Make the most of your time on earth. While God has allotted a different number of years for every one of us in this life, in Psalm 90, verses 10 and 12, Moses said there is an average life span for most people. He said, as for the days of our life, they contain 70 years. Or if due to strength, 80 years. So teach us to remember our days that we may present to your heart of wisdom. It means God has given us wisdom to plan our pathways here on earth and to heaven. In the person of President Kengop, we have discovered two characteristics. President Kengop will be remembered as both a lion and a lamp, as the roaring lion and a humble lamp. Such a person with a heart of a lion and the soul of a lamb does the following. Empower us to build houses here on earth with the strength of a lion, no matter what challenges we may face. In other words, be like Jesus and serve others. Feed the hungry, clothe the naked, and comfort God's people. Simultaneously, the soul of a lamb is needed. Fill your soul with spirituality and love for God. Be a person of righteousness as well as a social activist. In short, pray while striving for social justice, or in Latin, ora et labora. Finally, President Hage Kengo has gone home. We can be with him again if we know the way home. Jesus can and will show you the way if you let him. Let us lay this great man to rest with fervent hope of resurrection on the last day. Let us pray. O oh Lord, our Lord, we come into your presence this morning to mourn the passing of our president, Dr. Hage Gottfried Kengo, a father, a grandfather, and a firm Christian believer. We also come to celebrate a life well lived, a life that served you and followed your leading. We come to be comforted in our sorrow and pray that your spirit would cover us with peace that passes human understanding. We know that just as you walk with our president throughout his entire life, you are walking with him now in his new home, his true heavenly home. Be with our nation as our president in Christ has moved 
onto his higher calling and allow us to never forget the for contributions and efforts that Dr. Kengo made on your behalf in this world. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Thank you, Director of Ceremonies. Thank you very much, uh, Bishop Cape. I now invite the Namibian Defense Force Military Band to give us one performance.
Thank you very much, NDF. We now come to the final item before we take the remains of our departed president to where we will uh, give him a permanent home on earth. And that item is the message by His Excellency Dr. Nangolo Mbumba, President of the Republic of Namibia and Commander-in-Chief of the Namibian Defense Force, and also, of course, the Chief Mourner. I invite you, Your Excellency, to the podium. Director of Ceremonies of this burial service, Right Honorable Sara Kugongero Amadira, Prime Minister of the Republic of Namibia, Madam Monica Gaingos, the Gaingo children, grandchildren, and the extended family. Your Excellencies, Head of States and Government, Your Royal Highnesses, and other foreign dignitaries present. Your Excellency Netumbo Nandin Daitwa, Vice President of the Republic of Namibia. Your Excellency Dr. Sam Nuyoma, Founding President of the Republic of Namibia and Father of the Nation. Your Excellency Dr. Ifike Punye Pohamba, Second President of the Republic of Namibia. Once again, Your Excellencies, former heads of state and government, Honorable John Mutorwa, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Works and Transport, Honorable Professor Peter Hichevi Kachavivi, Speaker of the National Assembly, Honorable Lucas Inimbo Muha, Chairperson of the National Council, Your Lordship Peter Shivute, Chief Justice. Honorable Ministers and Deputy Ministers, Honorable Comrade Sophia Shaningba, Secretary General of the Swapo Party, Honorable Makendi Venani, President of PDM and Leader of the Official Opposition, Honorable Members of Parliament, Governors, Mayors, Diplomats, Distinguished Service Chiefs, Bishop Kaib, Chief Emmanuel Gasep, Chairperson of the Council of Traditional Leaders, all our religious and traditional leaders, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, representatives of the media houses, fellow mourners. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, we are gathered here on these hallowed grounds of Heroes Acre the final resting place of heroes and heroines who resisted the scourge of colonialism since 1884, culminating in the National Arms Resistance in 1966 and independence in 1990. They bravely sacrificed their lives for our freedom. Indeed, we pay respect to these gallant sons and daughters whose courage, fortitude, and valiant exploit contributed to the independence of the Republic of Namibia and the advancement of her people. Today, they are joined by a national hero who excelled in his assigned tasks as a courageous freedom fighter, 
as a unifying chairperson of the Constituent Assembly, as the consequential first Prime Minister and the third President of the Republic of Namibia and the ruling party Swapo. Today, they are joined by their fellow hero, a son of the soil, a revolutionary icon, and the torchbearer of freedom, justice, and equality, Comrade Dr. Hage Gottfried Geingob. The constant struggle and strife which defines the living world is no longer a concern to these celebrated brave warriors and statesmen, for he, was, for he has fought the good fight. He has finished the race. He has kept the faith. Today, he can return home to the everlasting king kingdom where eternal rest and peace awaits. Matthew 11, verse 28, we are invited, and I quote, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest, end of quote. Dear Comrade Gaingob, you have fought valiantly and consistently without wavering for your family, for the entire Namibia, and the oppressed people throughout this world until your very last breath. It is now time for you to rest. It is now time for you to part. Yes, it is now time for us to let go. May you no longer be weary, and may you no longer be burdened. Leave the worries of this world and the worries of Namibia to the present and future generations and go in peace. We will take care of your Namibian house and the needs of the citizens, the sovereigns. In our governance, we will continue to uphold the constitution of the land as the supreme law. We will strive to be transparent, accountable, and inclusive. Yes, we will continue to pursue the second struggle for economic freedom of Namibians with the required agency, efficiency, and effectiveness until shared prosperity and social justice are achieved for our citizens. To Madame Monica Gaingos, the children, the extended family and friends, the entire nation stands shoulder to shoulder with you in this solemn moment as we bid farewell to President Gaingob. To your excellencies who have traveled from far and near to pay your last respect to President Gaingob, take comfort and be strong in the wonderful legacy that he has left with us. The legacy of universal solidarity and extraordinary service to humanity. Your Excellencies and other dignitaries, I would like to thank you for the honor of your presence. Some of you have gone an extra mile and declared national mourning days in your own countries. Furthermore, through your contributions, you have ensured a dignified send-off for your brother and our president. The government and the people of Namibia deeply appreciate your demonstrated solidarity in our, in our hour of need. Now, our president and our commander-in-chief, His Excellency Dr. Hage Gottfried Geinko, rest in perfect peace. As we salute you, farewell until we meet again. May God Almighty grant unto you eternal rest and make his perpetual light shine upon you. Farewell, the People's President, and I thank you.
Thank, Thank you, you, Your Excellency the President, for those final remarks in sending off our departed president on behalf of all of us. We have now come to the end of the program here. We would now move to the grave sites where our departed president would be laid to, to rest. Uh, there are arrangements for how we go there that will be announced. There is no space for all of us there. <clears throat> so we are implored to remain here except to those that would be invited to join. And uh, we would always have an opportunity to... to And uh, I should mention that uh, it's, it's, it's going to be a little bit challenge looking at the ground mm -hmm. level of, of, of where the gravesite is. So uh, it's quite high. It's very high. Mm -hmm. So the, 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 the RG32M uh, armed, uh, armed, armed uh, personal carrier will try to pull uh, the gun carriage up to make sure that uh, it reaches its uh, its final destination, uh, where we are going to rest uh, our late uh, president. Mm -hmm. So uh, now the the poll bearers and the bearers. Maybe I should uh, make it very very clear that uh, this time around it's it's so special that uh, it is uh, our late president, and uh, since he was accorded a state funeral. Um, the, the, the state funeral pallbearers are major generals mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. supported by the brigadier generals or equivalent when I'm saying equivalent it's, I'm referring to uh, other senior officers at the Navy and Air Force uh, if he's not a major general uh, then the rank on the other side of the Navy or, or Air Force it's, it's called uh, either a rear admiral or a rear admiral junior grade with the Navy, while mm -hmm. with the Air Force, it's called uh, a vice marshal. That's uh, equivalent to a major general. Mm -hmm. While for a brigadier general with Air Force, they are called a commodore. Mm -hmm. So the, the ranks differ at Army, Air Force, and Navy. And the Navy, yes. They, they, they differ in, in insignia, insignia and the pronunciation of their names. So with the army it's a major general or a brigadier general. With the air force it's a, a brigadier general it's equivalent to a, a commodore. While a, a major general 
uh, with the Air Force, they call it Air Vice Marshal. While at the Navy, a Brigadier General, it's called uh, uh, Rear Admiral Junior Grade. While for a Major General, it's called uh, Rear Admiral only. Not Junior Grade, but it's a Rear Admiral. So those are the officers who are entrusted to be um, pole bearers. While with those who are carrying the, the casket or handling the casket, these are formation sergeant majors with the army. Also with the Air Force, it's also called formation sergeant major or regimental sergeant major. But when it comes to the Navy, the term, it's a different term that they use. It's either a master at arms or command at master at arms. But they are all equivalent. Mm -hmm. So those are, those are the members who, who, who are handling the casket. The casket to, at to the get to the to the to the to the gun carriage, mm -hmm. and then make sure that it reach the gravesite. All right then. Well, uh, Colonel Shilumbu, we will be here just uh, giving uh, an overview of, of what's happening at the Heroes Acre. But let's now cross over to the proceedings. Uh, just as uh, Colonel Shilumbu explained that the burial site is quite uh, upstairs and that's where the late president will be laid to rest. And let's now cross over to the Heroes Acre and see how the proceedings and taking the proceedings rather. Maybe the angle is not right, but please, there is something that I, I can see there. Now, just as you explained that the pole bearers are now getting ready, just as we witnessed, just as we saw on the overlays or the visuals, rather to take the casket uh, onto the final resting place. If you can just take us through the procession from where they are right now to the final site. The casket has just been loaded on the gun carriage. And uh, even yesterday, I mentioned it that uh, with a state funeral, uh, it makes uh, provision for the casket to be carried on a gun carriage, which is a symbolic value of a state funeral. Plus, also the number of uh, gun salute that will be fired in honor of the late president. Mm -hmm. But with an official funeral, it's different. With official funeral, we don't see the gun carriage coming in. That is the difference between the two funerals, especially when it comes to the military to carry out the funeral out. So um, in, in case of, 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 uh, of an official funeral, the casket is carried by hand only. It comes either with a, with, 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 with a, um, uh, with a different uh, car called a waza, but not with a gun carriage. It's not uh, on a gun carriage. But uh, uh, also with, with the official funeral, what we get is you don't get gun salute, but you get volleys. And volleys are shot with small arms. Small arms are AK-47s. Mm -hmm. While with a gun salute, those are fired with uh, artillery weapons. 
All Those right. are the gun salute. Mm -hmm. uh, the visuals that we see now, we see that uh, the, the pole bearers, these are the major generals and the brigadier generals, uh, air vice marshal, and uh, the, air, uh, the rear admiral. On your screen, on, on your left, you can see first is Major General uh, Petrus Nathinge, then Air Vice Marshal mm -hmm. uh, Teofel Shainde, the Air Force Commander, and then just, um, next just to him... To yeah. interrupt you, Colonel, yes. on that as our team at the site is ready and let's cross over to them and then we'll co uh, continue the commentary a little bit later on. So just stay with us here in studio, Colonel Shilumbu. I'm here with you. casket to its final uh, resting place, its burial. And uh, the burial is going to take place um, at the top. And we're joined here by the director of, we're joined here by the director of the National Heritage um, Council, Erika Ndalikokule. And she's going to tell us uh, a little bit about what is going to transpire uh, at the top over there. Erica, first of all, what is uh, fundamentally different from where the president is going to be buried from the other um, burial places? Okay. Uh, good morning, viewers, um, uh, fellow mourners. Um, the question is to the significant difference um, in terms of uh, the place where um, we are going to lay um, our departed president to rest, is that um, we are moving up to the top of uh, um, the burial site, where there is space um, specifically identified and designated for the burial to take place. Um, definitely most of it um, would be easier to, um, to explain while we get there. But as um, of the moment, um, perhaps what we have been um, observing um, at the site is that there has been um, uh, different um, matches from the uh, uniformed uh, staff. And uh, um, they are still visible on site. Um, so we will then be able to speak more in details when we get to, um, to that specific place. Thank you. Okay, so basically they're already, the cameras um, will be showing those two houses. So uh, we are saying that he's going to be buried in one of those uh, covered places. Is, is that right? Yes, I, I, that, that's, that's actually where um, everybody is actually um, going to gather um, this morning for um, the... Um, the, the final resting place okay, so the final that has resting been selected place, um, viewers is, is fundamentally different from all the others in, in the sense that his is going to be covered. It's going to have a, a roof, uh, which is not the same of, uh, of all the, the, um, the other graves. But um, the, the casket is going to slowly make its way uh, to the top. The space at the top is very limited. So only um, the heads of state um, and of course the family uh, will be uh, um, allowed to, to, to go to the top. Of course uh, not uh, excluding his close uh, political uh, allies, cabinet ministers, etc. The rest of the public will have to uh, watch it on on their screens or on the screens that have been set up um, here because there just isn't enough space um, at the top to accommodate um, everybody. There is a huge crowd here, um, easily estimated well into uh, 20,000. So the people of Namibia have come out in their droves to come and um, say farewell to um, their, their president. Um, his, his death and, of course, his burial will effectively mark the end of an era in Namibia's uh, 
um, political history. So um, it has been um, illustrious. It has been an illustrious um, a journey for President uh, Hage Gengob, a journey, a journey that began in the 60s, a journey that began in the 60s and went on um, when he went into, into exile, uh, a journey that was uh, colorful by any stretch of uh, the imagination. Uh, a journey where he cut his uh, political teeth. Yes. yes. A journey no, that, that shaped the, and molded the, 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 the man in, that the, uh, President Hage Gengob going to, was going to become. The family the man, the, the politician, the Pan-Africanist, so, the educator, Mumba, the, the, the inspirator. The uh, all the these are characteristics so that marked the man. Who, and this next. will be his his legacy. Indeed, a very, very lasting legacy. Um, a legacy that he emphasized when he was in office because there was this continuation of, uh, of leadership and a transition between a founding president to the second president of the republic and now uh, to the third president. And we have seen a peaceful transition to the fourth president. And so on, on that basis, really a, a lasting legacy where one leader carries on the torch and then hands over to a successive leader. And also in keeping with this whole theme around transitions, um, the end of a legacy or, or, or an end of an era is really all about the fact that these liberation stalwarts, uh, these activists that gave so much of themselves to liberate their countries, they are now in their late season. And, and that means that the younger uh, population, the younger leaders need to fill those spaces. They also need to equip themselves. They need to make sure that when they occupy those spaces, they are able to acquit themselves very well. And we have seen uh, when the youth is entrusted with several responsibilities, they are equal to the task. So President Hage Kenkop legacy will be one that we will forever cherish. It will be one that we, history books will obviously judge and assess in terms of um, his time in office, the challenges that he experienced um, as commander-in-chief, but as the executive leader of the executive arm of the state, and one that will obviously be criticized for one reason or the other. So uh, we leave that to historians to do that bit of work. Uh, for us here is celebrating a legacy uh, and the wholeness and the fullness of uh, his life story. The First Lady last night saying, born a peasant, dying a president. What a strong, strong life story. Absolutely. Um, an, an inspiring one. Um, and that indeed should be um, his, uh, his legacy, uh, as it has been the legacy of all those stalwarts that have gone uh, before him. So, as we say, we are marking the end of um, an era um, and this will mark the end of a solid three weeks in which the Namibian nation has had to come to terms with the death of um, their president um, and they've had to come to terms with um, the sudden departure of this man that they that they regarded as as their father in in so many ways, but it must be particularly painful for his family, um, his friends. The president is also survived by 
his um, elder brother and his younger sister. Um, and they are also here today, as well as um, um, the children. And they have had to uh, publicly uh, uh, or mourn and grieve their father and their husband in the full glare of, um, of the media. And this could not have been um, easy. In fact, when the president lay in state um, at his private um, residence and where a memorial, a family memorial service was, was held um, at, at, um, at, at Casa Rosalia, the private residence. The cameras were asked to be turned off so as to allow this moment of privacy for the family to grieve. And this was totally understandable because the process has been in, in, in the full glare of um, the media, in the full glare of the public since the announcing of his death on the 4th of February. And those moments are indeed <coughs> quiet, those moments where the family can uh, be on their own. Um, the former First Lady making reference to seeking professional help when that is required. Um, dealing with uh, news of, of this nature may not always be easy. As human beings, we may always put up a brave face. However, um, there could be some things that we need to be dealing with and therefore seeking professional help, um, mental health professionals may actually help. Uh, but we are seeing some of the dignitaries making their way all the way to the top, um, uh, using the stairs that are here for those that are physically uh, active and are able to make it to the top. We have seen the founding president, uh, the former president, um, taking their vehicles, obviously, they are in advanced age, but the rest of the dignitaries here making their way up on their own. Uh, the public is able to watch proceedings with uh, screens, we understand, that have been put up uh, at Heroes Acre. Um, we, we, have, we had a number of um, heads of state, 17 to be exact, heads of state and uh, heads of government that uh, arrived uh, in, in Namibia to pay their last respects to uh, President uh, Gengob. Now many of them would have left um, um, already and I think those that are here are those that were particularly close to Namibia, that had close ties uh, to Namibia uh, and as well as former presidents. Um, the president of Angola um, is here, and of course, Namibia and Angola share a very, very uh, close relationship. Um, they shared um, trenches uh, when in, during the liberation um, struggle. So President João Lorenzo of Angola is here, and he will be making his way uh, to the gravesite for, for, for the burial. Um, the president of, uh, of Zambia, President uh, Hichilema, is, uh, is, is also here. Uh, I don't know if the, if the cameras can capture this, but uh, we see the brother of President Gengob making his way uh, down the stairs and he is making his way to the burial um, site. This is the brother of President Gengob. Um, he's also accompanied by President Gengob's sister. Um. Talking about uh, international leaders as well, uh, one of the things uh, that we know is, is that the President really invested heavily in maintaining some of those relationships. Um, and, and really, they became not really... Uh, just you know, official relations, but friendships that were formed. Um, for instance, with the president of, of Botswana, we understand there were regular uh, calls that were being made between the two of them. And that sort of investment um,
has really paid off. Um, that personal investment in the, in in, rela in relationship building has really paid off, and we can see how, for instance, between Angola um, between Namibia and Botswana, you don't require a passport; you just require an identification document, for instance, to enter in into that country. So, so that means those two leaders really invested in in the relationship, and that sort of uh, you know that that sort of experience can also be detected between South Africa and Namibia, where liberation uh, movements ANC and and SWAP obviously share common bonds um, and leaders that uh, were in the same countries. For instance, Thabo Beki and President Hage Genkop, for instance, were in Lusaka at particular points in time, and therefore you can call on them when things really get very difficult. Um, and, and so that is an end of an era as we are seeing other leaders coming up in, in those respective countries as well. Earlier on, we saw the former president of Mozambique. Joachim Chisano. Yes, he has also remained behind. Uh, uh, and uh, Mozambique obviously and Namibia, and Zimbabwe, and South Africa, uh, Angola, former liberation movements, uh, became liberation governing parties in their respective countries. And now there is an alliance that has been formed uh, where they share notes on how to get things done in their respective countries as well. Absolutely. I mean, these relationships, as you were saying, were forged uh, decades ago when they all find, found themselves as refugees and freedom fighters uh, in countries like um, uh, Tanganyika um, and, uh, and later Zambia and then uh, Angola after it, Angola became uh, independent. So these relationships um, were, were forged in many of these um, uh, countries and they've been forged over decades and they were driven by a common goal, which was the independence of Southern Africa and um, Africa, you know, um, at, at large. So, um, and, and they have um, maintained these relationships long after the countries became um, independent. And this is what has contributed to the peace and stability in uh, Southern Africa, it, it has to be said. Yeah, I mean, the, uh, it's, the other leader is just a call away. And uh, in, in some cases, just one hour flight away. Um, so so we, there is an appreciation of those common bonds and the need for those relationships to be well maintained. And we are hoping that the next generation of, of leaders will continue to value uh, those friendships. They will continue to... Um, to maintain those people-to-people -people relationships, um, because that's what statecraft is all about. In, in fact, um, President uh, Mbeki put it, um, former President Mbeki of South Africa, put it very eloquently when, when he said that it takes uh, somebody like Hage, who has integrity, and somebody who is a revolutionary to be able to forge the path that he wanted to see for Africa, the Africa we want to see. And it, it takes somebody who was schooled and who grew up in, uh, as, as a revolutionary. So that is very um, significant indeed. A commitment from President Angolo Mbumba yesterday um, saying, look, some of these policies of uh, President Genkop will continue in his administration as well. So it's a transactional leadership that uh, President Mbumba is bringing to the fore. You might not see um, policies being upended, uh, things being uh, changed left, right, and center. You're seeing a continuation 
of policies, a continuation of uh, of um, of of, um, of friendships and cooperation on the international front as well. You can see the huge crowd on uh, on on your screens. Um, they are braving the sun um, to come and pay their last respects um, to to the president, and and nothing was going to to stop them. Indeed, and and and, and there is a, a, a good scene of, um, of of the crowd easily 20,000 at least so they have filled Hero's Acre to the capacity and we don't see this scene often uh, you see it during independence celebrations for instance when there's a soaring in of a new president you see these sort of scenes where Namibians come in numbers um, so it, it, it is testament to just how Namibians loved their president. Indeed. This is the gun carriage and uh, it is waiting to make its way uh, to the, the, the top. The gun carriage was um, stationed here in front of the eternal flame this is where the eternal flame is um, and this is where the majority of uh, foreign delegates dignitaries um, and of course um, Namibian um, dignitaries this is where they were and now the gun carriage will make its way to the top of um, the two uh, mausoleums where the president will be laid to rest. And when we're using the word mausoleum, mas, um, that particular word, uh, please say it again. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to massacre the English language, not on this particular occasion. The mausoleum. <laughs> yes. Um, they are not typical mausoleums, uh, uh, yes. Yes, as we see them in other parts of yes. the world. Uh, and, and obviously there is a unique Namibian touch to them and obviously this is something that we will be able to see in the next few moments uh, as the carriage is taken all the way to the top. Yes indeed and uh, the, the, we still have the director of the National Heritage Council with us so she will be able to take us through um, the, the, um, of, of what is happening and where he is being laid to rest once we get to, um, to that point. joined us uh, you are watching the final uh, the burial of um, the late Namibian president Dr. Hage Gottfried Gengop and we're here at um, Heroes Acre uh, here you can see the gun carriage and it is preparing to make its way to uh, to the top of uh, Heroes Acre where the president will be laid um, to rest Yes, this information is particularly aimed um, at those uh, of our uh, viewers who are joining us on uh, YouTube, uh, joining us on the NBC app, uh, which is NBC Plus, um, which you can also download, uh, particularly for uh, viewers in the diaspora. Um, you can also follow the proceedings. Uh, um, this is President Hichilemba Hakainde, Hakainde Hichilemba of uh, Zambia, and he is one of the presidents that is going to um, assist um, at, at the top. As soon as the dignitaries have made their way up, uh, we we will hand you over to the last uh, remaining program that is still being led ably by the Minister of Defense and uh, the Prime Minister of the Republic. Uh, both of them yesterday sharing that responsibility um, and today carrying 
over these particular duties until they are concluded. It's the president of DRC, I Democratic believe. Democratic Republic of Congo. Yes, Felix Chisekedi, uh, indeed, also one of the presidents um, that uh, is giving the honor of attending the burial. President of DRC yesterday also delivering a tribute on behalf of the people of the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Um, this is uh, the former Prime Minister of uh, Kenya, Raila Odinga. Former President of um, Kenya. Former Prime Minister. Oh, no, Prime Minister. Raila Odinga, yes. President Uhuru Kenyatta, former President Uhuru Kenyatta, was not able to, to make it. However, the current President William Ruto came to Namibia yesterday and also made a tribute. That is the President of Mozambique. We also have uh, the Emir of uh, Qatar, who is, who is here, um, Emir Altani, and uh, he um, he's here. First of all, he was a close friend of uh, President uh, Gengob, but more than that, uh, Qatar also has uh, economic interests um, in, uh, in Namibia, and it has been one of the few uh, Middle East countries that has invested um, quite heavily in, in Namibia, uh, namely in uh, the petroleum um, sector. They were part of those that funded the exploration and the, find, the, the subsequent uh, um, finding of, of, of the oil wells. It's a sector that is um, about to take off. We understand um, appraisals uh, of those wells are underway and hopefully with uh, positive news. This will be one of uh, President Gankop's legacies that uh, Namibia became or is likely to become a, a oil producing country. Something that just became very prominent in the last two years of his presidency. Obviously, he has also equally championed the green hydrogen uh, agenda as a strategic bet for the country. And these sectors hopefully will employ many Namibians, um, create the wealth and prosperity that he yearned for and that he stood for and something that in his presidency promised he was going to work hard on achieving. Uh, but it is unfinished business on that front. Uh, and obviously the prospects for oil and gas and green hydrogen are well on the agenda of the of, of President Nangolo Mbumba as well. Let's sing a song. When I say goodbye to the General Martin Shelley there, also serving as one of the poor bearers. General retired Martin Shelley, that is. And many of the students of the United Nations Institute for Namibia that were taught at that institute, uh, some of them occupying high offices, have also paid uh, respect to their former director. And um, many of those connections, we understand former lecturers that used to serve at the institute, uh, they have also been paying tribute as well. Minister of Health and Social Services, Dr. Kalumbi Shangula.
working very closely with the former president during the COVID-19 pandemic, a pandemic that really wiped some of the social gains that we have made as a nation Indeed. and resulted in the deaths of many Namibians. But from the top, President Hancock providing leadership. family members so, just behind uh, facing the cameras those are the family members the children of uh, Dr. Kengob I believe this is President Nusi from Mozambique and the first lady or, or maybe a, a translator um, that is talking to Madame Genkos and uh, the vice president and the president also have made their way to the top and we expect the program to start now that the carriage is uh, making its and there way. There the gun carriage moves, the president remains to their last resting place. Oh, 
take your seat for now until they are ready to lower the casket and, and we will let you know. Okay. Coffin being taken into into this um, fitting structure. The, the I still don't know what we need to call this I think we uh, can at safely some point. Call it a mausoleum. <laughs> yeah. You know, if it is a covered uh, a structure, is that right? Can we safely call it a mausoleum because it is enclosed? Yeah. Yeah. Well, as long as we understand it in the context in which it is, because uh, sometimes we tend to use terms that uh, cause confusion. Um, definitely, as, uh, as of uh, the place where we are laying our late president to rest, there is a grave. And uh, as it was just announced um, a little while ago by the Prime Minister, we are waiting for the uh, um, casket to be lowered into a grave, which will be covered, and once it is covered, then at least we would have done it the Namibian way. Um, we may... Um, think of coming up with a term as to what we are calling these structures but uh, the purpose is basically to provide the space 
um, befitting for the hero um, that our late president and uh, um, was. Yes. Um, just to add a bit on what uh, was already said in terms of uh, who can be buried at uh, the Heroes Acre, definitely we have um, uh, symbolic graves, nine of them, and uh, we have uh, 46 um, uh, real graves, amongst which we have those that were repatriated from um, um, outside the country, Angola and Zambia to be specific, as well as uh, those who were buried at uh, um, other cemeteries within the country that were uh, brought here. Um, one significant part is also uh, the tomb of, uh, um, on which the unknown soldier is standing, where um, we have the soil that was taken from uh, the graves, the mass graves in Kasinga, as well as in uh, Oshatotua, um, and they were then buried here symbolically just to ensure that they are also included as it is per the wish of uh, the Namibian nation. The voice of uh, Madam Erika Daliko Kule, she's with the Heritage Council, the custodian of the Heroes Acre, as well as other sites as well. We have the Enana. Uh, shrine as well and also at Ongulungombashi as well yes. so heroes also of other categories that are accorded uh, those um, that particular status they are buried uh, at these shrines and the idea maybe Madam Ndaliko Kule is really that we have a befitting space where we can honor our heroes and our heroines um, not only in the capital city but also in other parts of, of the country. The, the, this place is quite um, spacious. Um, it, it looks small, but it is quite spacious. I mean, you have a number of um, uh, military officers standing inside, uh, plus the, the, the casket. So it is um, quite, um, quite spacious. I haven't been able to see uh, uh, the family, so perhaps the, the cameras can, can uh, try and see where the family is. Yes, and um, as Erica was saying, the coffin is now about uh, to, to be lowered. So it is going to be lowered in the ground. Um, they are obviously going to remove um, the flag uh, and the other accoutrements and give those to the widow. And uh, also we... Uh, understand the 21 gun salute will also follow uh, concurrently with the lowering of uh, um, the lowering of the coffin
May the pole bearers please now remove the flags from the casket to prepare for the lowering of the casket. <coughs> May we all please rise now for the lowering of the casket into the grave that will be done concurrently with 21 gun salute and fly past by the NDF. Okay, can, can they wait a while, please, before they start lowering the, the casket so that the former presidents can also be there? They would like to witness that. Sorry. Yes. Can somebody read them there? Can somebody? Thank you. 
Okay, um, can we now proceed with the lowering of the casket concurrently with the 21 gun salute and the fly past?
<coughs> you may now take your seats, please. is the Lord's and everything in it in it Amen Beloved in the Lord as we have brought our brother and president His Excellency Dr. Hage Gottfried Kinkop at his resting place let us listen to the word of the Lord Of the mortality of a human being, man who is and full of trouble, he comes forth like a flower and fades away. He flees like a shadow. And the number of his months. You have appointed his bounds that he cannot pass. The dust returns. For we are strangers before you and pilgrims. Our days on with us away. But we um, therefore, just as through one man sin, death through sin, death spread to all men, because all have sinned. Listen what the word of the Lord says about the seriousness of the preparation for the death. Say, you shall not live. Watch therefore, for you do not know when the ma in the evening or at midnight or at cockcrow or in the morning, lest he come suddenly and find you asleep. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each one may receive good or evil according to what he has done in his life. It is appointed for a man to die once, and after that comes judgment. Lastly, Listen, wants to console us in our mortal, perishable life, for the way sin is, but the free Lord. Building from. to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and to an inheritance undefiled and unfaithful yet who die in the Lord henceforth blessed indeed says the spirit that they may rest from their labors and their works follows them and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. 
and there shall be no more death, no sorrow, no crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Amen. As it has pleased the Almighty God, the Lord of life and death, take out this world, the soul of our departed president, comrade, Hake Gottfried Kengop. We now commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, in the hope that our Lord Jesus Christ will raise him to eternal life. Hake Gottfried Kengop. From earth you were taken. To earth you shall return. Our Lord Jesus Christ will raise you on the last day to inherit eternal life. Amen. I know that my Redeemer lives and that he shall stand at the last day upon the earth. And after my skin has been destroyed, yet in my flesh I will see God. I myself will see him with my own eyes and not another. Let us pray. Almighty God, who by the, earth of, by the death of your Son, Jesus Christ, has destroyed death, by his rest, in the tomb has sanctified the grace of your children and by his glorious resurrection has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel so that all who die in him abide in the joy rest from their labors receive we pray you our thanks for the victory over death and the grave which he has obtained for us and for all who sleep in him. We thank you also, Father, for the life of your servant, Hake Gottfried Kengop, whom you have called from this temporal world, for everything that you have done through him, for all the love and care to his family, friends, community, the nation and congregation who are now bereaved through his departure. Be with us all and comfort us with your ever presence with us. Strengthen us by your Holy Spirit that our trust in your grace in Jesus Christ may daily increase and that with sure confidence we may hold fast the blessed hope that we shall not die but only sleep and the last day be raised up unto everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Let's pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Father, who created you out of the dust of the earth, may our Lord Jesus Christ, who by his blood redeemed you, may the Holy Spirit, who by baptism sanctified you to be his temple, keep you in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
akan F mungkin lah ya. Oke, so we can move away. Yeah, okay, yes, we can perhaps stand somewhere there. Ambassador Ipumbu, who is the chief of protocol, served uh, in this particular role under President Kenkop, still continuing to direct the protocol um, on this occasion. And we saw all of the former chief of protocol uh, coming to also pay their respects, including um, Ambassador Muvangwa, who is now serving in Brazil. Um, Ambassador Nandango, who is now serving in Angola. Um, and also joined by Ambassador Ipumbu. Ambassador Salma Shifala is also here. Yes. He came all the way from Ghana. Um, the High Commissioner of Namibia to London. Uh, Ambassador Linda Scott is also here. So we have a lot of our ambassadors who have come over to pay their last um, respects. Um, now, the defense force is going to proceed to the country. Once, once that has been slab to be placed um, over the grave. It is not going to be covered with sand um, and this is usually done Okay, I, I might be giving you misleading information uh, regarding the sand issue we expect it will be covered uh, with sand, but at a at a later stage. Right now, um, it is just a slab that will be placed over. In addition to the national institutions coming in an exemplary manner to really give a fitting farewell to the, pres the former president, uh, we have also had assistance from neighboring countries, um, in particular Zambia, uh, the all-weather friend of Namibia, send some military officials to assist in guiding some of the processes that we are witnessing today, in particular because they have had a history of experiencing a sitting president uh, passing on as well as a former president as well. Mm -hmm. So Zambia, Namibia's all-weather friend coming to our aid At this point in time, um, the defense force is um, going to cover the grave. And then the head of state is going to give the accoutrements, in other words, the flags and the other uh, uh, symbols of um, his presidency, will then be given to the widow. And uh, thereafter there will be the laying of wreaths. And that will be done in a very particular order. Uh, we And the widow will have an opportunity to lay a wreath 
format yes, she present. will be the first to lay um, the wreath, and then that will be followed by the head of state. Yes, and then uh, the former president, Nyoma, former president, yes. Ohamba, um, and also the Speaker of the National Assembly, Chairperson of the National Council, um, the Chief Justice, all laying wreaths. The vote of, of thanks is uh, going to be given by Judge um, Judge Petrus Damasep, and uh, he will be giving it on behalf of the family. The judge is also a very long-standing uh, friend of um, the Gangops. He, in fact, was also a student a former student of uh, Union before he was sent abroad to complete um, his studies. I now invite the NDF to assist with the covering of the grave. The symbolic um, dust to dust, earth to earth and dust to dust, symbolically um, putting sand on her husband's casket, the first lady. ceremony will effectively bring us to the end of um, the burial of the late president, Hagia Gengop. The founding president, Dr. Sam Liyoma, going to put the symbolic sand on the grave. also following the same the ritual, giving his honors. 
yesterday recalling how he met the, the late president in Tsumep and that particular meeting obviously left a mark because he, he recalled uh, that uh, the former president was a remarkable person. These are the, the children. children yes, the indeed. Former president. Quite a difficult moment this is for them as well. This is the younger sister of Dr. Kenko. The Speaker of the National Assembly, Dr. Peter Kachavivi. Professor Kachavivi did not teach at the United Nations Institute for Namibia. Yeah. He was representing Swapo in London. That's right. This is the son, the firstborn son, Mangaliso Kengo. Spitting image of his father. This is his daughter. Yes, Your Excellencies, the President is inviting the heads of delegations from SADAC and the chairperson of the AU daughter, to proceed to the grave site to join him. Tangos Kengos. This is uh, Hage Jr., Hage Genkop Jr., his last born son. This is Osho, Osho Veli, his second daughter. The Chief Justice and the Chairperson of the National Council, I take it that the Speaker is already at the gravesite. You, you may join. I think the Chairperson of the Traditional Authorities, you may also proceed. His first granddaughter, Naomi. That's his, um, one of his sons, Nino Kalondo. There you see President uh, Emerson Budagagwa with the ubiquitous scarf of the Zimbabwean colors, preparing to make his way with President uh, Ramaphosa. No. Yes, it is. Um, and just behind is the chairperson of the AU Commission. And this is the Vice President. General retired. Retired General. Retired General uh, Daitwa. Tenga Daitwa. Indeed.
president of Angola. Jean Lorenzo Gonchalves. A fairly close friend of, um, of President uh, Gengop and of course the First Lady. A close friend of uh, President uh, Gengop. They consulted regularly. Um, they also um, saw each other regularly. In fact, when the heroes were repatriated from Angola and, um, and, and Zambia, um, President uh, Jean Lorenzo was the defense minister at the time. And he came to the reburial representing the Angolan government. A hectic weekend for President Cyril Ramaphosa. Indeed, indeed. Weekend activities filled with campaign launches as well as bidding farewell to his a brother. friend. Absolutely. In fact, the the president of the AU, the, the commissioner of um, the the. African Union, Ali Faki. <coughs> president of Finland, and now President of Germany, who yesterday acknowledged that the genocide is a matter that remains unfinished business between the two countries and that it needs to be dealt with as soon as Your possible. Your Excellencies, yes. uh, the remaining heads of states and delegation are invited to also go to the gravesite to perform the last rites there. Maybe we just allow the other heads of states who are coming from there to take their seats so that we, we have space there. President of Mozambique, President Yusi. And First Lady of Mozambique. President of Zambia kneeling down to say farewell to an elder brother. President, President of Malawi. Yes. Lazarus Chakwera. It, it is a tradition in Zambia and Malawi. You know, the, the two people share similar traditions. It is a tradition when you pour put sand, the symbolic sand, you have to kneel. President of DRC. Felix Chisekedi. So the Master of Ceremonies inviting all of the heads of state and government to do what is necessary this afternoon. They made the time, the effort to be here in the country and therefore this fitting send-off is something that they are equally participating in. The representative of Eswatini, who has been sent by the king.
Dutch President Chivute. Chief of Justice. He was also a student at the United Nations. He Institute was a student at Union, the Chief Justice, yes. and uh, he he was taught by many of the people that uh, Dr. Hage uh, recruited. Madam Sophia Shaningwa, the Secretary General of SWAPO, re-elected for a second term in the last Congress. And this is the chairperson of the National Council, Namibia's upper house of parliament. This is Chief Gasset. Chief of uh, the traditional leaders uh, council. Yes. This is the president, is the of, president Ethiopia. of Ethiopia. I shared Madame the same Bok. flight with her when she arrived in the country. Yes. Quite a very humble servant of her people. This is the president of Ghana. President Ardo. He has come all the way from West Africa. They've had uh, occasion to interact uh, with with President um, Gengo over over the years. So we are trying our best to navigate the monitors in front of us. So if you don't hear us mentioning a representative or a president, it doesn't mean that we don't know them. But all in all, NBC has done a sterling job in bringing um, the events um, around uh, from the announcement of the death of the president to bringing his life stories, to bringing um, um, stories of his uh, legacy over the, the, the last three weeks solidly. Um, NBC has been the go-to um, institution or the go-to broadcaster to get accurate information about the president and events around the president. The Princess Royal um, of the United Kingdom. Princess, Princess Anne. Princess Anne. Former Mozambican president. Joachim Chisano. He shared uh, uh, political trenches with um, the president from their days um, in, in, in exile. President uh, Hage Kenkop was vested in uh, resolving the crisis in, in Mozambique. And uh, this is President uh, Thabo Beke, former South former African president. South African president. And he was telling us in an interview that um, they were very close. Former President uh, Olu Shegun Obasanjo of Nigeria, also one of the um, elders. Uh, which was set up, the Council of Elders set up to resolve African conflicts. This is the United Nations Deputy Secretary General. The representative of uh, the Chinese delegation sent by President Jinping.
the Commonwealth uh, Sec Secretary General. These are just some of the representatives of the uh, many dignitaries, uh, foreign heads of state uh, dignitaries that came to pay their last respects to our late president. There you see President Abombeki, a close friend of um, the late Hage Gengo, very close indeed. Olushegun, President Olushegun of Basanjo, paying his respects. Credited for returning democracy to Nigeria and leading uh, a peaceful transition from military rule to civilian rule in Nigeria, Africa's most populous nation. Because the king said to me, a close embrace with the with the former first lady the former the first ladies of africa um, have really transformed their respective offices into offices that are serving their various countries in meaningful ways and our first lady monica Genko's leading on that front uh, leading a grouping of um, african first ladies coming together to advocate for health issues on the African continent. Indeed. And uh, those first ladies have also come here to not only because of the connection that they had with President Hage Genko, but also Madame Genko's in her own capacity as a first lady. <laughs> Professor Carlos Lopez, the former head of the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa and also a very close confidant of uh, President Genkop has also come to town to come and bid farewell to his, to his friend. He was somebody that was invited by President Genkop to induct his new cabinet in 2015, especially around the economic vision that he had at the time. Indeed. What you see on your screens are just the foreign dignitaries, the VIPs, who will be uh, paying their last um, respects. I show somebody resembling our Justice Minister, yes, uh, indeed. Yvonne Dausab. That was uh, Yvonne. And uh, she re represented Namibia ably at the International Court of Justice this week. And still 
con and still represents Namibia um, very ably. The minister in the presidency and also businesswoman Martha Namujebo Tilahun. In your picture there. The minister in the presidency had the honor of working very closely with the president for the past couple of years. It was quite emotional during the inauguration ceremony of the new president. Indeed. She was visibly shaken. And what a time it has been for everyone who worked very closely with the president in the presidency, in the, in the private office of the president. These are men and women that yes. worked day in, day out with the head of state. And now being called upon to organize logistics and other activities. I'm also being told that Heroes Acre will be closed to uh, the public. So please do not make your way uh, to come and see where the president is buried. It will be closed to the public. The National Heritage Council will make uh, an announcement uh, when the Heroes Acre will reopen. So please, um, this is to the public at large, please don't make your way here. Once the ceremony is open, the shrine will be closed. Please, please kindly the, the wait first for lady really seeing these delegations until the wee hours really of uh, prominent people that made their way to their residence and she without fail saw each and every single one of them. Indeed. Um, They're preparing to close the grave now. There the slab goes over. Hello. The, the family members and mourners who want to proceed to go to the gravesite, uh, please welcome to do so now. Those who want to go to the gravesite to put in sand are now free to do that now. You are invited to proceed to the gravesite. You can see the slab is is being put over the the grave they're just preparing to 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 put it now so to you asking us questions about the sand that will obviously come at a later stage exactly um, 
the spiritual leaders have also supported the Kenkop family in person and lifted them up in prayer at every occasion. And really, this was a moment that they assisted the nation as well to pay our respects and uh, send off our president. So one of the things that we have been talking about is how institutions have come to the party to send Dr. Kenkop and send him well, um, a befitting send-off to the former head of state. We have talked about the armed forces, but we have also talked about the national broadcaster. This afternoon, I'm delighted to be joined by the chairperson of the board of directors of the Namibian Broadcasting Corporation, Mr. Lazarus Jacobs. Uh, a very good afternoon to you, chairperson. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much, Kavimbire. Thank you so much for inviting me. This is the penultimate send-off, a period of three weeks in which the institution, the national broadcaster, had to come to the party and deliver exceptional service. How do you assess this whole period from your vantage point? That was, uh, the, the last three weeks were amazing in the sense that uh, all our systems were put through a stress test, both uh, physically, emotionally, in terms of our logistics and so on. And, and uh, what we what we had done is we got together with the DG uh, as, as the board and we said, look, the eyes of the world will be on Namibia because this is the largest funeral Namibia has ever, will ever experience because it was the demise of a, first, of the, of a sitting president, our first uh, sitting president. And we told the director general that whatever it is that you need, we need to make it happen. We went to our shareholder, the ministry, and the executive director, the minister, the deputy minister, they were right on the money. They just said, no, whatever it is to give our hero, our president, the ultimate respect and also to, to bring this funeral to the rest of the world. As you know, we were able to provide this signal for this burial all over Africa because we received so many, almost we received almost 28 visiting heads of state and heads of, dele heads of delegations, about 37. And people in African countries wanted to see where their leaders are going, and, and NBC was the host broadcaster. And, and I must say, uh, Kadembire, the NBC has done a tremendous job. They, the, all the staff members, I've, I was speaking to quite a lot of the colleagues. Some of them haven't slept in the, in the past 54 hours, they but they haven't slept properly, but they understood the enormity of this and also we're busy writing history because this is the first sitting head of state to pass away and we are recording that and that's namibia to the world and i must really congratulate mm. and thank all the colleagues of the nbc whether it's the director general to the person who is just passing on the water to and, and colleagues like yourself who who are then becoming the voice and the in the visuals of what people are experiencing here at heroes acre mm -hmm. obviously one of the things that needed investment is the technological platform, the technology to undertake a massive production of this scale. What, what, what do you have to say to that and, and just the, the investment that had to be made? So the, a, a lot as we say, I've been following some of the information on, on social media and people say, oh, NBC must have borrowed uh, cameras from other people. That is not true. Everything that you see here was brought to you by the Namibian Broadcasting Corporation. People were surprised that we are actually broadcasting in high definition. Since uh, August last year, we've been testing our signals, and I must really thank the Director General and his team. But especially the Director General, he's been pushing and said, we need to go HD throughout all our channels. 
And I want to assure, uh, assure Namibians, what you're seeing on your screen is by Namibians and for Namibians. And we have a dedicated team of more than uh, 500 people who are committed to bring to um, deliver our mandate. In terms of the um, uh, financial uh, investment, NBC was in the process of investing. We we must thank our shareholders. They, they they started support. They supported our capital budget because we told them we need to go with the times. We need to we need to be able to be a high definition broadcaster. We need to be a a, a digital broadcaster. And uh, and uh, we saw a lot of messages, even people in the diaspora outside uh, the continent who are following live on all our platforms. So that's the investment that we have made, which made it possible. And it's going to be like this from now on. And uh, like I said, the, the burial of, of our president provided us an opportunity, and I don't want it to sound opportunistic, but to showcase yeah. what NBC has been doing in terms of growth. And what, what do you make of some of the pictures that we have seen? I saw a picture of a television set being put out under a tree with a generator for public members... Um, in rural parts of this country to just watch these proceedings? So uh, that speaks to the men we are burying or we have buried this uh, this afternoon, um, Ohage. Uh, everybody used to call him Ohage. Um, he was their president. He was a people's president. And one thing that people are constantly saying is Hage made the presidency accessible to Namibia. It's not that the others mm. were not, mm. but he was a different personality. Mm. He was a sports guy, he was a music guy, he was dancing and so on. And he was able to open not just his heart, but his office to the ordinary Namibians to feel like that's my leader and I can go and sit in a shibin next to him and we can sing or mm. I can sit in a, in a shibin next to him and we can watch a football match. Mm. What you are seeing, what we are seeing, the images, um, of these people are uh, people who are saying I want to be part Please. of this man called Hagi Kenko I want to be part of that burial and I will do whatever it is it, I will do whatever it takes to make sure that I bury this man and I will not miss it uh, Kadimbira is one of those moments uh, you're going to ask yourself two questions one day where were you when you heard that he, uh, His Excellency passed away? And the second, did you watch his burial? Mm -hmm. And I don't think anybody wanted to, to miss it. You know? I, I don't think anybody wanted to miss it. It's the same thing they did with the Queen of England. The British felt, where, where were you when that happened? You know? and, and this is, like I said, this is the largest burial Namibia has ever experienced. Yeah. 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 Indeed, history-making stuff that we are witnessing. and be. Uh, just a, a last question. Now that you have set the standards, Obviously, maintaining them should be the order of the day. Mm -hmm. What is your promise to Namibians out there? I have no doubt whatsoever that we can maintain these standards. Uh, for those of uh, uh, our, our compatriots who have been following NBC, you will see that there were NBC for the past two, three years has been on a trajectory uh, for growth. And it has been, it has been on the trajectory to make sure that we bring quality content to na for, for Namibians. Now, here's, here is the, the, the consolation, if you want to call it. Everybody who's involved in this project, everybody who's involved in this broadcasting, are people who work for the NBC or are freelancers for the NBC. So there's, there's no outside influence here. You can say, oh, if those, if those people leave, then we, we're back. No, no, no. The standard has been set. Everybody is all hands on deck, and I can ensure I can ensure Namibians. We, you are just going. Things are just going to get better and better. You've seen it when we've done what we've done with the Afcon, brought it. How we're able to engage all 14 regions of the country in the Afcon, where we had broadcast live from different fan parks all over the country, not just in Vendu. And also, you've seen it during our December broadcast. Uh, 
uh, last year, how we're able to bring news broadcast and all kinds of uh, current affairs programs around Christmas and the holiday from all kinds of regions. So, uh, Kaven Bire, this is, this is the show of things to come. We're just going to get bigger and bigger with the support of, obviously, of our, our primary shareholder, which is the Ministry of MICT, and uh, obviously with our viewers. And I just want to urge Namibians that this is your product, you know. Let's Let's stop looking for other excuses. I know they did not do that, or they bought new cameras. NBC didn't buy a new camera. N NBC just got a digital signal. Mm -hmm. And that's what we've been trying to work towards throughout that. Uh, as Namibia, we did it to do a digital migration from, ana uh, from analog. And we've been in that process for the past seven years. And this is a culmination of, of that and what people can see on their screens right now. Everything rises and falls on, on leadership. Absolutely. Mr. Chairperson, thank you so much for joining us uh, this afternoon and relating to us your experience as one of the institutions that had really to come to the party. Thank you, Kathleen Bire. I, and I really process. want to say thank you, uh, Ms. Apoles, uh, Ricardo, and all the colleagues. Uh, I wish Namibians could see what's going on behind the, uh, the scenes here. And everybody is working with a smile on their face because this is, you can see, this is a labor of love. And it's also, there's also a huge air of patriotism. They are doing this because they are Namibians. And I really want to thank you, thank you from, on behalf of the board and, and, and everybody. I want to thank you. And on behalf of Namibians, I want to thank you for the sacrifices you've made. Thank you so much. Chairperson of the National Broadcaster, Lazarus Jacobs there, with a few words uh, on this team that has delivered a very successful product over the past three weeks. Um, at this point in time, where are we? Maybe let's fill you in. What has been happening is that uh, public members have now made their way to the top. They also want to personally witness these occasion and um, what is likely to happen in the next few moments or so is that there will be the laying of the wreaths uh, as we pointed out that is something that is done at occasions of, of this nature and in fact, therefore um, before that uh, it was announced by the director of ceremony that um, the instruments that were used by the late president uh, the flag and uh, the instruments as commander-in-chief, the accoutrements, as they're called, will then be handed over now to um, the former First Lady and, and widow. And this is what they're preparing to do now. <coughs> I'm sure it's too early to talk of a presidential library, but, I mean, from the residents, the pictures that one saw... Uh, I mean, there is a connection, obviously, to academia and, and, and writing and, and books and publishing and what have you. Especially so you would want pieces. all of those memories to be reduced Absolutely. into some yes. sort of a product. Yes. Uh, Edi Nashanti, where are you? We want the, the name list. Oh, you are here. We are, we are. The, the program, the ceremony, the, the laying roof ceremony has started. It is starting with uh, Madame Gainkos. She is the first to lay the wreath. Yes, we're going towards the laying of the wreaths.
They're getting ready to they placing the wreaths and uh, they will now go and lay uh, the wreaths. There is the former first lady who has just laid her wreath. Your Excellency. Hello. We are inviting His Excellency, Comrade Honor, His Excellency Dr. Nangolo Mbumba, President of the Republic of Namibia, to lay the reef. traumatic experience for the Namibian people. It has also been traumatic, obviously, for um, the family. Um, how, how would you describe the way the Namibian public has behaved over these last few we, days? We are next I mean, will be... I mean, we, we saw an outpouring of, of love um, an outpouring of um, of love, really. Um, I, I can sum it in that way. Because we saw that whatever divided us was not impactful in the bigger scheme of things. And what brought us together is a moment such as this one. And Namibians really have, have come together very, very strongly. And more so because we are laying a president who, in his first election, enjoyed 87% um, of the popular vote. So he was well liked by uh, Namibians from across the political divide. Um, so that was not a surprise uh, for me. Uh, but importantly, it's the friends of Namibia um, that I saw in this moment because the president always said, look, we are friend of all and an enemy to none. And you can see even with this particular ceremony, uh, you have representatives from the United States, you have representatives from Cuba. So that tells you all that enemies can come together in this fashion and really pay respects to these 
uh, son of the Namibian soil in the manner. And a great African, a great uh, Pan-Africanist. In, in fact, although we did not see uh, outpourings of, of grief per se, Namibians, it was more a celebration of his life, a celebration of this great man. Um, if you remember, when they were taking the procession through the streets of Vinduk, particularly in, uh, in Kadatura, the crowds just lined, came out in their thousands to line the streets, and they all started clapping as um, his, his funeral cortege drove past. They were all clapping. Um, so to me, that symbolized a celebration of his life, saying thank you for what you've done for this country. Thank you for leading us uh, um, through, um, uh, for leading us basically, for being a good leader, um, etc. Would you agree? Totally, totally. I mean, even after the, his death, there were spontaneous services that were just being held by random people, not even through the official channels. And, and government had needed to step in and say, look, let's structure this better. And it spoke to how, how people wanted to um, say goodbye, but importantly, how they wanted to celebrate these, this life story, uh, these achievements, these accomplishments. Um, this is the founding president who has just uh, laid his wreath. <coughs> yes, indeed. Uh, we also have to make allowances for their ages. Uh, these um, leaders that have been with us for many years, and we forget that they're also human. They're human beings, and they do have a, a lifespan. And uh, this is just the natural course of things. Uh, taking over, this is nature. Uh, and many, of course, are not used to seeing uh, the founding president uh, like this. But we have to remember that age is taking over and there is nothing anybody can do, um, unfortunately. We were quite fortunate to have, you know, our founding president, our second president, our third Indeed. president, almost completing his entire term Indeed. for 35 solid years. I mean, other countries have not been that fortunate. Um, Zambia has been quite fortunate yes. with uh, Kenneth Kaunda, His Excellency. the founding president, leaving for so president long. Um, Robert Mugabe leaving for so long. They had their longevity. But, but others... Uh, are quite not fortunate. So we need to really be grateful. The other thing we need to be grateful for um, as, as a country, as a nation, is, is the peace and uh, stability that has uh, uh, characterized um, uh, Namibia since uh, independence. And this has been uh, 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 no less because of uh, people like um, President Nyoma, President uh, Bahamba, and, uh, and President Hage. This has been one of the hallmarks of uh, Namibia, the peace and stability. This is President uh, Masisi of Botswana who, uh, who said that uh, Hage was his uh, older brother. In fact, he was, he was lamenting the um, fact that he would no longer be able uh, to bounce right things president. off uh, President um, Hage. He had Dr. wanted him to be Neto there for longer so Naito. that he could advise him and he could bounce uh, issues off him. Obviously, one of the interesting developments and dynamics is the democracy in the southern parts of uh, Africa. South Africa 
is going to elections in May. Botswana is also having an elective year. So is Namibia. Uh, democracy, democracy and democratic principles well entrenched in the sub-region. Indeed, indeed. Yes, um, uh, and, and so this is the vice president. Yetumbo um, Nandin Daitwa. In fact, um, SADC can actually be held up uh, as uh, as as a beacon of of democracy. You know, all the SADC countries have very successfully transitioned into full fledged uh, democratic institutions and democratic states, where democratic institutions are guaranteed uh, by by the constitution. Um, so. Um, the, the, the region has, has definitely Professor been a Achavili, beacon of, um, um, of democracy. And Pro these speaker. are countries that were formerly uh, didn't have oh, democratic okay. institutions, where you had one-party states for, for many years, uh, and that have now uh, transitioned into uh, um, democracies. Uh, Malawi comes, um, comes to mind. Um, so, so does uh, Malawi comes to mind? So, so does uh, uh, Angola? So does uh, uh, Zambia under the one-party uh, system? But they have successfully transitioned into democracies, and that is something to be uh, commended. It is really something to be commended. And as we forge closer ties. Um, I think the Chief region Justice will Chibute. be very powerful um, indeed. Um, if, you, if you look at what you mentioned earlier, that um, Botswana and uh, Namibia have signed an agreement where literally we have no borders. We can move into Botswana freely with just our identity cards. Now that is a first and that is really incredible. Uh, which means that um, these two countries have laid the foundation for closer ties uh, between um, African countries. Chairman of our traditional council. Professor Peter Kashavivi was Chairman. once interviewed. Why is he going for a second term as speaker? He said, I want to preside over the National Assembly in tandem with the president my friend Hake Kinkop and uh, we know that he has indicated he won't be available for elective office anymore so it's quite also a period of transition for these uh, liberation stalwarts as well as they give way to other Namibians to occupy these spaces. In, indeed, indeed. In fact, um, Yes, he, he, he wasn't going to, he, as you said, he did say that he's not going to stand again. Um, and in fact, his term would have ended with the um, elections and the swearing in of, um, of the new president, which is when President uh, Gengob was also going to um, retire. But uh, unfortunately, uh, fate would, uh, would have it otherwise. And the other friend in, in, in that trio, President Angolombuba, also indicating to all and sundry that he is just here to complete the term of his friend. Absolutely. No other ambition. He has no designs on hey, any Marshall. position, um, etc. Martin Kambulu Chief of the Defense Force. Next. He's the chairperson of the Council of Traditional Leaders, Chief Kasep. Chief Khaseb. Khaseb, yes. Chief Khaseb. The armed forces bidding farewell to their commander in chief.
then the and then the national salute. Eh? An announcement by the director of ceremonies, no benedictions. That, that concludes the laying reef ceremony. Our next in the program is the vote of thanks. I would like to invite the Right Honourable Prime Minister. I'm going to move the vote of thanks on behalf of the family. The vote of thanks Deputy Chief Justice Damaset also served as an assistant Damaset. to the then Prime Minister, um, served in the Cabinet Secretariat, uh, worked closely with uh, Dr. Gainko before going into private practice and, and uh, starting his own law firm, um, and then thereafter serving on the bench for many years before uh, his appointment to the leadership of the judiciary. As we were saying earlier, he comes from yeah. exile. Before with, that, um, we the, the late Justice president. Thomas, I saw him. Including, including I uh, Chief Justice Shivute, uh, who started uh, now, who started at the union. If he's not here, I would like to invite the Prime Minister to do some announcements. As did the Minister of Home Affairs, uh, Albert Kawana, also studied at uh, union. Thank you very much. Doing the most your Excellency President Nangolo Mbumba and Madam Mbumba, Madam Monica Genkos, the widow of our departed president, his children, grandchildren, and the rest of the bereaved family. Your Excellencies, the former president, the founding president, and the second president, and your respective spouses. Your Excellency, the vice president, and Mr. Ndaitwa. May I, st oh, Your Excellency President Masisi and Madam, and all the dignitaries, foreign dignitaries that are still here with us, may I stand on the protocol that is established already. Now we have come to the end of the official program of the State Funeral Service for our late President, Dr. Hage Genkop. I wish to thank all our citizens, firstly, for that show of love and solidarity during the entire period of sending off our departed president. As a government, we are grateful to all their excellencies, heads of states and government, and other foreign dignitaries for coming to condole with us, leaving their important preoccupations back in their countries. We also appreciate those who sent condolences messages and could not come. Uh, personally. We have received material and logistical support from neighboring countries such as the Republic of Angola, the Republic of Botswana, and the Republic of Zambia, as well as from a number of Namibian corporates and individuals. We are most grateful for that. The President of Angola also sent a contingent of his Air Force to join the Namibian counterparts to give a final salute to our departed president. So four of the seven uh, fighters that flew past uh, were from Angola. We still remember when the Angolan president escorted the remains of our liberation struggle veterans who died and were buried in Angola during our liberation struggle, whose remains were exhumed for reburial here at Heroes Acre. He came with them. A number of countries declared a mourning period in honor of our departed president, and they include the Republic of Botswana, the Republic of Kenya, and the United Kingdoms. We are most grateful for that. I should thank the preparatory committee, which took care of the logistical arrangements to ensure a befitting send-off for our departed president. And I thank all the Namibians for standing together in this difficult period. We really, you know, acted like a united people and we should remain that way. That's the befitting way to honor the legacy of our departed president. Lastly, but by no means the least, I want to thank the family of Dr. Genkop, the widow, the children, 
the extended family for accommodating the state in the arrangements for the send-off of their loved one, agreed to take the second place just as they have done throughout the life of public service of Dr. Gainkop. By so doing, they have enabled us as a nation to mourn a man by who by his life of public service became a family member of the broad Namibian family. May the soul of our dear president, Dr. Hage Genkop, continue to rest in perfect peace. The program, the official program, is now concluded. We wish travel mercies to all those who will travel back to their respective countries and home. Okay. So I'm just reminded to specify the specific support that we got from, from some of the countries, the neighboring countries that I have talked about. So Botswana gave us 29, eh? 49 vehicles and 29, 20 motorbikes. 49 vehicles and 20 motorbikes. And the president is here. And he also came immediately after the announcement of death. In my culture, we call it Oshitondoka. We say the neighbor is like your neck bone. So because that is the person that first arrives at the scene before your parents do. Maybe they are very far away. So they came. President Masisi was here. President Ramaphosa was here. So these are neighbors really showing that we are brothers and sisters. Thank you very much. We appreciate that. And of course, the number of the uh, items that we got from Angola, I think I can be assisted also. They provided the tents. They also sponsored the number of vehicles in addition to the uh, fighters that flew past. So really, these neighboring countries stood by us during this difficult hour. And Zambia shared its experience. So they sent a contingency here of personnel to advise us on how to deal with this situation, which we have never dealt with before. So we thank everyone. And I said even countries out of Africa declared a period of mourning. And those countries included also the neighboring states, like I said, of Botswana, of Kenya. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. And Zambia. So with all of that support that we have gotten, dear Namibians and family members, it should be well with our souls, in spite of the pain and sorrow that engulf us. It is well with us, and it shall be well with us. I thank you all, and good afternoon. Now, informally, when the, everything is finished there, there would be an opportunity for everybody to go and, 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 and see the grave. Thank you. Okay, now I invite His Excellency the President to come and join the mourners here so that we can do the concluding rites. So Bishop Cape would assist us to do the benediction, and I would like to invite him. And after that, we will sing the anthems, the AU and the national anthem. Thank you very much, Director of Proceedings. Let's rise for the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance and grant you his eternal peace. In his most precious name, 
Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Now we remain standing for the anthems. And now we are asked to kindly um, allow the dignitaries, the local and the foreign, to leave together with the widow. And the that also marks the end of the morning period and which led to the official memorial and the ultimate burial service of the late uh, Dr. Hagi Gengob III, President of Namibia. Well, I'm still in studio, joined by Colonel Peter Shilumbu, who is the spokesperson of the Namibia Defence Force. And Colonel, we have witnessed the somber scenes at the Heroes Acre as the activities were underway. But what stood out for us, and we have also been uh, getting questions on our social media pages, was the fly past. I know that there is a significance behind the K-8 fighter jets that were saluting, saluting as, as, as the casket was being lowered. So if you can just take us through that moment. Uh, it, it was not necessarily a fly pass as we usually know it, uh, but this time around it was a missing main salute, uh, meaning the K-8 jet fighters that you have witnessed flew from west to east of the Heroes Acre uh, were, uh, were in a formation called a VIC formation or an Aero formation whereby uh, one of the aircraft was leading others in front and the rest of the aircraft have displayed the presidential color and the national color. And those colors I stated earlier that uh, they are the blue, the gold, the green and the red. So, but the leading aircraft did not display any color. At one point, as they were approaching uh, Heroes Acre, the leading aircraft just disappeared or it flanked 
or it pull up back to the right. Signifying? Uh, that means uh, it signifies that uh, we were having a leader as a Namibian nation and our leader is no more longer with us. As a result, uh, that formation of the aircraft, the seven aircraft which were, flowing, which were flying, uh, continue. It, it is never been disturbed after the leader have left. And it is also the same that this symbolizes that as a Namibian nation, although we are left uh, behind by our commander in chief, by our late president of the Republic of Namibia, Dr. Hagi Kenkop, we as a nation should also focus forward. We should not be disturbed by any uh, interferences from anywhere else, but we should focus as a nation and look forward. So that's what the seven, the seven aircraft uh, signify. Yes, exactly. Oh. That is what has been uh, the displayed by the jet fights that we have seen. All right. And from me, uh, I thank you very much for being here and may the soul of our late uh, president rest in internal peace. And, and with I thank that, you. Um, Colonel Shilombo, as he was the commander in chief of the Namibian Defense Force, I'm going to allow you to salute your fallen commander as we also conclude our broadcast here from Studio Two. In the heart of Namibia, a legend emerged. The people's president, a man larger than life. He possessed a presence that extended beyond what met the eye. 